Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final stop of the LZ World Tour here in Calder Park in Australia. What an event this has been so far. We are now here at the main event. My name is Dave from Drift Games. I'm joined by my good buddy, Dan Brockett, here in the tower. We're going to be talking you through all of the action here today, and it is going to be action packed. Yesterday, qualifying, last chance top 16. Dan, it was the most ridiculous day of drifting I think I've ever seen. The 90s abounded. There were so many 90s. We had cars being swapped, crashed, people lending their cars, being beaten by people, and then giving them giving their them cars. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it, because I don't even think we could explain it if we had no, half an hour. Hard. It's very difficult, and it would take too long. So today, we have a little bit of an overcast day here in Calder Park. Which, Slightly. Which they I, brought the Ireland. Well, this, they had rain earlier on, and I said to them, this kind of rain back home, we call it sun. So it's not that bad. But basically, the track conditions are perfect, and we are going to have a hell of a show. And also a little bit cooler for the people in attendance and the engines, which have been going through, going through the ropes for about yeah, two days now. through the ringer at this point. A lot of cars, a lot of damage, but that's all for your entertainment. Remember, this show is all about having fun. It is an exhibition of car culture and the sport of drifting. It is about putting crazy people and crazy builds together. It's about putting the audience in front of the things they've seen on the internet only, but now they can feel, touch, and hear them in the flesh. Mostly here, yes. Mostly lots of smoke, here. lots or of noise. If it's Mad Mike's car, you can hear nothing after it. Yep. It is just Very so loud. True. But we have a really cool crowd here. Everyone's vibing out. We're building up the, the grandstands. We're going to be getting towards the main event. And what we do every time we come is go to the fantasy battles. But before we move into today, I want to talk about yesterday. But I don't want to talk about it. I want to show you guys what went down yesterday in Calder Park. Check this out. Well, there you have it, guys. It was an amazing event yesterday. It was Mitch Lerner that took the win, even though he started with 700 horsepower. He finished with 300 with his supercharger ratchet strapped on. Still won the competition at the end, which is an amazing feat. And very stylishly. It's like the car wasn't missing in half of its horsepower. Exactly. So what we're going to do is have a look at the battle format. This is for later in the show. The fantasy battles are a little bit more fun. But each driver is going to take a turn at lead and chase for the fantasy battles also. And in the fantasy battles, unlike this, the scoring and the draw and all this about the judges, the judges have nothing to do with the fantasy battles they are all about the audience so everybody here in attendance you are now the judges for our fantasy battles for the star of the show which means australia you're gonna have to start getting loud you're gonna have to start getting rowdy and you're gonna have to start but well, i think putting yourself in the mix here you're gonna decide yes. some of these pride-filled battles you guys are important at this point so we need some participation so what I think we're going to do is we're going to see if Australia is with us. So Australia, I know you guys are packing in the stands. We're all getting warmed up. But are you with me? Get me make some noise. Oh, we got some people got in the some house. Noise. I, I, I felt something, a little, a little tingle. We've been to four stops all over the world on this tour. We've had some amazing audiences. But Australia, you are representing your nation today. You've got to be the loudest yet. And what we've got on the line for our first fantasy battle is... Basically, Adam LZ versus the Australian Adam LZ. Yeah, they call him the Wish.com Adam LZ. So everybody confuses him with Adam LZ. He is a big fan of Adam LZ. But, Carl Martin, we're going to put you in a battle with Adam LZ for the first fantasy battle. It is LZ in the Cream S13. Going up against Cam Morton, a dream battle for Cam Morton here. Yeah, now. this is uh, this is a come up for him. Nothing like looking like somebody and then getting to battle them in real life. Convenient that they're both drifters. Absolutely, and Cam Morton in that four-door or, or 33. And then we have Adam LZ, who's on a mission this weekend to try and get this car working. They've had so many mechanical issues with it, but it looks like it's working pretty good now as LZ Ooh. takes it to the wall. But look at Cam Morton up on the door. Fantasy battles for nothing, judged by the crowd. 
and these guys are door to door. Now you can pick your favorite driver here if you're in the audience, or you can just be a proper judge and decide who's done the better run. LZ was in the lead, Cam Morton in the chase. Now remember what I said, this is stuff that never happens anywhere. Where does a fan get to go drive with their hero? And that is exactly what Cam Morton is doing right now. He said to us, hey man, I would love just to do one run with LZ. We said, you know what, not only will you do one run, you'll do two, and you'll do it in front of everybody watching. So he's having a good time out there. I can't wait until they get out of the cars and they're standing next to each other so we can see how much alike they actually are. I wonder will they switch cars in the second run? We'll maybe they've switched cars already. Maybe we don't know who the we real LZ know. is. It's like it's like a Where's Waldo? You just go, which is the real LZ? <laughs> So Adam LZ is going to be in the chase position. This Adam not getting a whole lot of practice this weekend. No, he's, just getting he's the got a whole lot of practice fixing the car, though. Yeah, because what happened was is they've refreshed this whole car, which has been abandoned for four years. Keep it read. I've done an amazing job of getting it together. But it's got some teething issues, just like any new build. And they have been working tirelessly to get that car All ready. All night last night. It, the people who rebuilt the engine last night did not go to sleep. It's just to make sure this car was Still here currently in awake. front of you guys today, which is an amazing... We want to thank all of those guys. Absolute heroes, Hugely. right? Hugely. Everybody pulling together to make their show the sh uh, sure the show is as good as it can be. And look at Cam Morton. He is in Dream Street. He, he thinks he's going to wake up in bed this morning again and go, I had this weird dream. I was battling Adam LZ in the middle of Calder Park. But it's reality, Cam, and you are now in the lead position with LZ hot on your heels. Let's see exactly what they could do as Cam's chucking it in, a.k.a. LZ Jr. at this point. And LZ getting right up in his business. He's like, you know what? Let's put on a show. And they are doing just that. LZ's got a lot of driving to go ahead of him, so... The fact that he's even out here doing this is pretty fantastic. And these guys aren't leaving anything on the table. It's not like they're going easy on each other. A little bit of a bump on the wall there as Cam deep into that pocket hits the wall again. He hit the wall three times <laughs> all the way around. Cam Morton putting that ortho. I mean, it's, the back of that car is pretty far away from you when you're driving, but still. Yeah, it's he hit a big the wall. Car. He hit the wall three times. Somehow finished the run. Yeah, did not put the front end of the car in, so that's fantastic. LZ was doing a pretty good job on the first half of the course following, but oh, we got to leave it up to you guys. That, that was a great transition. That transition from LZ. That I was mean, manly. LZ has a top 16 main event to go to, so he's out here just having some fun. Cam Morton knocked out a competition yesterday, so he's just throwing the car into the wall, onto the wall, and smashing the wall because it's his last <laughs> couple of runs of the weekend. Oh, my goodness. How, he How nearly, he he nearly hit another that. wall that wasn't even on the track. Oh, wow. That is impressive stuff. As they get out of the cars guys give it up for adam lz and cam morden mez how are they feeling down there he's like get over here man all right cam you were just checking out your lovely craft work that you did at the end of the wall there you got a bit keen there mate but how good was it drifting with your brother from another mother oh, i was absolutely awesome uh, he's very consistent i'd like to just lay it on him um yeah i oh, stoked <laughs> mate you can't wipe the green off adam long last brother what was it like yeah. And did you know you had a brother here? Yeah, we haven't driven together for four years, so it was cool to get to... Uh, did, we, did we lose audio? Yeah. No, it was good. It was a good time. <laughs> Guys, I don't, surely zoom in on these faces. It's grins galore out here. All right. Cam, when's the uh, paint job booked in for Mellow Yellow? Because you got the mustache, you vlog. When are you doing the thing? No, nah, it's not my thing. I'll keep the silver. All right, it's shut down. Okay, now it's time, crowd, to get involved because we want to find the winners. Oh, one more time. I don't know if that's an option, brother. Make some noise if you think Cam Martin is your winner. Jeez, yeah! <laughs> you guys were waiting a little bit there, but uh, Adam got you started. Make some noise if you think Adam LZ is your winner. All right, we're just going to have to quickly do that once again. Cam Martin, winner. <laughs> Adam LZ, winner. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I, th I think Cam Martin's got that one. But, hey, you're going to be back out for another fantasy battle later? Absolutely. Mad Mike. There we go, baby. Make some noise. What a great fantasy battle. Back to you guys. Well, I gotta say, the crowd definitely leaning into the Dream Street there. I love that they were like, "Well, maybe people like a more affordable Adam LZ." I, I think so. I think it's a, it's a, it's achievable at this point. An achievable Adam LZ, a, a more approachable. That's a weird. That's a weird because thing to he, even have come out of your it's mouth. It's a strange thing. We had Adam LZ versus Adam LZ in the first battle. You didn't expect to see that today, did you? No. So it is going to be Adam's going to come back out for another final battle. We can't wait to tell you who that's against because you guys are going to be very excited about. It. But we're moving back to the start line to our next fantasy battle, which I've been looking forward to ever since I saw those names come up on the sheet. I'm looking forward to it. 
It is going to be uh, a little celebration burnout, though, for the two Adam LZs. Nice. We got LZ Kyle Martin. LZ action. They got out of the car, and I started chuckling, and then I looked at Dave, and Dave was also chuckling because they are very, very similar looking. That is just that, you know what? This event doesn't have to make sense. No, it doesn't. I don't... I dare you to try and make sense of any of this. <laughs> I dare you. So we're going to go back to the start line. Look at this. It is Mr. Keeper Reed, Jason Farron. Don't look in at the me. Car. Don't look at me. In his uh, crazy barra-powered Skyline wagon. And he's going up against Stewie Bryant, who has a nicer Skyline today. No, he did not paint it. I was going to say, he's done some work to that you know who's You know whose car this is? No. This is his dad's car. Wait. This is Stewie, dad Stewie Bryant's dad's car. My dad's car doesn't look like this. Yeah, my dad's car is an F-150. There you go. So no, don't drift that. No. So here we go. Jason Farron in the lead. Stewie Bryant in the chase position. In a car that he's never driven this weekend. Nope. Brand new laps for Stewie Bryant. <laughs> and it's similar chassis, different car as they come through. Jason Farron putting on a smoke show right now. Stewie just having to learn how to drive the car all over again. I'm sure his e-brake setup may or may not be different than maybe he's missing some calipers. That might be what's happening. Jason just putting those beans down and Stewie having some problems keeping up. I think, admit if, that. I think if Stewie Bryant didn't have a problem with a four-door skyline in the run, it would be <laughs> more unusual. Stewie doing a good job yesterday getting himself onto the podium. Uh, the last he's back in the show today, but he's in another car. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Why is this the borrowed car when the, it looks better than the actual it car? Looks I'm just much saying, better than the actual it's a very car. presentable. I like the art project, I but do. I do appreciate this one as it's well. It's pretty sweet. So you can see just losing out a little bit of pace as he tries to stay with Jason Farron. But that car is an absolute beast. Yeah, it's a station wagon. The a bar, very the bar casual wags. station wagon. The bar wags is uh, it's a pro level car, it's and I'm just going to say pro. Stewie Bryant's car may not be. <laughs> so this is all for fun, though. This is warming us up for that main event top 16 guys just to get you guys warmed up i know it's been a little chilly here in Calder park but you know what it's not so bad the clouds are starting to clear we are conditions are perfect for our main event later Oof. today that's going to be an amazing time that top 16 is looking absolutely stacked it is like the best of the world australia and new zealand all put into one mix with a bunch of influencers which a bunch of content creators thrown in as well which i quite like so here we go we're going to come back around here it's going to be the second half of the battle between stewie Bryan and jason farron now jason farron one of our higher qualifiers yesterday yeah what, what normal people would do, and Jason Farron is not a normal person, no. would be like, I don't want to ruin my car here because obviously i got to do loads of battles later today. But I feel like Jason Farron, he's just going to go crazy here. I think so. He's gone crazy every single lap. It doesn't matter if it's practice. didn't matter if it was qualifying. He was on the wall. Yeah. He was dooring people. He said he was it's the pushing end of, people he around the track. It's the end of the season, so I'm not, leaving, I'm not leaving this car in one piece. That's a dangerous thing to say. And then he gets out of the car, and he's just like, eh. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, oh, broke the car again. No, no big deal. So here we go. It's going to be Stewie Bryant in the lead. Jason Farron. Oh, a little bit of a gap oh, here. What happened there? Maybe Jason missed Farron. the gear three. I don't know. He is a very laid back guy, Jason Farron, but that was a little too laid back on the start line. He's like, you know what? I'm going to play a little bit of catch up. I'm going to give him a slight advantage. And he did. He, he, I think, oh, I think Jason, up, I think Jason Farron's got an problem. issue here. I think Jason Farron's car had a mechanical issue in the first half of the run, which may be bringing Stewie Bryant back into the mix. Jason Farron, though, found some Getting power right towards there. the end. Oh, there we go. How cool is that shot across the finish line? That was insane. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. So we got two Australians. Would we say that this is like old school versus new school? Because it really is. Stewie Bryant, old school legend. Jason Farron, the, the new school legend. New school legend. Going up against each other, and it looked to me like Jason Farron having some issues. I think we're going to say that the bonnet being off that car, probably telling the story as well. I know they were having some alternator problems this morning. Maybe the car just didn't want to stay on. Who knows? Maybe it turned off. He, uh, we've, I've had runs before where you, the car shuts off and you let the clutch out and it just and jumps it itself back up again, which is terrifying. <laughs> but uh, it got back in it at the end, trying to put a show on for the fans here. It's Stewie Bryant and Jason Farron. All right, bringing these guys up. I'd like to hear what happened from both of them. Yeah, I think Jason's going to tell us what happened there. But we're down to Mez. He's down with the drivers on the track. How are the boys feeling down there? Jason, mate, Dave wants to know how you're feeling. Yeah, not bad. Um, so we've been breaking alternators. We're on our second, no, our third alternator this weekend. And the boys just got that in there, and it's playing up straight away again. So it was like spluttering and... I was just trying to keep the clutch, keep it going. Uh, so that's annoying, but lucky I've got like five cars here, so I've got one to choose from. I did notice you have quite the expendable fleet of drift cars at your disposal. So it wasn't a tactic to just embarrass Stewie Bryant with a 10 kilometer gap, you did have car issues. Yeah, there was definitely issues going on there. <laughs> All right, Stewie, come on over, mate. Get on this side, get in between us. Mate, 
You've gone back as if you uh, just got your license from high school. You borrowed Dad's car. Yeah, the uh, the other one had a few issues, so uh, we decided to bring the this one out as a spare. Um, she's uh, she's definitely a little bit less poker than the other one. So uh, on the on the chase, so I was giving her all the clutch. I felt I was in a K70, and she was just not taking it. So I straightened up behind Jace on the on the chase there, and yeah, the 20. She's a she's a great little engine, but she didn't quite have the poke for that one. Oh, well, them's the breaks, but you guys still put on a little bit of a show. Like, if we just took the video from that second half. Beautiful. Now, let's go to the crowd. Two absolute heavyweights of the drift scene in Australia. Make some noise if you think the winner is Mr. Keeper Reed, Jason Farron. Oh. Oh, he, it is local boy stuff, isn't it here? Make some noise if you think the winner is Stewie Bryant. Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. That's a tough crowd, brother, but I think I think the winner is Jason Farron. Boys, you should be stoked of that. Back to you, boys, in the booth. Thanks, Maz. And, uh, yeah, local boy, Melbourne boy, Jason Farron, getting a little bit. Oh, you know what? He did pretty good, and I think they're going to have to put four alternators in that car for the battles minimum, that are on. Minimum. A minimum of four alternators would get that thing singing again. So we've got <laughs> another little bit of celebratory donuts, I'm imagining, even though uh, Jason Farron's going to probably struggle to turn the car on here. He's got so little yeah, voltage. maybe he might need some help with a jump start, but if he gets it going, maybe Stewie will just do donuts around him. Who knows what's going to happen here? He's got to go. Yeah, both of these guys in the competition later on, so you know what I mean? It's going to be interesting to see how they get on. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Let's bake some fresh donuts for the people, for you guys out there in the crowd. Our judges, our beautiful judges. We've got a lot of judges, so all you guys are, are going to get abused by the internet later on. Everyone in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason, I'm sure these drivers will have a lot of feedback for oh, each and every absolutely. one of you. Absolutely. So uh, we, when a driver's got an issue with a decision, we send them into the thousands of people here and say, you can find them all if you want. Good luck. Here we are. So we got another fantasy battle out of the way. Remember, we are winding up towards our main event later on. And here's an interesting one. We got Gaz Wider taking on Ben Jenkins. So these are both teammates, but they have uh, similar cars, but two very different power plants. Yes. Supercharged V8 for Gaz Wider, and we got the 2JZ for Ben Jenkins. And then it also looks like you're, you're photoshopping a mirror image here because they look very, very similar. They've both lost many things from these cars over the last day but this is going to be a big smoky one here in the fantasy battles for sure it's super nice to see team graphics on these cars it's like these are the things you see at like super d and final battle and all the style based events and these are very very stylish cars as they're coming blasting through different tastes and wings i'm noticing here I am a big fan of the low wing. I don't know about you. Are you a big wing guy? Oh, no, it depends about? on the day. But look at this. Oh, oh wheel, wheel to wheel. From Gaz Wider and Ben Jenkins. It was sort of all, you know, very uh, political yeah. and along the way. And then all of a sudden they forgot. They're just like, yep, we're, we're, we're doing this. They were like, oh, let's not take it too seriously, guys. Come on. It's only a fantasy battle. Then, oh, no, wait. Bang. Door. Yep, door serious. put in. Um, of course, in front wheels. Yeah, I wonder because they swapped the door from one car to the other after the battle. That'd be interesting. <laughs> just, uh, sorry about that. I'll, I'll, I'll take the bad yeah, you one. You can have mine. You can have the bad one. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> nice job here from both of these guys. Guys, wider in the lead. Ben Jenkins in the chase, and a very early snappy transition from Ben. Put him on that inside line, but it led him to catch. Look at look at the wall Ooh, run tire smoke from Gaz Wider at that the end there. Beautiful, it's impressive stuff. He's going to be one of the favorites today in the competition. Yeah, I think he's absolutely been ripping. So there was a bit of contact, but that's okay. Robin's racing. I think they're fine. And nobody bunny hopped. Nobody ran into the no, wall. That was fine. And um, that might not be the end of that story today. No. I, I, so think, it, I think there may be some payback. The Calder involved. Park wall has always been an issue here because it's, it wants to take all the attention. It wants to be the star of the show. It's very tall. It's very brightly colored. It's very solid. Yes, there is no movement. Look at look at the wall run from Gaz Wider running that spoiler all. The, and, um, he's done this almost every single run this weekend, and that spoiler has just a little bit of fiberglass crack on it. That's it's how tight. accurate he is on that wall. And look at this for proximity from Ben Jenkins as he puts a little mark on the door as he comes across the finish line. Impressive stuff from these two teammates, and uh, I, I I love to see it. I love to see it. These guys out here, no trophy on the line, no nothing big, on the no line. big paycheck on the line, just doing it for your entertainment. Entertainment Australia. So we want to hear you get involved when these guys get mm. out of the car at the end of this run. Now, good driving. I feel that Gaz Wider is not going to be impressed with that little bump at the end of the run. I want to see multiple bumps. I want to see a couple of half moons. I think Gaz Wider is going to go for it here. I, I think, think he should. I think he, he knows his teammate Ben has got a lot of talent. He's going to trust him. 
And also he goes, oh, well, you know, it's end of the season. Let's leave some body panels on the track. Here we go. Second half of this fantasy battle. There's going to be Gaz Wider in the chase. Ben Jenkins in the lead. And look at this. Gaz Wider comes in on that inside line. Here we go. Look at that as Gaz Wider putting the pressure on Ben Jenkins as they come back around through the power alley. Kind of a little lackluster there, I'm feeling. We're going to have to leave that one to the judges. I know that's going to be a tough decision. Can he put the pressure? This is where it needs to happen. And I don't think we saw it. I just, I was hoping for more. We got a lot more proximity at the start of the run from Gazwater, yes. but Ben had more at the end. And we're not the judges. Guess, yeah, we're, who's, not we're, the, guess who's not the judges right now? The judges. The judges are not. The so judges are happy that they don't have to do oh, a they're, thing. They're in there saying, well, thank God all the people here have to do that one because that was tough. So they are going to uh, take a little breather and watch this one before they have to make all those tough decisions later on. And look at this. It's, it just seems to me like guys just didn't have the pace to catch him down that back straight. No, no, no. He, he could not keep up and did not get into that nice little pocket created between their white body kids. Exactly. So they're going to come back down in front of the crowd. I want you guys to give him a big round of applause. Put your hands together. These guys are getting pumped up for the rest of the day. The louder you go, the louder and crazier they go. That's how drifting works. These guys are all attention seekers deep down, and they want to steal the show. So we want to show, show the appreciation as they stop up. Will you give it up, please, for Gaz Wider and Ben Jenkins? So we're gonna we're gonna get Mez down there to talk to the Mez. That was a great set of battles. <laughs> Gaz, how does it feel to get absolutely doored by your teammate? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about, bro. These these tires they're they're not grippy, but it just makes for amazing battles and yeah, good fun on that wall. Hey, what's it like performing in front of a crowd like this? It's been a hot minute, I'm sure. Oh, mate, we don't get these crowds in New Zealand like this. I haven't competed for a few years, so it's great to have so many loud supporters around. That's exactly it, and they're about to make some noise when they vote very shortly. Benny Jenkins, Team Jenkins Motorsport, got this car going again. But, uh, mate, now Gaz is sort of the uh, poster boy for Phoenix. Do you, do you think you're going to be uh, putting some words into Adrian and maybe try to get uh, a little bit more up the top spit? Well, I definitely think I've uh, racked up the biggest damage bill for the, the old Phoenix team here, for sure, in and out of that wall. But it's all what it's all about is putting on a show. Massive thanks to the team. They jumped on straight on board and fixed the car. So we get out here and lay down some laps. And uh, Gaz is an amazing driver back in New Zealand, so it's stoked to get here and try and get up on his door. Might have been a little bit too much, but he'll see how we're going. Hey, you guys are good boys. I'm sure it's all kosher there in the pits. Let's, uh, let's try find a winner. What do you reckon? Yeah, okay, crowd, are you ready to make some noise? If you think Gaz Wider is our winner, let it roar. Woo, not bad, Gaz, not bad. If you think our boy Benny Jenkins is the winner, make some noise. Oh, oh. that's a little bit close. And just uh, out of respect for the OG, I'm gonna go again. If you think it's Gaz Wider, make some noise. If you think it's Ben Jenkins, make some noise. Oh, that, that has got Ben Jenkins written all over it. Well done, boys. Back to the booth. Thanks, Mez. And uh, you know what? I love this crowd interaction because it's, it shows what the fans appreciate. And what I realize is they're all just wanted some crashing because Ben Jenkins <laughs> did more crashing than Gaz Wider. Everyone's like, I love a bit of crashing. I think they're fantastic judges. I, I don't think they're looking for crashes. I, I think that they are finely tuned instruments, each and every single one of them. And they are paying close attention to these runs, 110%. Looking for crashing, Dan. Looking for yeah, crashing. they're looking, they're for, looking for crashing. So <laughs> it is basically who hits whose door. That's yes. that's the game. Yeah. A, ga a good old-fashioned game of door hitting. And Little it was bonks. Ben Jenkins who got the door hit on Gaz Wider said, maybe I'll save the door hitting for later on in the main event. I mean, everybody always talks about banging doors, but do you ever actually get to bang doors? Well, they definitely did. They that's definitely. that for sure. So Gaz Wider, Ben Jenkins, you'll see both of these guys in the top 16 later on in the main event. As he's rolling a big old smoky burnout down the front straightaway. Make sure to breathe in all that tire smoke. But it's a good tactic because if you, do, you can't see it, they can't judge it, Dan. That's, That's how it very works. True. Very we'll true. We'll move back to the line. It's going to be two of the smiliest men, the friendliest oh, men in drifting. These guys. Jimmy Oaks and Mike Lake. We got Jimmy Oaks all the way from the USA going up against the local boy, Mike, Mike Lake. Lake. And Mike, he's all about having fun and having a good time and having a styled car. So is Jimmy Oaks. They said, hey, let's do a battle. Jimmy Oaks going to lead him out in the Keeper Reed or 34. Mike Lake in the chase. And we got Jimmy Oaks. He's been doing those big flick entries all weekend. Keeping it the same and a big understeer for Mike Lake. 
It's crazy because it looks like Chris is out there. Chris Rodnick was driving his car yesterday, did the exact same thing in the exact same spot. Yeah, it looks like that car has a lot of grip dialed in. He's getting back into the mix here, though, as Jimmy Oaks takes it to the wall one more time in Calder Park. Look at that wall run from Jimmy Oaks, Jimmy Oaks towards the end, and Mike Lake catching up towards the end, making up for that big understeer he had on the first corner. It happens to the best of us. It does, and it's unfortunate, and it, it happens all the time. And that's okay because... Jimmy Oaks' wall ride was absolutely beautiful. I think that may be one of his best wall rides, and we're just doing demos here. Well, he had some wall rides. He had some wall hits. He's had it all this weekend, he's Jimmy Oaks. <laughs> he's driving one of the largest cars on the grid. He said he's having a lot of fun, something different this weekend. And, of course, a lot of these guys, you got to give a bigger respect that they're jumping into cars they've never driven before, chassis they've never driven before, on a and, engine, and engine setups they've never driven before, on a track they've yes. never driven before. That's a lot of never before. It's a lot to take on the local boys with that much of a disadvantage. But it looks to me like Jimmy Oaks doing a great job there of feeling it he's all. feeling it out i have a feeling because you know jimmy is going to be looking to put some marks some some beautiful tire marks on all that pink and purple right I because ho i hope so i think mike lake's car survived chris rudnick oh that's, jimmy oak said that's <laughs> look i think it's got the, the lifespan it's over its best before date right now it needs a little bump it needs some marks on it i mean it's a souvenir from this amazing event Absolutely. I don't think Mike Lake will, will stop smiling if anything happens here because Mike is always smiling. He's like, oh, he's, put it on he's my goat door. Jimmy Oaks. Por favor. Yeah, slamming the door and saying, hey, Jimmy, you got to get on the door. Jimmy Oaks says, well, I mean, if you said it now all I mean, right. in front of all these people that they all saw it on the camera. So, yeah, let's put some marks Give on some doors. Give him a moon, Jimmy. That's what the people want. This is what the people need. It's the fantasy battle between Mike Lake and Jimmy Oaks. Second run. Mike Lake leading him in. Jimmy Oaks in the chase and going very close on the entry. Jimmy Oaks a little bit early, too, up on the curb. But no understeer there, so we are two steps ahead of the last round. Jimmy Oaks putting all the pressure oh. on in a big bonk. There we were. Mike Lake's car shutting down, and Jimmy Oaks hitting the back end of Mike Lake's car. I'm not sure what happened there. That, 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 that was uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate and, again, unnecessary because uh, we wanted to see a better run, and Mike yes. Lake's car just has been letting him down this weekend. But you know what? He's just going to try and do some burnouts, do some donuts. He's got a little mark on the back end. Jimmy Oaks will give that little It was signature. a mark in the wrong yeah. spot. We were not We were looking for door, not rear of the car. Exactly. Jimmy Oaks putting on a big burnout. Guys, <laughs> give it up for Mike Lake and Jimmy Oaks. Look at, all the, look at all the smoke coming out of the hole where the taillight used to be. <laughs> that 034 has had a weekend. It deserves a <laughs> cool beverage at the end of this weekend, that car. So you can see as they came through that first corner, it looked to me like Mike Lake's car. It was all glory here. Everything was going great. Jimmy was in the pocket, the transition. And all of a sudden right here, it looks like Mike maybe misses a gear. Something happens. And there's a little boop to the back of the car. But it's all good. You guys, once again, give it up for Mike Lake and Jimmy Oaks all the way from the USA. Mez, all smiles, even though it wasn't the cleanest of battles. <laughs> we got a bit of bromance down here, boys. There was a bit of kissing on happening over there. Just two nice guys of drift. What happened out there, Mike? The, uh, the old E36 finally gave up. I think something's wrong with the gearbox. It's stuck in a gear, but it means we can still do skids right now, so I'm, uh, I'm a happy man. And uh, for some, skids is the main thing, isn't it? <laughs> Jimmy, meeting a fellow nice guy, does it feel good out there knowing that you, uh, he's just one a decent bloke? Oh, for sure. I, I figured whatever happened in this battle, if I parked on the entry or I spawn or he won or whatever, it was going to be great times either way. So yeah. Mike's the man. <laughs> Oh, look at the two grins here. I'm just in awe. Guys, uh, we, I suppose we don't have to vote, but still, let's make some noise. Make some noise for Mike Lake. Come on, people. There we go. And what about Jimmy Oaks? Yeah. Well done. Jimmy, just quickly, mate, at the start of the, uh, the event, you were like, oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, the cars, I'm, I'm not getting used to it. And now you're just out there blitzing. Brother, you're on fire. I'm trying my best. She's definitely not my style, but we're making it work. Oh, that's all we can ask for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for these two great drivers. Back to you, boys. There you have it. The boys did not finish both of their runs, but they... They uh, are happy nonetheless. Hugs and smiles, smiles all around. Always, look at that. There's a lot of uh, very cool sort of old school liveries going on. Yeah, BMW, the JDM goodness. Yeah. We got the BMW 36, the R34, all looking good. Got a little sprinkle of rain coming down here in Calder Park. Oh, there it is. little sprinkle, but uh, it's going to make things a little bit more interesting for the end of these fantasy battles, I think. Yeah, nothing like uh, going out on unknown track conditions. Love it. Everybody loves unknown track conditions. 
So I don't think it's going to do enough to make the track super greasy right yet, but it's, it's going to make it a bit interesting either way. We got Mike Lake heading off back into the pit. Something definitely broke on his car, but it broke in front of all the fans, which is the best time for it to That's break. The best time for it. And it's still able to do a big smoky burnout as he exits the track. So not all is lost. Absolutely, as we now see uh, Jimmy Oaks doing some burnouts as well, showing off to the fans. Give it up, guys, one more time for Jimmy Oaks. And still going, currently, Jimmy Oaks. Still doing a burnout all the way back to the pit. So we got on the line Colette Davis. Colette in the Aura 32 Skyline. The car has been having some issues, but she said, you know what, everyone came here this weekend. I want to say hi to everyone. I want to go out there and do some runs. So she's going to test the car live in front of everybody. Why not? Yeah, I mean, hey, why not shake down in front of all these beautiful judges? So she's going to roll out here, and I think she's got a special passenger in the car with her as well. Oh. Yeah, so Colette Davis coming all the way over from the USA this weekend. She had a great battle with Jimmy Oaks yesterday. Good qualifying. Qualify yeah, right? good qualifying session. She says she really likes the car. She's out here having some fun, and uh, she says she wants to come down and say hi to everybody. You know, again, this is such an amazing time to see so many, you know, I would say amazing people coming together to celebrate this sport, to celebrate car culture, and Colette wanted to come down and just put on a show for everybody. So she did the Keeper Read Aura 32, lighten up those back tires i think she found where the limiter is I, I i feel like she found where the limiter is i'm just it's just a guess she said she's gonna she said she had some tire left but she doesn't really want to <laughs> and look at this for a burnout an absolute smoke show from colette davis absolutely fantastic it's great she's the only girl in the competition she did very well yesterday, had an unfortunate hit with the wall, is back, and is now doing one of the most rowdy burnouts that we've seen thus far. You know what? There's something very primal about the fact that I just want to see burnouts and donuts all the way through, and she wants to put some, some heat up the track, right? Oh, she's just bit, drying it off Yeah, a little bit of else. sprinkle of rain. Colette says, don't worry, I got this. I'll heat the whole place up. One more time, guys. Get up for Colette Davis. Doing it for all the ladies, all the ladies in the crowd. This could be you someday. Yeah, Colette inspiring so many uh, 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 females into the sport. Yes. because she's doing so well. What an ambassador. Exactly, such an ambassador, always smiling. She's been jumping between so many different chassis this year. And even she's her learning. Own, her own bills are rotary, Corvettes, all sorts of crazy all stuff. Of Amazing stuff from Colette as we see her uh, absolutely pop the tires <laughs> on the back of that Aura 32. <laughs> Guys, one more time. Get up for Colette Davis. I'm not sure there's any tires left on that car right no, now. No, and that's okay. Well, we got Mez, oh, we got, we got, we got to come out and see if the car is okay. I think everything might be okay. Let's see if it is okay. <laughs> Mez, that was some smoky burnouts from Colette Davis right there. Make some noise, Colette Davis. Colette drifting. I mean, it's pretty good, but how good's a burnout? Oh, it's great. I was actually surprised the fire tires didn't pop, but I did my best. It was still awesome, and big shout out and thank you to Jason and the entire Keep It Re crew for getting these cars, not just prepped for us, but just letting us rip on them all weekend. I absolutely love this car, and I had a blast. Oh, you love to hear it. Now, how have you enjoyed your time in Australia, and you've just done an Australian send-off? I've had an amazing time. We've mostly only been at the track, but I'm really excited to come back and go exploring more. But this has been awesome. You guys are amazing. I've got to meet so many of you, and I hope we just come back. Oh, you love to hear it. Make some noise for Colette Davis, everyone. And we also have a special guest uh, passenger. I saw you uh, you were the vlog man there, Grant Anderson. Yeah, I'm just learning from you. I know your vlog skills are A+, plus, so I'm just learning from the best. But uh, I want to give Colette a five-star Uber rating for my great ride. And uh, just thank her for the, the great passenger lap. And uh, you're going to be... Uh, using conditioner, shampoo to get the rubber out of the hair, surely. Why, does it not look good? It's a little bit tacky. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grant Anderson, Colette Davis, make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Colette, what gear did you get up to there in the skit? So I lost third earlier, so I just had to stay in second. I know, next year, maybe third, or fourth. Fourth. Hey, it's an RB, y'all. This is my first time driving an RB, so I don't know. Maybe fourth is possible. Maybe. <laughs> Why stop at fourth? Let's go fifth. <laughs> okay, there, there, we can. So. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. All right. Get back in this rig because it's uh, definitely cooled down by now, and I'm sure it's good to go for another skid. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. 
Guys, give it up for Colette Davis and Grant Anderson. And they're having some fun. That's what this event is all about. Remember, people, this isn't a super serious competition. Stop treating it like it is. This is all about having a good time. Just like drifting should be in the first place. This is pro wrestling. This is monster trucks. This is the LZ World Tour. We've got characters from all nations and all sorts and all sizes as i said this event is all about smiles on faces and hitting the random car and driver generator every time we <laughs> press passenger we, now we, we should have a big red button where we just go random car random generator we got grant anderson passenger colette davis um, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like cluedo uh, just uh, yeah. and a burnout in front of people in australia so what we got now on the line is i, I have put this in the show oh, this was not this in is the a plan choice show. this is a me choice okay on the line we got a guy called marcus mccarthy but okay. they call him Backy McCarthy. Backy McCarthy. And I said to him today, I was like, why do they call you that? And he was like, well, I could go out and show you. And I went, I can allow it. I kind of run the show around here. I can allow it. So what he's going to do is show you exactly why this guy is Backy McCarthy. Here we go. In the PS13 SR. There we have it. Big Backy from. And he wasn't joking. He's not he's just the clever man. He's just that. Like, I said, I Marcus McCarthy. He's in the competition later on, folks, but he is trying his best to put some big old angle into these runs. Look at this wall run in the SR for Marcus McCarthy, and this is just for fun. Give it up. Oh, my goodness. For Backy McCarthy as he puts in a monster entry into the first corner. Just showing us what's, you know, 360 wall run, Backy. Yeah, yeah, what more I mean, do you want from a run? That was absolutely beautiful in every way, shape. That's a hard thing to do, especially in front of this many people. Like, the pressure was on, and he made it happen. He made it happen. We're going to get the replay of this. Look at the angle, folks. That is full, past 90 degrees. Full over 90 degrees. Correction on the steering. It is beautiful. It's textbook. It's very tough to do. I've and tried this. Great wall and, and I've, I would probably be somewhere in that gravel trap there. Oh, I would have for yeah, sure. Both of us would be in there going, I don't even know how we did that. Or I would have came up 50 feet short and it just would have been embarrassing. Exactly. That's why we don't get in the show, Dan. <laughs> and we're trying, but we just can't get in there. So we just wanted to see a backwards entry. I, didn't, I don't have to explain it to anyone. I just wanted to see one. I just put it in the show. I also said, we're going to finish. Whoa. Whoa, we didn't hit the wall after that. That was not. So we did the backwards entry easy. The 360 might have been a disaster. But this is the battle, I think, we, we, if you look at the, I've been waiting. Yeah, the Official merchandise for this event, the t-shirt, the hoodie. I saw it a couple of weeks ago. It was Mad Mike, it was Adam LZ, and I said, I'm not gonna leave this to chance that these guys this won't will meet happen. Because they're on both opposite sides of the bracket. They would have to meet in the final today. So just in case that doesn't happen, let's just see it happen either way. So we got Adam LZ and Mad Mike doing a run in the fantasy battles, two of the biggest names in drifting. Where would you ever see it happen? And Calder Park, it's happening right in front of your eyes. And look at this, Adam taking that SR20. Power Cream S13 versus a three-loader MX5, aka Miata, blasting through the course. Adam has been on a heater when the car is working, and Mad Mike doing everything he can to stay up with him as they come across the line. Insane. That's what I love about this event is you would never in your lifetime ever see these two guys in the two cars or styles of cars that made their name up against each other in Australia. Yeah. Neither of these guys from this country. No. But here they are. Just putting on a clinic, you know, just doing it for the people. Not even doing it for a skateboard deck. Just doing it. I know, this is what I love about this entire series. And Australia, I hope you guys are having fun out there because we're having fun up here. And this is just what I want to see. I just want to see Mad Mike chasing Adam LZ on a wall <laughs> in Australia. Is that too much to ask? Is it too much to ask? It's, it's not, because these guys are all crazy, and they'll just say yes. yes. Both of them in the competition later on. This is essentially risking their cars Very just much for entertainment. So. But you know what? Both of these guys were straight in and said, oh, yes, yeah, we're doing please, it. Can we do that? We're doing it. We're doing it. So Fantasy Battle is the last Fantasy Battle before we take a small break and head towards our main event parade. We got the exhibition drivers. And when I say that, I got some builds lined up for you guys that you will not even believe are going to go around this track and later have on. no business being on a racetrack in general every single car in the exhibition should have been a bad idea stopped at the start it's now a real thing but it's going to be fun yeah we got the second half of this one adam lz mad mike the world of drifting from all sides right now on the star line love to see it big names big cars even though the, the miata and his uh, sr20 are making basically the same amount of horsepower we're going to see if Adam can actually put the pressure on Mike, chuck it in the back. He, he was like, you know what? That other guy, that guy, he's going to take a nice shot. So Mad Mike does a backwards entry in the 
first corner. Now LZ starting to try and get up in his business. Will LZ be able to make the dive towards the wall? Last chance saloon. Yes, he will. Big angle. Oh, there oh, we LZ go. On the door, hand oh, out the window. window. Wing on the wall. There were so many things happening oh. right there at the end. Calder Park. There Come you on. go. That is what it's all about. We want to hear you guys getting live and excited here today. If ever there were a show, this is it. There this is, is the penultimate. That is the, you know, the, the, the Mount Rushmore of wildness there <laughs> is what you see. Look at this. Adam was not ready for that back. Adam, Adam was like, where's he going? Whoa. Oh, he did it. He did a backwards entry in the lead position. Mad Mike, Adam LZ, Just if you are in attendance, yeah, if you're in attendance <laughs> right now, we want you to make some noise. And nobody's going to hear it over the sound of three screaming rotors anyway. Look, but at, look at these scenes. Look at these scenes here at Calder Park. Australia, are you not entertained? As they get out of their cars, two of the legends of the sport. Will you give it up for Adam LZ and Mad Mike? Yeah, those guys are pumped. All right, down here with Adam. Adam, a little bit hard to hear, mate, I'm sure, so I'm just going to yell in your ear. Forgive me for that. How was it driving with Mad Mike with this cool car in your own car in another country? Well, I can't hear anything anymore, but... <laughs> no, that was sick. That entry was wild. That was fun chasing that down. And, uh, Mike, mate, normally it's uh, serious biz, comps, Pikes Peak, that type of stuff. This event, you get to let it hang loose. Oh, dude, this is so good. I've been waiting for this all year, the event where... You know, you drive for the fans. You know, it's hard to thing with drifting. As a, you know, a lot of people say it's a judge sport. For me, it's a spectator sport. We come out here, entertain. I got to thank Adam LZ, the entire crew out here for LZ World Tour. It's just really cool to be a part of it. Love coming to Australia. And um, yeah, man, we're just getting started. There's fantasy battles. We've got top 16 this afternoon, so can't wait. Hey, the crowd, that deserves some noise. The party's just getting started, people. And Adam, you got this thing purring now. Oh, it's great. We've, we've definitely had the past 48 hours. Like, I got to give a massive, massive shout out to Agus at uh, Skevis Racing. Built an entire motor through the night to get this car here today to put on a show for you guys. So I'm super happy to be driving it, and it, it's, it's singing. We love to hear it, people. All right, let's get to a little bit of a decision time. And this one, I think, is going to absolutely shake the asbestos off the roof. If you think Mad Mike is the winner, make some noise! Oh, oh. If you think Adam LZ is the winner, make some noise. Oh, that's, that's way too tough, people. That's way too tough. Mad Mike? Adam LZ? Oh, that's... Can we do it one more time? Do we... Do we have that? I've got no radio capabilities, so I'm just going to um, get back in, in behind the fence, and I'm just going to let you guys decide. We're just checking the tyres. I, I peeled half of them off there, though. <laughs> Mike said he peeled half of them off up there. You're good to go. Do yep. Go. We're doing one more time, everyone. Woo! Well, leave, leave the man with no radio communication to dictate what's going on. Mez has taken things into his own hands <laughs> down on the track. We said clearly no one more time, but he's decided... It, it, the memo was thrown out the window. The horse has come off the car here, Dan, yep. very early, and, and we have no control. <laughs> I, I thought I was, you know, oh, I could make whatever I want happen. Mez has taken a leaf out of my own book <laughs> yes, and he said he wants it one more time. I'm sure everybody here wants it one more time. Before they get back in the cars, Calder Park makes some noise for Mad Mike and Adam LZ. Who'd have thought that this is uh, how that was going to pan out? I feel this is not reality because no. this is like one of those. This is like you could see th these. Oh, you'd probably see both of these cars on a Seto Corsa or Forza. Is as close Somewhere as you're on the is, internet. Is as close as you're going to get to seeing this. This is real life. They've both. Uh, Mad Mike's got a huge burnout, so he's blown his tires completely off this car. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he's any tire. LZ doesn't care if he's got any tire. They're going to go back at it again. Now let's look at the tactics. LZ smashing walls. Mad Mike doing backwards entries. Nonsense all around. There's no way of deciding this except for just smiling and watching. I do think that. That was impossible for our crowd of judges to actually do any judging because it was that amazing. It was awesome, and I don't think anyone here is going to complain about seeing it go one more time. No, no, I, I'm not sad. This about is the first turn of events. Here. First one more time we've ever had in a fantasy it, ballot because it is. it's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it now is apparently an option that you can go one more time, and that's what it's all about having some fun. How cool is it? It just doesn't it look like not real life seeing these two drivers. No, on track it looks together. very video gamey, especially from the drone footage. It's amazing. So. 
Is Mad Mike still doing burnouts? He is Mad still doing. Mike. He's, he, he is angry. Angry Michael is. I mean, he's going to do the things that he does. I mean, you know, someone's like when they say they're. Oh, I've got this friend. He's mad, and you go, he's probably not that mad. They just, you know, when when they need to say he's mad, he's not. I am a hundred percent guaranteeing you that Mad Mike is mad because he will do anything in that car. He will blow it up for your entertainment. He will do donuts, and you know, it's one of those. Everyone says, well, it's a road. It's very going to be very precious with it. You got to put it right. Or you leave it at twelve thousand RPM, yeah. twenty four. He just says, nah, send it, mate. And just straight into the corner, backwards entries. And I mean, I don't even think I've ever seen anyone do a backwards entry in an NC Miata before. No, it's ever. not a thing. That doesn't happen. And, and Mad Mike has now done it three times that we've seen him. Yeah, do he's, he's, he's almost uh, habitually uh, backwards it's, entry. It's, in the a first. it's It's, it's uh, yeah, Mad Mike doing exactly what, he's, what he says in the tin. He, he is as advertised as it were. Yes, he comes and you say, well, you get what you paid for with Mad Mike. You, you come <laughs> and see him drive, and he says, I'm not going to leave anyone here without a smile on their face. LZ, I got to say, big. Big commitment from his team this weekend. That car has Insane. been a has been the work that's been done on the car. They reckon in normal circumstances would take three weeks, oh, and minimal. they've done it in 48 hours. Five mechanics, an engine tuner, engine builders, just to get this car out in front of all you beautiful people. To do here fantasy again. battles to, and a one more time that was random. Yeah, just to get it out here to battle Mad Mike for just cheers from the crowd <laughs> for the for the heck of it. It doesn't need to make sense. It doesn't have to. Stop trying to make sense out of things. It can't. It, it doesn't. Just... We're going back at it again. Adam LZ in the lead position. Mad Mike in the chase position. Neither guy with any tires left. Oh, this is going to be sketchy. Here we go. <laughs> At least it's not raining. We're going to give that some credit. Adam LZ trying to do his best impression of the Backy King. Let's see. And Mad Mike, even with no tires, is putting it in to Adam's business. That SR20 is singing. It's a brand new motor. And he is just, this is how you break in a motor, everybody. There is no more appropriate way. The three rotor just holding on because whatever Mad Mike does with rotor is untouched territory. He's a magician. For most. He's a magician. It doesn't exist. The flame from the back of that car doesn't. <laughs> the go Batmobile as it, it goes down. It doesn't. The flame doesn't go out until he gets back to the start line, <laughs> yeah. which is incredible. This is a really good run. If this was a top that 16 was. main event, this was a phenomenal run I for both hope drivers. This is a foreshadowing of what we're going to actually see when they're. Imagine they're competing for nothing. Imagine if they were competing for something as valuable as a skateboard deck. I mean, a skateboard deck. I would thrash my multiple tens of thousands car for a skateboard deck. That That's me. And uh, I also don't have Mad in my name. So no. I, this guy definitely is in. Mad Dave just doesn't yeah. have the same first, ring. First hand up was Mad Mike on skateboard deck. I'll wreck, ah, yeah, I'm in. I'll, I'll wreck my car for that. No problem. I'll bring it across some water and uh, into a different country. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody has uh, put Mazdas through enough stress testing like Mad Mike has. No, no, he no. Is, no. Uh, he's number one at the factory, I'm sure. For They're like, this is unbreakable. They're like, bring in Mike. Yeah, we'll see how let's unbreakable see, it, uh, is. See how it is. <laughs> I think that stems from his like freestyle motocross background. He just wants to put on a show. Exactly. No matter what. And he's such a, these guys are probably two of the biggest ambassadors in this. Where would drifting be without Mad Mike and Adam LZ? That's a big question. And I, and I say it totally seriously because these guys have such a following and they promote it so positively to so many and in people. in completely different ways. Exactly. Like, totally different ways of doing it, but that shows that there's so many ways to do it. Yes. And these guys have excelled in their particular field. And now we got to take a breath and hope both of them make it to the top 16, because here we go again. Here we go. Mike the in the battle. That was a burnout from both guys all the way down the straightaway. Mad Mike thrown in a back in. Adam matching his angle as they come back around into the power alley. Adam doing a good job of mimicking wherever Mike's car is going. And Mike's car is probably not going where he wants it to because it's out of tires. As they dip into the wall, it looks like Adam's having a little bit of an issue. Mad Mike rounding it around and banging into the wall himself. Oh my goodness gracious. I, I didn't breathe for a moment there. That, that, you, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we, we nearly lost we nearly lost LZ and Mad Mike in the in one the same corner. Run, we're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is all Mez's fault for this one more time. And I told Mez. him. I told him. <laughs> don't do it. Look, look at the entry. And LZ is just beautiful. Said, matching the angle. But right here, you start to see Adam's car just not produce enough smoke from the rear tires and just starts to run out of steam a little bit here, right? And then just shut her down. And Mad Mike's like, you know what? I'm going to carry on. I'm you know what? I've the wall. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five times. They're like, you know what? I've done really well, and now I've decided to crash into the wall. Yes. Guys, one more time as they get out of their cars. Get up for Adam LZ and Mad Mike. All right. Firstly, boys, thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> I kind of weaseled that one more time out for the crowd, and uh, I understand that I might have uh, pushed my luck a little bit there. So thank you for that. Uh, was it worth it?
Oh, it was worth it. Uh, it's a bummer. I, I think I popped a couple or something, so that's why I shut it down. But uh, that was a blast. I'm glad we got to do that again. Hey, you gave the fans what they wanted, and that's what they came here for. And Mr. Showman over here himself, a little bit of a scrape there, all good? A little bit of a wall. Stick it to the wall. It's probably the wrong motto. It's an expensive one, but it's a good one because it entertains. But yeah, you, you never know what's happening behind with the rotary because they're so loud. But Usually you can see, you know, the colour of the door. I'm not sure what's happening behind me, but that was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, unreal. Now, we couldn't really decide with the vote, so what do you reckon that we just make some noise for two great drivers who just put on an absolute show? Adam LZ, Mad Mike, giving you the fans what they wanted. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Adam, you're going to have this thing good to go for the top 16? I'm sure we'll make something happen. Ooh, yeah. otherwise there's that... How you falcon in the waiting? The mighty AU. <laughs> B-E-A, beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Mad Mike, Adam LZ, make some noise for these two absolute heavyweights of drifting. Back to you guys. Thanks, man. I think a draw is a fair that result. That was very fair. Yeah, th there's no rhyme or reason. And I'm sorry, guys, we took the power out of your hands. You've judged that there is no winner. <laughs> it is a draw, and they are going to go back and get ready for the main event, which is coming up very shortly. It is uh, not far away. We're about, no, we're, 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 we're about to get into the thick of it. We're back at 3.30 p.m. local time, and we are going to be on track. Mez and I are going to go down about 3.15, talk to all you guys, see if you're all pumped up. So don't go anywhere too far. We're not going to be uh, waiting too long before we send these boys back out on track. But Mad Quick Mike, bathroom break. Quick bathroom break. Get on your phone, message all your friends, say you just saw Adam LZ and Mad Mike crash and break things a lot and here's your battle bracket for later on look at the heavyweights stacking up if we want to see mike and lz again it's going to have to be in the final and they're going to have to go all the way all the way to the final look best of new zealand best of australia best from around the world all in that top 16 later on as my mike sends it one more time that poor car will never get a break he's going back, back around the bank <laughs> He's going the wrong way around the circuit right now, which is absolutely fine, according to our marshals, who are also panicking right now. And Mad Mike leaving the venue and leaving us in a cloud of smoke as we head towards our top 16 main event later today. Calder Park, you've been amazing. Don't go too far. We're back at 3.30 or before it for the main event here today in Australia. See you then. Since 1997, Vibrant Performance made its mark as one of the industry leaders in the development and engineering of exhaust and induction components for the automotive aftermarket. Over the years, Vibrant has seen its evolution pivot from the chambers of an exhaust and induction components brand to becoming the primary source of professional fabrication components for professional fabricators. Please be sure to find us at vibrantperformance.com. Hey guys, Jeff Jones here. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gooshin. I'm Matt Field. I drive Lincoln. They are the most reliable EC around, and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive Link.
Nemesis! Ladies and gentlemen, it's the final event of the year for the LZ World Tour. We're here in Calder Park, Australia, and Australia is buzzing. A little bit. But we're getting into our top 16. My name is Dave for Drift Games. This is my boy, Mez. And we're going to be talking through all the action alongside our friend Officer Dan in the tower. Mez, it's been a wild event so far. I've seen things I've never seen in drifting before, builds I've never seen. we got people borrowing cars, crashing cars, changing cars. It's been a lot of fun. You've been down here trackside. The speed through here is crazy, too. Mate, just watching the cars pan through on the wall, up close. I mean, these drivers haven't even entered the top 16 competition yet. This was just the jam session, and they're going absolutely ham. So it's really great to see, and uh, boy, are they really putting on a show. 100%. We are now at the top 16 stage. Our parade is making its way from the line down here, so we get to see all the cars, all the drivers, and those 16 will become three, will become one winner. So every round, we've had a winner from a different country. So our first round in English Town, we had an American winner. Second round was in Ireland, we had a UK winner. Third round, we had a Canadian winner. Will we have an Australian winner in Australia? Now, I know there's some crazy guys that drive here, but a lot of guys from New Zealand jumping in the mix, too. Well, that's exactly it. We have Aorta's finest guys like Gaz Wider, a four-time D1NZ champ. Benny Jenkins, he's, he's the young blood coming through. And then you've got the man the myth, the legend, Mad Mike. Um, yeah, and they are all absolutely putting it on the wall. So it's really anyone's game, but I really do hope it's someone from the Southern Hemisphere. Well, let's see. We might have an American, we might have a Kiwi, we might have an Australian. We, there's a lot of mixes in there. What we got is all of them leaving the line. They're gonna roll in front of you guys here in attendance. You guys gotta check out who's made it through to the top 16. And it's been a tough battle. They gotta get through qualifying. And then they got a lot of guys coming through from the last chance top 16 yesterday. We got some big names in there. We got some interesting cars. We got some Utes. We got some Rotaries. We got some 2Js. We got some V8s. We got some Orbeez. We have got the biggest mix I've ever seen in drifting when it comes to machinery. And they are rolling down in front of this amazing crowd here in Calder Park. That's exactly it. I mean, all walks, all walks of life. And it's really one of the great things about drifting is the variety you get. And it doesn't matter because it's all about putting on a show. And as uh, our ears are just about to absolutely get harassed as these guys make their way to sideline. I have absolutely no idea what you said because it is so loud on this track. Some wild machinery lining up for this top 60 parade. There is drivers that I haven't seen in years. There's new names to the sport, youngsters, and some of the biggest names from content creation, all mixed together in a little stew for being here to enjoy for the rest of today. Yeah, and once again, Dave, I had no idea what you said, but I did hear that you said content creators and competitive blokes, and yeah, honestly, that's one of the things I have been so excited about this show, coming here to Australia, because it shows what drifting can be and should be, as, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do and, uh, but yeah, it shows what drifting can be, and that's just putting on a show, making a lot of noise, because we all want attention our way, don't we, Dave? That's exactly what we want. There is a lot of noise on this track right now. As we line up all 16 drivers ready to take to the circuit. Wow. Wow. That was pretty loud. That was pretty loud. As we wait for the drivers to turn off their cars, we see that Adam LZ has pulled in here in a ute for this uh, top 16 parade, which is pretty wild. And we're just waiting for our last couple of drivers to get out of their cars before we get in front of the crowd here today. It's even chaos in the top 16 trying to park these 16 drivers. They're so amped up for this that they Adam LZ making the most noise in the most underpowered car on the grid right now in the Keep It Read U. As they all exit their cars, we got 16 amazing drivers here for your entertainment. And uh, we got some big names, we got some newcomers, we got some youngsters, we got it all in the mix this weekend. Now, I know I have to apologize publicly. I have to apologize to all of our drivers here today because we've been playing a trick on you guys. 
So we're having a little talk before you came out about this crowd. I mean, this crowd's pretty quiet, right? It's pretty quiet. They're not really that into anything. Um, so sorry. Or we may have just been in cahoots the whole time because Australia, make some noise! We are ready for this top 16. Are you ready for this top 16? This is the biggest drift event in Australia, but is it the loudest drift event in Australia? You guys have got to get on your feet, every single person, up off your seats now. Everybody up. Over here, everybody up. On the banks, everybody up. We're going to get one shot at this before we start these 16 maniacs on this grid. Australia, three, two, one, make some noise. Now we are going to head to battle. 16 drivers become three podium places, but we've only got one winner. And before we get anywhere, I've got to talk about what is going on over here. This is the uncreamest S13 I've seen in some time, Adam. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good, good whip, good, good car. Now there's rumors that you didn't like the practicality of the 180 and you just need a little bit more space for activities. Yeah, you know, I can put my spares in the, in the trunk or the bed, whatever you call it. <laughs> So what we're saying is you're going to take to the top 16 in Australia's very own youth for this top 16. Is that what we're about to see here? You never know. Guys, give it up one time for bringing it all the way from the U.S. to Australia for Adam LZ. So we're going to get one more huge. It's going to be the biggest cheer. It's got to be the biggest one because it's the last one before these guys start these cars. Get back in. And I remember that all of these guys, as professional as they look in their race suits and they've got all these lovely liveries and everything, they're really just massive attention seekers. The more you get amped, the more they get amped. So if they get the biggest cheer possible, they're gonna go out and probably destroy all of these cars for your entertainment. But they're only gonna do it if it's worth their time. So for the last time, Australia, I need you to make some noise! <laughs> We are ready to go, they're ready to go. I've got one more phrase before we send them to the start line. Gentlemen, start your engines! And I'm gonna stop talking, give it back to Mez and head to the tower because I am not gonna hear anything, you're not gonna hear anything. It's time for the top 16! to the start line. We are waiting for our master of ceremonies, Dave Egan, to get back up here into the tower. 
You guys did an absolutely fantastic job of pumping these guys up because that it, half of them aren't going to have tires by the time they get to the start line. So very well done. You guys rattled the tower up here, and I'm sure you made each and every one of those 16 drivers the happiest that they've ever been to be here. You guys are an amazing crowd. It's one of the biggest crowds, apparently, that this place has ever had. And I think you may have won Dave Egan's favor. So we will see how that goes. Hopefully everybody's gonna have a good time. We've had some crazy stuff happen throughout this weekend. We've seen some crazy cars out on track. We have even crazier stuff ahead. The top 16 is gonna be one of the most intense battles. You guys have pro drivers, you have amateur drivers, you have influencers, you have the whole gamut of cars, engines, packages. It's like somebody took random things out of a hat and was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this engine and this car and this is what's happening. This is our top 16. We have some legendary battles on both sides of this bracket. It's going to be interesting to see who can make it down. Like Dave said, there is a strong chance that an Australian could win this event, but he's going to have to work very hard compared to everybody else on this list. We've got some great drivers from the USA. We've got New Zealand. We've got USA. Dave Egan back up in the tower. Hope you didn't catch it. Did you catch your breath? No, you you were winded, just like I was when I had to run over here. That's a, a lot of lot stairs. Of stairs. <laughs> but as you can see, you guys are lovely. I know it's cold out there. I hope you got warmed up a little bit by the uh, calisthenics that Mr. Egan had you doing. He did tell me you're 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 one of his favorite crowds. I, I think I think we can work on that as this day goes on. We want to see a lot of crowd interaction as we go through this. We want these drivers to know you appreciate everything that they're doing for you. All the crews that keep these cars running to make the show happen. This is a magical event, and I'm so proud to be. We're part having of it. so much fun, Dan. That, that <laughs> crowd is well. I have no voice left before I, we even start. You would haven't even started. Usually, this is the end of the event when you're I like am, this blown away by the enthusiasm and i know it's a little chilly out there but everyone's having so much fun so many smiles on faces and i can't wait to see the battles that's what we came here to see that's exactly these guys go head to head have some fun enjoy themselves but with a little bit of competitiveness as well you could see it the driver's like in their it's eyes. an exhibition sure but it's not really an exhibition when you're changing your tire pressures that much on your toe and your camber mm, is it really no mm. things got a little serious yeah, in the do you try and turn off the pro in some of these guys they can't do it turn off the pro turn up the nitrous exactly so you got a little sprinkle of rain but it's not too bad hopefully it stays away for this top 16 and we're going to go to our first battle very soon dan what a stacked grid i mean we've got huge drivers here huge names like names that have never met each other in competition before and would never and that's what i love about this you, you know when people say oh these guys would be better than this guy and we just make it happen oh. we just put them all sprinkle them all in the street. it's real life and it's real life you're gonna see guys go head to head that have never you've got adam lz out there in a ute he's not sure if he's gonna drive the 13 or the ute he can't even decide and i, I will add i think he did an almost proper tip in a tip in a tip in is that what it's called i don't know I'm, I'm learning things learning as i'm things. being here we're learning the lingo apparently that's not a knife is not something that that's people in australia not a knife. know at all so we now move on to our first battle, and it's an interesting one because Jason Farron having those alternator issues means he switched his car to the OR33 four-door, which Grant Anderson was driving. He's in the key. There's a ratchet strap from the, the inner from the screamer pipe to the bumper bar, holding it all together. That is a, it's, it's one way to do it. It's looking more like Stewie's car now than it ever has. Stewie's like, I was ahead of the trend. <laughs> I, I was ahead of the trend. He goes up against, I told you. and I'm telling you this, in real life, a thousand horsepower SR20. Well, SR2.4, essentially. That thing is rowdy. Incredible. I went over, looked at it, I touched it, and I wanted to get some of its magical powers. So if I'm not mistaken, this guy has finished right up at the top of the Australian oh. National Series. Jason Farron competing in the D1NZ Series this year. So you got a little bit of a mix here in this first battle as they come off the line. Jason Farron in that lead position, and it's going to be Brody Maher in that, in that chase position. Nice from Brody getting up close and personal to that R33 as they come through. Oh, yes, Brody Maher sort of turning it up a little bit. Oh, almost contact between both of these drivers as they fire down the power alley. Look at this, Jason Farron get a little bit of a run here as Brody Maher now transitions back up onto the door. This is what we came to see. Bumpers Battle on numero. walls. Uno, oh, right out of the Jason gate. Farron the wing. hits the wall, loses the wing, and we are up and running in the top 16. Yeah, I, I see a little bit of rain on the window up here, so I'm assuming the track conditions aren't exactly optimal. 
Ah, they're optimal enough. They're, they're optimal, they're obviously fine. optimal enough. Is they're there still making smoke. Is there such a thing? So here we go. Look at this. I love this from Bodie Marat. Stark goes so aggressive through these first two transitions. Gets up to he almost oh, makes he contact here. There. The wing was like, got away with that one. <laughs> and then the wing had no idea what was about to happen later on as it went to the wall. He went so close to the wall that the wing just said, good luck. And, and here we are. Look. Goodbye. Poof. Dink. Oh. Jason it was Ferrin. such a oh, light hit, it. and then that last one it. was think, not a light I think hit. Jason Farron's done more damage than Grant Anderson did all weekend in one run. I think so. This is going to be an interesting... He's got another chance to do It's going to be though. an interesting insurance claim. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm not sure that maybe Grant Anderson circled the sheet before he gave the car back and said... I hope he didn't take pictures. Yeah, this is uh, this is what I did. This was this is no, how No, this was it. definitely previous. Jason Farron's like, oh, you broke the wing and everything. He's like, I was watching, Jason. There's a replay. That was you. It's on a screen. You broke your own wing. I may have ratchet strapped the intercooler up, but you definitely did the wing. That poor skyline. Yeah, like, it was beautiful. That skyline has been looking at its watch since about half five yesterday evening going, really? Am I still here getting this abuse? But Brody Marr did a good job, but he dropped off a little bit just he towards did. the end. And maybe Jason Farron went, I mean, it, it's hard to tell. It's almost half 32 skyline with the headlight br brought so far back on the front of that 33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone say he's improving the looks of an R33 yeah, by removing. I, I actually like that one. Yeah, you like I that like, one? And I'm currently liking it in its condition that it's in now. Well, it's also missing a lot to determine it's a 33. Most, but anyway, most of it. it might be missing more by the end of this run. It's the second half of the battle between Brody Mara and Jason Farron. Jason Farron in the chase position. Brody got the pace on him here. That thousand horsepower SR20. God's motor times four chucking it in as Jason Farron is doing a fantastic job of keeping up with Brody as they blast through the power alley and into the most dangerous part of the track by far and losing bumper, losing wing as they round the last corner. They're just like, you know what? Yard sale. Absolutely, Australia, are you not entertained? These boys are hitting walls for your entertainment. Remember, the grand prize, all the money in the world wouldn't buy you. That skateboard deck <laughs> that they get at the top of the podium, worth smashing every car into every wall. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of smashing. And this was the first battle. There are so many more to go. I have a feeling this is going to be a very sketchy but entertaining top 16. I am fully into it, and so are these guys. Obviously, they're sending it for this crowd out here and it is a fantastically overcast irish day it's beautiful this is uh, the height of summer for us yes this kind of weather <laughs> um but so as they come across through the vibrant finish line towards to get their results and you can see the damage sustained to that or 33 at this it point has seen better unbelievable days. australia make it make some noise for brody Marin and jason ferrin that was an interesting one a lot of a lot of crashing a lot of hitting things. Things were happening. Some good wall runs, some bad crashing. A lot of wings got lost in that one. <laughs> and pugs all around for these two drivers as they await their decision from the judges. It's going to be a tough one for the judges, Dan. This is. There was there was a lot of mistakes made on both sides. So whoever made the least amount, I think, is going to be the one that will be victorious today. How is that car half look like a 33 and a 32 at the same time? I, I don't, don't know what's know. happening. We're going to get a winner here, though. Decisions dropping in, going through to the top eight. Is Brody Maher. Brody Maher gets the win. Brody Mayer gets the win and goes through to our top eight. Jason Farron has put all of his cars to rest now. No more can be, well. well this one he may not have to worry about for a little bit, but uh, the rest look, of them he still there's has There's a long to way from about. here to the end of the show, Dan. Yeah, and I feel like Jason Farron well, has got too many cars in there not to cause a bit of ruckus later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Brody Mayer yeah, hitting the wall but making a few less mistakes hey, than Jason Farron. here's your Farren. bumper back, bud. Yeah, is this yours? This is mine. Yes, yeah, that I, looks like you. yours. I'll take that back, yes. That means an SR20 has a chance of winning this event again. Well, I'll tell you what. If and an one SR hell of an SR20 yeah, it's, at it's that. It's like an SR20 asterisk afterwards. There's many, like five. Many, many asterisks. But it is Brody going through to that top eight here in Calder Park as Jason Farron bows out. Jason, the, the proximity from Brody was the key. Was. You look at Jason through the first section of the course, very shallow, not mm. much proximity. Brody doing a better job there. They both hit the wall. I mean, that was kind of canceled each other out. Um, but it is going to be, yeah, wings. Jason Farron broke two cars in the space of one battle. <laughs> so there you go. And he will return back to Jason Farron. Uh, and of course, Jason Farron told us there's a rule here in Calder Park that you're not allowed to do a static burnout. And these do, are, these are the anti-static. Do you want to know why that rule is there? Mm. Guess who did that static burnout that, that was the problem? Who did it? Jason Farron. Okay, Jason Farron. So, so he created the his... enforcer of the rule oh. is the creator of the rule. Absolutely. And as you can see in the Keeper Reads, or 33 doing a good job. Guys, give it up for Keeper Reads, Jason Farron. As he bows out of competition, and it is going to be a little bit of a, I mean, look at this. 1,000 horsepower, SR20, doing some donuts. It is poetry in motion, and Brody doing a great job just getting rid of the last of those tires as he heads through to the top eight. Who wanted those tires anyway? There was no need. That was, no that need. was totally worth it. Look at that, down the bottom. This could be you.
It could be. It could be burn, do burn into a thousand horsepower sword. Oh, it might not I would be. Have, those are words that I would have never said. Exactly. So we move on to our next battle. It's going to be uh, Robert Arbolino against Age Panaro. So this is going to be an interesting one. We got the PS13. We're going up against the E90 with the big V8. This is a, a big horsepower discrepancy, big style discrepancy. Two beautiful cars going at it, giving him a little bit of a lead and just pouring on that power. You saw that smoke start to pour out as Robert Arbolino having a little bit. There he goes, diving in, really aggressive there. Oh my goodness gracious from age. Look at them go, Robert through the power alley, chucking it into the wall, right up into that pocket. Could have got in there a little bit sooner, but they are in it to win it as we round out this last corner. Rand on the roof. He is pumped. Crowd is pumped. We are pumped. That was fun. And I, it, to me, it looked like Aj made the mistake on the entry, just didn't initiate. It just was very strange. Just, and he just, he kinda, try again. He was admiring the E90 and said, oh, no, I'm in this battle, too. It has a problem. It looks like a handbrake problem. As he goes through here, though, he knows he's making it. Look at the transition there. That is, look at that. That is the closest anybody's been there. So he knows he's made the mistake. So he's trying to, you know, reel Putting him back in off. very, very quickly. So trying to, you know, get some points back in the run. I think he does a great job. He's on the door for the rest of the run. But that one mistake yeah, at the start. That might, have, that might have been the, the season ender for that one. But we'll see. Again, you know not in our hands. Not in our hands. Not, not over yet. No. So they make their way back around to the start line. And it is going to be a switch up. So we're going to see uh, Robert in the chase position and Aj Panaro in the lead. Now, Aj has got to figure out that entry because that's going to be a nail in the coffin if he does that twice. But he does climb up. Look at this, Proxim. This is outrageous. And that's coming off of the transition. Like, that was absolutely insane. To be up at somebody's front fender on the end of a transition is a very, very difficult thing to do properly without running into the car in front of you. That's wild. And I mean, he, he got away with it. It just choked him up a small bit, so he had to back off, and then he got back on it for the last wall again. So they're back on the line, Dan. This is uh, halfway done. Big mistake from Aj Panaro in that PS13 on the initiation. However, it's not over yet. It's not Things over yet. switch there around pretty quickly. Half. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, which way they switch around because I have a feeling that Robert is going to be, you know, he's got a decision to make. Does he go close? Does he play it cautious? I can guarantee you Aj is going to be up and gone like a rocket here. So he's got to deal with that. And he's going as quick as he can to blast down. Let's hope he doesn't have that same bubble because that'd be a horrible thing to have to come back from as Edge is rounding the first corner into that second hit. But yeah, Robert doing a good job here, but he's not too close. But maybe he's just playing it cautious, waiting for that last throw. Well, big oh, early transition oh, oh, from oh, oh, Robert. Oh, oh. Got himself in a strange position. How did he get away with it? I don't know what just happened. That was, they were going two different directions at one point there, going into that corner. That didn't make any sense I to me. I thought Somehow, they were going to switch spots. I thought it was going to be an overtake on the outside, and no one goes high on turn three, <laughs> as they say in Days of Thunder. That was a little crazy. I did not I, expect I any of that to just no. happen. Uh, it was like Robert said, I think I'll play it cautious. And then he went, nope, no, I'm, I'm not. going to do rocket ship stuff. So look at this. Through this transition, Robert loses a little bit of ground. And it's like he said, I could just handbrake or I could just see what happens. So it's he, like he found all yeah, of the grip. He got just, so much speed. Yeah. Look at, like, where is, wow, how does he get away with that? It's the wrong line. And again, the advantage for uh, uh, for Robert in the first one could be overturned by that. I don't know. The judges are going to let us decide yeah, gonna with the results. One. But give it up for Aj Panaro and Robert Arbolino. Two really cool cars. Very too. cool cars. Very different cars. Very different power plants. It was wild. It was sketchy. And I enjoyed it. Every I enjoyed it. He's in, reverse. He's, he's in reverse getting to the start line. I don't know. It's very confusing. I don't know this what's happening. Good drifters, bad three-park uh, parking guys. I yeah, mean, the, not, the, not so good at I wouldn't that. Like, Three-point turns, not their strong point. <laughs> E-brake turns, yeah. we'll give it to them. Oh, amazing. I would imagine they are dangerous in a, in a shopping center car park, these guys. <laughs> As they get out of the car, give it up for Robert Arbolino and Aj Panaro. Once again, hugs all around just showcases how friendly this motorsport oh, is. Oh, for sure. And it's all about fun and smiles this weekend. But someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. And the winner is going to be a one, one more, more time. time. The oh, winner is both of us <laughs> in the tower because we get to see that madness play out even more. So we're going back at it again. That was interesting. I, again, I can see it. Big mistake on one run from Adge on the entry. Big mistake from Robert in the chase on the power rally. Yeah, and that's a good call from the judges. Yeah. This is an easy one, I think. At yeah, that. balances it out, and they go back at it. Again. Not a lot to write home about. No, want to see a clean run. Want to see a clean battle. Want to see sure. these guys put on the best show possible. And with big mistakes like that coming through from both drivers, that's not possible. So. Absolutely. So as they pass through. The vibrant finish line. They're going to head back around. We're probably going to run another battle. Get them, a little, you know, give them a little bit of time to cool down. Yeah, yeah. And get back at it again. It's top 16, baby. As we move forward here at the LZ World Tour, 
Big shout out to all of our partners here this weekend. We got Cancel Wheels giving twenty five percent off wheels this weekend. Goodness. Yeah, code. I shouldn't say it out loud, but don't say it. Z twenty five. Don't say it. Don't say it. Nothing has been said. You, you, you shouldn't know this. You didn't hear that from us. You didn't us. hear that from us, and if you, we will deny it. We will deny it publicly. So we move on to our next battle. It is going to be a very interesting one. We've got two cars, similar colors, but not yeah, in any very way. similar colors. And very, that's, that's where it that, ends. That's where it ends. We've got this credit with Jordan Sanderson in the Ute going up against Scott Miller in the S14. The opposite of a Ute. Yeah, not as practical. No. But it looks cool. And the Ute also looking very cool. And you know what? Jordan Sanderson makes this Ute look like it is a very, very capable chassis. He does. I've been watching his driving all weekend. He's been hitting things, but he's been running great lines. Let's see what happens. Look at this. Scotty Miller getting aggressive on the run up here. Scotty Miller fires into that first corner in the chase position. Big angle from Jordan Sanderson. He's a bit wide here, but he's allowed Scotty Miller to do all the work in the chase position. And Scotty got to take advantage here now. Be careful on the transitions. Look at that. Nose of the car in. Backing it off. Waiting for that big dive onto the wall. And Scott Miller does exactly that as he fires up onto the door look at sanderson though in the wall look at that beautiful that was an absolutely beautiful. fantastic run from both of these guys Nothing. and it was nice it looks like they're almost teammates it's like, we do this all the time but they're not teammates they're not teammates they're in very very different uh, chassis and uh, i think it's going to be a very interesting call as we go through it and you know what because i can just make this show up as i go along dan yes i've got a guest for you who's this because what's happened here is they've let two morons decide what the opinions are here we're going to get the opinions of a pro driver oh no we got darren kelly in the building ah, darren see yourself Mr. Dan. Darren, kelly. darren kelly the legend is here darren you're in the building you're watching some madness going on here we're going to get some expert advice from darren here for a couple of runs because i think he's well able to tell us who's doing well and who's not so yeah uh, hey how's it going good man i'm Thanks dan for, uh, hello nice yeah. to meet you yeah you too so what, what, what do you think of everything that's transpired have you seen much of the event yet uh yes yeah, so i've been uh, lucky enough to come over here and unfortunately not be driving but uh be having a couple of mates taylor james and Mitch Lana, Mad Mike, Gaz Wider, they're all uh, nice. Uh, well, Mitch is Australian, but the rest are from <laughs> New Zealand. And um, yeah, we are all good mates and uh, yeah, help, help each other out as much as we can. This is obviously an event that everyone gets together and, and helps each other as much as possible. It's all about getting out there and having some fun. So It is. Oh, well, I'm glad you're having a good time. We're yeah. glad to have you up here in the booth. I want to hear some pro driver from this side of the world talk about some of the pro drivers that you're seeing on the track now. And you've driven here, obviously, I'm assuming. Yeah, I've, I haven't driven this layout. I've driven oh. on the, uh, the infield layout over on the uh, inside the oval. All right, and here we go. We're actually getting back into that next battle. We've got Scott Miller leading this time in the S chassis versus a U, which is something we don't have in the USA. We have one or, or two. I think we had a Subaru and then we have uh, the old El Camino, as it were, but it never really caught on. And you guys have them absolutely everywhere, including drifting, yeah. which is a nice thing to see. It's such a different type car, different type chassis. How do they get rear grip? Like, it yeah. seems to me like there isn't any to be had. It is um, it is a very unique thing. It's, I guess that's what drifting is entirely, is like building unique cars, doing something different. Uh, this is very Australian. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, something different, but this chassis is very similar to the, the sedan version of, of a Holden Commodore. Ah, so, suspension-wise, um, you can make them work. They are obviously a little bit lighter, I would imagine, in the rear, but um, it, these guys make them work. Oh, he's making it sing. Yeah. And, and it's already V8 swapped, and it, I mean, they just come with that in it. You can see he's yeah. got all of his, his accessories in the bed of the truck yeah yeah put as much weight in the back as you can and uh, yeah. try to get as much traction in there as you can and and these cars again very similar looking very different very different driving styles but absolutely put on a show for us today here at calder park we are waiting hopefully the judges are making a decision they're taking their sweet time over there but we're gonna see what we can do out here ladies and gentlemen round of applause for these two guys for putting it all on the line for you today Got a little bit of neon showing, got a little bit of red, a little bit of white. Doing it for you guys, people. We are going to get a decision. Jordan Sanderson is going to get the win. Congrats, bud. The Ute moves on. Yeah, yeah, so through the top eight. Uh, definitely not an easy job for the judges today. Some of the battles, uh, obviously, these guys have had a lot of track time this weekend. Some of the practice battles, everything has been, like, if you're 
in their seat, I'd, I don't envy them today. So No, uh, no, that's what we keep saying. We like to be on this side of the things where we don't have to make the important decisions that actually matter. Yeah. We're just going to talk about it, express our opinions, but nothing that we say is going to sway them because we are in a separate room. Yeah. So it's absolutely fantastic. These guys are going to do some celebratory donies as we get ready for our next battle. That was uh and it's still going yep he's definitely happy he won i think i i i'm just gonna go out on a limb and just uh guess that <laughs> this he is was only top 16 on wait until they get into the, the top no, four this is this is top 16 these have been some crazy battles so far and it is indeed mad mike versus maddie hill now kiwi who, yeah so i Fortune. want you to explain this run to us as they go through so mad all mike right. chucking it in mad mike all about the style big entry uh maddie hill great driver good chase there he's obviously trying to close the gap a little bit here mad mike's on a pretty good line through there out to the outer zone man mike is nailing the line a little mistake there by mike but uh he'll definitely put it on the wall all the way around here Every into the wall single time uh, Maddie's <laughs> right there. as they round out and careful don't follow too too close behind yeah, Mad Mike, yeah, yeah, you yeah. will get caught on fire all the way down the front straightaway. So it's a it's a danger zone. He was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, back it up, gonna, back it up. I'm gonna have to back off of that <laughs> just a little bit. But Mad Mike has absolutely been nailing these entries. He is at 90 degrees or past 90 degrees almost every single time. Yeah, in a very underpowered car. It sounds like Mad Mike's car is making a million horsepower. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he lifts off the throttle. I think he flicks that switch on, and the, the throttle stays jammed, and he just pumps the clutch all the way through the section. So yeah, and he was saying he only makes like 390. And, yeah, and like like I said, like eight foot pounds of torque because it's a rotary, <laughs> even if there's yeah. three of them. But it sounds absolutely glorious. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's Mike's style. Like he's he's all about putting on a show, and and he definitely not, does. Yeah, it's definitely not the most like the best competition car but he's out here completely putting it on on the limit competing with some of the best cars in australia oh he does and he's putting on a show it's for the people and that's what the people want to see is a screaming rotary going by making them all deaf this oh. run will definitely be like mike does not hold back at all so this run is going to be oh that's what i like to door. hear so, yeah. and you know they're competing for a skateboard deck right yeah oh yeah so when's the last the time you did that <laughs> yeah well <laughs> <laughs> can't i have yet yeah, that's not, not a thing that most people do as they chuck their $100,000 race car at a wall. And here we go. This time, Mad Mike is going to chase. Let's see if he can put all of the pressure on. I'm going to leave it to you to explain this one again. All right. So Mike's dropped back a little bit, but he close up the gap. And he's got a good line through here. A little bit of a bobble, I see. Yeah. From both of those guys in different places. Mike's taking a little bit through there, but pretty dang in proximity. Maddie's on a really good line, so he's going to allow Mike to get up here on his door. Really good. Yeah, a few mistakes were made, but yeah. here's all right. Mr. Kelly, thank you so much for joining me today. It's, it's, it's always an honor to have another professional in the room. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time I can go, come back and bring a car. Yeah, we'd like to see you down there doing some skids instead yeah, of yeah, sitting up here sure. talking into I'd a microphone. To be. Yeah, <laughs> next time for sure. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, you, Darren. Amazing to have you here. And of course, uh, the only professional that will be on the mic this weekend that knows anything. Yes, and, I would uh, say so. No, the level has dropped again. So I was watching that in front of the crowd, the noise, the smoke. I mean, it was a beautiful battle to watch. Some bobbles from both drivers, yeah. though. It's going to be an interesting one to see which way it goes. And uh, Mad Mike, I mean, it's just, he's pushing. I mean, I, I would say rotary sound amazingly, but this car, he said, is quite old school, uncut knuckles, 400 horsepower. So, and he's pedaling against some big machines big today. Big machines. So it is awesome as they get out of the car. Guys, we want you to show your appreciation to Mad Mike and Maddie Hill. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a close one for the judges. They're having a little bit of a deliberation. I can see over my shoulder. Uh, some mistakes on both sides, but Maddie, Maddie Hill not wanting to take his helmet off. Can he take? <laughs> can he take his helmet off? I think it's stuck. I think the helmet may be stuck on his head. So here we go. It is going to be a decision for a spot in the Great Eight. Will it be Mad Mike. Will it be Matty Hill. Who's going to get the win? Here we go. And it's Matty, Matty Hill, Hill gets, gets the, the win. win. Matty Hill getting the win. That was an excellent display. That was. I think you can see just hard the, thing to judge there, though. Yeah, the pace of Matty Hill really tough for Mad Mike. Mez, you're down with Mike on track. All right. Yeah, Matty, Matty Hill did get the win. Mike, 
You put on an absolute show for the fans. The crowd have been absolutely loving it. Have you been loving it? Uh, yeah, like I say, man, like, like drifting, they say it's a judge sport for me. It's a spectator sport. We come out here for the fans, for you guys, put on a show. I've been fortunate to be in this sport for like 16 years, chasing the dream to entertain. It came from freestyle motocross, breaking a lot of bones, and now I can do it. I feel pretty safe with the roll cage around me and being able to put it on the wall for you guys. So thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Adam, for the invite. And we'll see you soon. See you next time. Hell yeah. Make some noise for Mad Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Matty, I might interview you later, brother. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Maz. And it is, of course, uh, Mad Mike. I feel, though, it might not be the last time we see him today. I'm hoping it won't be the last time You can't we'll keep that today. man away no, from a crowd. He is mad. He is mad. And, and I feel like we could tell him, no, Mike, you're out of the competition. And he would go, I don't compute. I'm going I, to insert somewhere. Yeah, I don't understand what that means. I kind of want to drive some more. So we might see him later on for something. I, I'm not saying what it is, but it might be a little bit something. I've always been a fan of everything, his whole package. The cars that he builds are absolute weapons. They have the coolest sounds. They always shoot flames. And Mike is such a nice guy. Oh, and he's, you know what, he epitomized. Is, you know, t it was, yesterday he was right in the middle of the fans. He was high fiving everybody. He's just, you know, he is as he advertised. Is the personification of what a motorsports professional should be. And also, he's a little bit like, you know, of a showman that we need lots of showmen in the yes. sport because drifting does allow you to express yourself more than many other motorsports because you can kind of build what you want. And what you're looking at here is probably the silliest MX5 that's ever been built, but he makes one it of work. The most stylish. And he's always so precise with his builds, his sound, his style. Guys, one more time. Give it up for Mad Mike. That is uh, fully sick, as they say. As they would, he would be stoked on that. We wouldn't say that in Ireland, but that's a very uh, international phrase right now. Stoked Holy on sick. that. And that MX, look at him. You can't even see where he's going. Yeah, he's like, oh, I think I'm pointed in the right direction. I'm going to do more burnouts. More How burnouts, about that? More flames, <laughs> more rotaries. Nobody is complaining. The beautiful sounds of my life. What a unique sound. Is that something you ever get to hear? No. And look at the flame this thing is about to pop after all that heat. That car is insane. He's clutch kicking down the straightaway. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Mike, what a show. Oh, incredible. So we're going to go back to the one more time between Age Panaro and Robert Arbolino. I want to see a clean run. This I, want I, want some, I want to see an, see an entire run happen. We had some wildness. We had some mistakes. We had some missed initiations. But both guys get to reset and go back at it again, Dan. That's what they'll be all about here is trying to clean up those mistakes. And here we go as they both blast down. <laughs> That BA-powered BMW, BMW is so quick. I think he's alive. Oh, 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 oh. There was a mistake that was made. We have I a think. crash. We have a crash on the first corner. It's, it was a light crash. It was more of a dance. I think they just... Oh. I think there's some pieces of uh, Age's car in front of Robert's car. I'm not sure. It was, a, it was a weird way to go through the course. What's stuck on the front? Something that's stuck. It's a fender. Uh, oh. Part of a fender. It's a part of a fender. Oh, his wheels are pointed in two different directions. We got a problem here on track. We got a we got a problem. We got that's, that's not that's not how it's supposed to no, be. No, we got a tie rod broken, I think, on the BMW, which means it's going to need recovery. However, is he going to be able to continue in the competition? Who's deemed at fault? We're going to have a little chat We're with the judges later on to see what that's all about. But. Uh, we're going to try and see once they've got a decision. We'll, we'll, we'll check in. Yeah, we'll, ch we'll check in. I have the, the technology to walk away from here and just ask them. So you I might you do, could do that. I could do it. I'm going to wait for them to finish their discussion. They're having a heated Out debate. of this car, pulling body pieces off. <laughs> it's an unfortunate way to be in turn one. My, my question is, is that from that car or is it from the other car? Yanking body. Yeah, I like that fender. I'm going to take that yeah, for myself. I like, Thank I, like, you. I like what you've done there. I'll take that with me. Yeah, that's mine now. So let's have a quick look at this. Dan, what's your thoughts? Okay. As he's burning out all the way down, he chucks it in. And then it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's like he was a magnet, and it just sucked his front tire around the other side. So of here, his front here we've tire. got a classic case of who went too fast and who went too slow, right? Yes. So to me, oh, he is pushing that front yeah. wheel all over the place. The question is, how much angle did the BMW put into that first corner? And was, was he accelerating was age, when he was supposed to? Was yeah, he e-braking when he was supposed to? Or did he just get too aggressive in the follow and bonk his front wheel? Very late on the accelerator, on the first corner, is Robert Arellino, and you can see from Age Pernaro's position. He's very aggressive. So this is a yeah, tough that was one. Yeah, slightly aggressive. Yeah, so I think what we've got here is a little bit of shared fault. However, the judges are going to have to deem, because it's an incomplete run. And because who, somebody has to fix their car. Somebody has to be right. Somebody has to be wrong. So they're going to have a good look at this one. 
And you guys can make your decisions here in attendance or at home of who you think was at fault. Yeah, you get to run back the replays as many times as we, get, we do. And also, this is another reason for us to not make a decision on this and let you guys figure it out for yourselves. <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, it's a very long e-brake drag from the lead car. It looks like he's washing. And Panaro looks like he jumps in very aggressively. Now, you could argue one way that Panaro will have to adjust to the lead car. And you could argue the other way that... Robert, or Robert has got too slow into that corner. Yeah. So, like, that's the argument. I'm not saying what's the right and wrong answer because that's not my position. And he did get a really good jump as a follow car. You have the option to jump the start line. So when they tell the lead car to go, the lead car has to go. As the following car, you can jump if you know you don't have the horsepower of the lead car. And he chose to do that and timed it quite well. He was able to keep up with them, even though there was probably a pretty big horsepower discrepancy between those. But, again... Who knows what happened? It's all up to the judges. We well, have the judges are going to have a conversation on this one, and I'm going to maybe uh, see if I can get some insight into what they're saying. I'd like to hear it as well, Dave, as they're getting that thing up onto the trailer. Yeah, so I'm going to just walk into another room here because I have the technology, and I'm going to go ask our head judge, Dan. Dan, what is your guys' opinions on what happened there? Well, the other two guys are still having a little bit of a look at it. I've made a decision, um, so I'm not going to say anything just too much. Let them make an independent decision. It's really important that I think we do that. Um, for me, though, you can see that it's, it's, it's a tricky one for us, right? If we watch the replay now, you can see Rob's a little bit later on the handbrake and getting on the throttle, uh, and Age is just trying to dive in there right up onto the store. So it's a tricky one. Uh, I have got a decision for it. I don't know if the boys have got a decision. Uh, they're still looking at it, but, yeah, the, we will make a decision. We'll let you guys know as soon as we can. But yeah. Thanks, Dan. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, we thought we got answers. We got no answers because it's the toughest decision of the whole weekend. So what we're going to do is take our time on this one, Dan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so what I'm going to try... There was an E for effort to was, try to squeeze it, some information was, out of it, a judge. I tried, to, I tried to get them on the jump, but... He was very diplomatic Very about that diplomatic. He told me everything... I will not I, sway the other judges. He told me everything and nothing I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that they're looking at it. They haven't made they a decision are, yet. Yeah, they, they are looking at it. As we I, are now I'm going to be honest with you. If I was to make a decision on this, it would be very tough. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's almost six of one, half dozen of the other. Like, you got a chase car in age going way, in my opinion, picking up pace, shallow pace on the inside to try and stay on the door. And then we got the lead car who should be on power. He is. He he's is only, quite he's, a bit like, he's only really on power. I can see that's what, I'm going to tell you this what the judges yeah. looking at. When does those rear wheels start spinning on that BMW? So he's on the handbrake here. He's on the handbrake. He's on the handbrake. There's a late handbrake still into the corner. And then now we see some power. So he's... He's pretty far into that corner before he goes on throttle. However, if you look at age, he's on a very shallow line. Yeah, he was actually ahead of yeah, his so car. Yeah, so he's kind of not chasing the lead car. He's sort of diving across in the chase position. So it's going to be a tough one for the judges. They're going to have to ascertain fault. And I would imagine... Happy to not be part of that. Imagine by the 17.7 thousand replays we've watched of this that they are still <laughs> having a good old. And again, it's a fun competition. It's an exhibition. But, but they people want to be judged they fairly. They want to be judged fairly. And the judges, of course, do not... Oh, we are not going to take it too seriously, but they have to because that's and, their job. And, and in a case like this, you have contact. Somebody has to be deemed at fault for the contact because that person needs to be allowed to either fix their car or call five minutes or whatever they need to do. So it's a, this is an important call. For sure. So as we recover this car from the track, we're going to be getting things underway very shortly here with the rest of our top 16. And uh, we've had wall runs, we've had wings knocked off, and now we've had a collision on the first corner. We didn't get to the second corner, Dan. No, first corner. We didn't all, even make All it. over. Didn't, didn't even make it. Get, this, this track could have been a lot shorter for these guys. Just first corner, <laughs> sort of. And done. hanging it up. Exactly. So um, we have got the uh, the BMW of Robert being taken away off the track. They went one more time, and we said, well, we want a clean battle, Dan said. I did want a clean battle, and that was immediately thwarted. Yeah, that was not as clean as we thought. That, that was, was unclean. Yes, that was a clean battle. smash -a on the first corner. Get those guys some soap. Yeah, but as he comes by, I mean, this is a... This is a an economical way to get back to the pits for It is. Uh, he's saving on gas. He's saving on tires. He's saving on wear and tear. His starter is thanking him. And he's still going to give a wave to all the fans as he goes by. So Out can we the give window, him a big Doing shout? it for the people. Look at this. Putting it all on the line. Robert Arbolino. Give him some Give him some words of encouragement, ladies and gentlemen, as he, he heads back it. to try and fix it. We got our head judge, Dan. He's come up. Dan, you gave me the most diplomatic answer on the planet earlier on. I need some facts. I need some stuff that happened, decisions made. Things. What's going on? Look, like I said before, it's a really tough one to decide. You know, we had that situation where the one car was sort of a little bit late to go. Age is a really, really aggressive driver, and he wanted to get onto it. He was sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. We think he's made the choice to go, yep, I've got to go now. He's gone a bit too early. He's caused that contact, so he's the one at fault. So, therefore, Rob will get till the end of the bracket now to get that thing repaired, and hopefully we'll get him out and settle that battle on the track.
Love it. We know what's happening. Nice. We got an answer. I, that I was, a, could, that I was could, a great answer, too. You know what? I agree completely because <laughs> I think that's the problem is you're aggressive in the chase. You, you have to you mirror, can overdo it. You can overdo it. You Very gotta, easy to you gotta mirror it. the lead. You gotta adapt to that lead car. And he was going regardless of what was happening. Here we go. Some more aggressive boys on the start line Ooh. right now. Got yesterday's last chance top 16 winner, Mitch Larner, the Thunder from down under, going Ooh. up against Gaz Wider. We got one of the newcomers in the sport, Mitch Larner, going up against the OG of Gaz Wider. This one is gonna be wild as they come off the start line. Gaz Wider is in the lead position. Look at this, Mitch Larner. Oh, Ooh. contact Big before the first entry. corner, and they stay in it. Mitch Larner hitting the back end of Gaz Wider's S15. This, this is gonna be close, this is gonna be insane. Mitch Larner knowing how good Gaz Wider is. He's watched him all his career be amazing and big and Look at that spark flying as they transition. What oh happened my there? Goodness Larner's gracious. in the door, Larner's in the wall, and he's all the way across the vibrant finish line. That was a phenomenal battle. I don't even know what happened. That was nutty. And you have to think, Mitch has so much driving and tandem time now on this track. He may have a pretty big advantage. That was aggressive. So right Mitch, from the get-go. So, so Mitch hits the back end of Gaz Wider's car, gets away with it, and then as they transition back, just watch the last transition before the wall. Sparks came out of somewhere. I'm I trying to figure out where they came out of. As they transition back, they transition. Oh, that had to have been through something on the front of his car. Is it a bumper bar to bumper bar spark? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Never seen anything like that These before. boys are out here trying to start a fire the hard way. <sighs> yeah. Um, like Flint on, yes. on both fronts of the stage. <laughs> Um, but Pile yeah. of sticks out there, and it might have went up. You know what? I don't know. That was amazing, that chase, though. It's great. But you can't have a good chase without a good lead, and Gaz Wider was doing it. What, what happened here? Look. What is spark? Is it an exhaust off the front of I the car? I think it was maybe... No, it's what falling out, It's falling out of someone's car. <laughs> <laughs> there were sparks from somewhere. We know it. Sparks are going to fly here this weekend, folks. Literally, they just flew out of the back of, back of a car. It looks like the back of Gaz Wider's car. Did his exhaust get touched on the on the button and then just hit the ground or something? I don't know. I'm Darren, so confused. We know nothing. I know that that was exciting. I know that that brought me to the edge of my seat. Has he got a spark button to make it more exciting? <laughs> which is now, some titanium. Yeah, which has now given me an, an idea. Like, sparks would be cool. Like, you know those low riders that drop and they oh, yeah. sparks? You guys have them over in the States. Oh, that's New Mexico, man. We didn't get the king of that. Yeah, so we have seen guys wider go, you know what? I got my own idea. So Mitch Larn, the thunder from down under, is now in the lead position. Gaz Wider's like, I don't know, sparks coming out of a car. There's, I got hit from both sides. I got I hit from both sides. Happened. Things are happening. And Gaz Wider's going to know because he's felt all those bumps that Mitch Larner was there throughout the whole competition. <laughs> he knows so he's, he's got to be aggressive. He's got to be aggressive from the off here. This one's going to be one for the highlight reel, I think, as Gaz Wider checks up through the gears into the first corner. Mitch Larner, nice initiation. But look at Gaz Wider, though. He's right there. He doesn't want to go home early in the competition. No, he does not. And he's been driving all weekend with that same proximity so we will see exactly what happens as they chuck into this last one this could be the determining factor for this battle right up in his business oh my goodness look at that lead run from mitch on that wall that was fantastic i just can't believe that they've built that car in the last couple of weeks it is a completely fresh build why would you put that size of an engine in that small a car and just think everything's going to work they rebuilt the entire engine yesterday completely rebuilt it top to bottom he missed qualifying got in the battles battle all the way through the battles to the final Right now, he's looking pretty strong as Gaz Wider looks to me not having the same level of proximity here through the power alley. No, 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 no. And and he definitely lacked on proximity. And I don't know the horsepower difference now between the two because everything has changed so much throughout this. But there was a, a, a car length versus uh, inches. Oh, it was man. wild either way. It is. They could, that was the battle of the day so far for me. Amazing stuff Exciting. from both of these guys. I got to say, I have to say that it's just incredible driving. That's what we want to see. We want to see incredible driving. That's the whole point. And that's what the fans want to see. Guys, give it up for Mitch Lerner and Gaz Wider, heroes of the sport right yeah. now, doing exactly what we want them to do, putting it all on the line in two very, very different machines. Very. With similar engine setups, yeah. but that's about it. <laughs> And we're going to get a winner, and we're going to get a decision here between Gaz Wider and Mitch Larner. Who's going to go through to the top eight? One, and it's a more, one time. more time. A one more time between Gaz Wider and between Mitch Larner. One more time. That is incredible. We're going to get to see that one go back out of the game. I'm excited because that was, those were good runs. Those were exciting runs. Those got me to my edge of my seat, and I get to do it again.
along I, with everybody else here. Absolutely, I absolutely love it. Look at these two guys out here saying, "What happened? I don't know. Did you it's hit so me? Casual. I hit you. It was sparks coming out of your car at one point, yeah, but man. it really was there. That's incredible. You bumped um, me. I didn't yeah. even feel it. I'm just happy that I'm still here. So they're in there one more time. They're going to go back in. I assume with these level of power machines, they will need some tires. Yeah, after those two runs. Thing. So they're going to go, and maybe they go back to the start line. Nobody knows. They're having a little discussion about it. So Mitch Larner and Gaz Wider heading back up to Walmart. It's going to be even closer than that. That car, that S15, is so beautiful. What The body kit is just so unusual, but it works so well. And then you got like the, the, DeLorean, line, the, blue line. the DeLorean Frontier on the KE. Yeah, that's a weird thing. It's but cool. I, I but everything, everything about, about it. This is Australia and New Zealand right here, just, just doing things. Oh, they do them very well. They do it, and I they go, add. you know that thing you were doing? I'm going to do the opposite of that, but still make the same results happen. So here we go. Mitch Turner and Gaz Wider, give them a round of applause. They head back up for a one more time battle. Really good driving from both of those guys, as far as I can tell. And uh, Judge is not able to decide that one, saying we want to go back at it again. A couple of bumps, a couple of hits. I was thinking Larner with the better, maybe Chase Lee, but then he had that big then mistake the hitting big him mistake on the, on the on first the corner. That's and something then, you don't want to do. You, no. you always got to yield to the car that's in front of you, and when you bump him on entry, yeah, he probably made a mistake. Right Gets a little bit sketch. Yeah. A little bit sketch. So we're going to move it along to our next battle, which is going to be a huge one. If you've tuned in because you're on the man's channel watching the event. Oh, those people. The Adam LZ. Uh, he is on the line. This, this, up is, in it, the this chat is right incredible. Now. So when was the last time in competition you saw an SR20 go up against an SR20? Oh. We've got Adam LZ in his cream S13. So they Brent, got it going again. I thought it was compression. He said, he said it. Yeah, they, no, they said that they got it going again. Who knows what's going on? Oh, I think goodness. maybe Sheer Will has gotten that car back on track. Adam LZ <laughs> is in the S13. It is going to be Baki McCarthy in the chase position. Marcus McCarthy, great driver. Two S13s in their correct chassis. As this they is go a down. 90s battle if I've ever seen one, and it's very Japanese style. Adam actually chucking it all the way out to the outside. Marcus happened to reel that Baki system in. So we'll see what they can do as they blast through the power alley. Adam hanging that thing out. Again, having issues. It's hard to drive a car with confidence when you've been having issues so much. Adam into the wall a little bit. Saw his wing move up and down, but stays in it. Makes it all the way through with a bump from Marcus at the very end. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. This is getting personal out there. <laughs> Adam LZ hits the wall. Marcus McCarthy hits LZ. <laughs> Two, the old one-two combo. The old one-two combo. This is a great run from both of these guys. It's aggressive. Both of these guys with stylish-looking cars. This this is the, the fantasy battle. This should be a fantasy battle. SR20 I mean, versus SR20. S chassis versus S chassis. But Coop versus Hatch. And this is, look at this, perfect lead run from LZ as he transitions back to wall. Goes in super early and super deep. Oh, he was Hits in there. The wall. It's that little kink that we were talking about, but stays in it. Stays in it. You can see him jump off oh, the wall. Oh, bink, right at the him. very end. Marcus with a bit of a hit towards the end. And they're going to look at this from a finish line perspective and say he absolutely slams into the He opened his gas door. <laughs> wow. Hey, man, you need a refill? That is incredible. Marcus, that was wheel like Marcus to wheel. Get a little greedy towards the yeah. end, trying to just get. But you know what? He's a showman. He's all smiles. I'm sure they're all thumbs up. This Boom. is they're having fun out there, and that's what it's all about. You can all say, "What's oh, a competition? Everybody has to be, you know, real super competitive." Have a look at your screen right now. Two SR20s smashing right into each the other. wheel. And remember, these cars look like they're in 2005. They're now 15 times the price right now. Just using them like the three thousand dollars. <laughs> Incredible. Look at these things. Absolutely units. Look how low that car is. By the way, again, tuck and rim. Tuck and rim. So many cars car. here. Tuck and rim. Adam LZ got the blackout tints on the 180. Of course, you know, look at the back end oh, of that car. It's, got a little smashed yeah, in on the smashed wall. Smashed in on the wall. But now LZ's got to be very aggressive here from the off. Yeah, hopefully nothing happened to that back wheel as he chucks it in. We're going to see. And here we go. Backy McCarthy. <laughs> Going a little easier then. I think he just was like, you know what, I'm going to be a gentleman about this. I'm going to enter nice and clean. I'm going to put down a hell of a lead run so that Adam can put down a hell of a chase. And Adam is doing just that as they round into this last outer zone. McCarthy deep into that pocket. LZ following him exactly where he needs to be. Hand out the window. These guys are stoked. Great run from Adam LZ and Marcus McCarthy as they, uh, you know what? For me, it's just so cool to see these type of battles because nowadays with very high-level pro drifting, you just don't get to hear the four banger out there screaming around the track. Two of God's motor in one place. LZ pulls in the chase, more angle than the lead car. 
Um, McCarthy a little bit wide on those two sections, but LZ, just his transition was really nice. Just here, it looked like uh, Adam's car just didn't have the pull. You can see him actually on the brakes there, trying to keep the car moving. Yeah. So it looks to me like that car having trouble staying on throttle. Watch this here as Adam's car just starts to die off on power very early. Right at the end. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the issue is there. They've been fighting that car all the way through. And we're going to have a decision from the judges of who goes through to our top eight. Both of the guys out of the car, smiles all around. Look at this. Both champions in my what books. What I love is that you, like, you just get to see these battles where everybody, look, wall smashes, door smashes. That's what it's all about, putting on a show for the fans. Guys, give it up for Adam LZ and Marcus McCarthy. Happy guys. Look at those look at smiles. That. Marcus hasn't stopped smiling since yesterday morning. He's having a good time. But we're going to have to find a decision on this one. We're going to have to see who is going to go through to the top eight. Decision dropping in from the judges. Three, Three two, two, one. It's Marcus, Marcus McCarthy, McCarthy gets getting the win and goes through to our great eight. And you can see it, Adam, just running out of steam a little bit on that last, last corner, one. straightening up before the finish line. Mez is down with the man himself. It looked like he was struggling a little bit, Mez, but he got there in the end. Yeah, absolutely uh, fighting with a wounded soldier here, are you? Yeah, so the car ran great. We actually broke a rock arm when I thought it was a, a coupler before, so we changed the limiter settings to make it a little safer. And I, I think we went a little bit too crazy because it was just like cutting power completely. Um, but it still ran great. We had a good battle, so I'm stoked. And uh, when Marcus sort of gave you that love tap after the line, did you pick up the boxing gloves out of the glove box, ready to go when you got to the start line, or it was all kosher? Honestly, I have to say, one of the realest things he ever did on the line, I left in third, and he could have just rolled me down the whole straight, and he waited for me, and that was really fucking cool, so thank you for that. Ah, uh, awesome, awesome. You love to see it. Unity in the community. All right, make some noise for Adam LZ, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we apologize for the swearing, but then we don't really because it's his own channel. So it's his own <laughs> show, it's his own channel, he can say what he wants. But uh, you can tell the emotion's high, and i got to give it up to Marcus McCarthy because this is why drifting works in this format. Any other time of day, if you've got a wounded car, the other driver is going to leave you for dead. Marcus McCarthy Gentleman holding on to let LZ get back in the battle. And this is what drifting should be about. I agree. Mono on mono, fair game. Who's going to do it over the two runs? Not was it, blow you was it a disadvantage to Marcus? No, because again, he's a good driver. He was able to stick it out. It was a close battle. I absolutely love sports. Absolutely. That's what makes drifting so unique and so different. We're all just as stupid as each other. So let's, let's work together and against each other, right? That's the way it works. Listen to those SR20s sing. Couple of God's motors just hanging out on a Saturday. I saw some people put their umbrellas on because they didn't want to get hit by the rocker arms uh, <laughs> coming through the sky. But uh, it's amazing. And we got Marcus McCarthy in an SR20 into the top eight. Two SR20s in the top eight That's right it. now. Now there's even more of a chance. Do the math. 25% SR20 in the top eight. Yeah. Well, some uh, good uh, odds uh, any uh, day of the week. And uh, now for something completely different. A KE with a V8 and an S15 with a V8 and an SR20 inside. No, the there opposite. Is, That's there a lot is, of SR20. Yeah, there was twice the amount of cylinders that there was in the last battle. It is going to be the rematch between Gaz Wider and Mitch Larner. We had contact, we had wall runs, we had spoilers coming off. Aggressive this one is going to be, look at the run that Mitch <laughs> Larner is going to take here. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be a highlight reel. This is not going to be an easy one to watch. It's going to be sketchy. It's going to be close. But that's what it's all about here at the LZ World Tour. Gaz Wider leading in Mitch Larner. And here we go as they both flick in and beautiful from Mitch in that follow position. Absolute bang on line from Gaz as they round through that first inner. And we come through the power alley. He is not giving him any room to breathe as they blast. Oh, look at that lead run and putting it into his door is Mitch Lerner as they come around that last bank. My goodness gracious, Dave, that was some of the most aggressive driving that I have seen thus far. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's the best lead and chase I've watched it on this was, track all weekend. It was, from start to finish. On There's been moments, but that one was the complete this package. Is, this is a tough battle because both of these guys, with the, with the way they're driving, don't deserve to lose at this stage of the competition. I could just see them do 16 more of these and I'd be happy. Like Larner is taking risks here on those transitions. Very late on the transition, being aggressive. This one is the biggest risk of all. It goes super snappy Ooh. and close. Gets up onto the door. That's that an is incredible. Textbook. But then look you got to look that. at the lead run. It's absolutely inch Flawless. perfect from Gaz Wider. This is this is going to be tough Ooh, because he now dinged the tail light, so he was on that wall. I got to you got to think about it. if you're Gaz Wider right now. You're returning to the sport. He took a little step back, and now he's coming in here. He's got this youngster, Mitch Larner, going. Oh, this is. Things have moved on. Things are crazy now. You got to go absolutely 100% from the 16. 
Look at that. I wonder when he dropped his tail axe. I saw it dangling as they were driving away. I wonder if it was right at the end. That's an Somewhere unbelievable in the moment right there as you see two guys full Just tilt onto smoke. the wall as they go across the vibrant finish line. I gotta say, this this for me is the biggest challenge of the day so far for Gaz Wider. He's gotta really push here. Like his radio, his challenge is gonna be like, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, 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 can you do 100? How many of those front bumpers are there in the world? Because we <laughs> might need to sacrifice one here for it's a like, win. Always get the paint ready. Yeah. This is going. We're going hard. There's a guy already mixing the fiberglass yeah. in the background. <laughs> going, I'm not so sure. The back end of the car absolutely folded in. Yeah. Oh, oh a little oh, dark. Oh, yeah, there, there, there we go. Structural tape. Look at the look the corner of his wing. That's what we were talking about. When he was rubbing up against the wall, it was just that wing just bopping along. And the, and the thing is, he, this is the most damage he's done all. He's been on that wall since the first run of practice. He has. So here we go. Mitch Lara will be in the lead position. Guys, right, this is just the top 16, folks. Yep. This We've is got not more to the go. final or the top four. And there's people taping cars back together to stay in the game. <laughs> there you go. Here we have Mitch Lara in the lead position. Now look, Gaz Wider starting to roll through the gears as they go. Look at Gaz Wider. He's hungry for this one. Yeah. As they go into the first corner. Big proximity already. There we go, and this is exactly what he needed to do. Gaz putting all the pressure on as Mitch on that perfect lead line again. These are two fantastic back-to-back -back runs, trying not to lead. A little bit of a discrepancy between on that transition. Let's see what they can do through here. This is the most exciting part. Gaz leaving a little bit of room to be desired. Oh my goodness, Mitch just putting the beans on him right there. It's like he found another gas pedal and smashed it through his floorboard. That was unbelievable. If you're a drift fan, you're here in attendance or you're watching at home, you got to appreciate the speed and the level of risk these guys are putting on the line. Gaz doing a great job, but I'm going to talk you through my opinion on this yeah. one. Yes. And I'm not sure it counts for much, but right now, guys, at this part of the run, Gaz Wire is killing it. Transitioning through, doing everything he needs to do. Now watch this, leaves this transition a bit early, which puts him on a break, so he's got to back off a little, and Mitch doesn't. Now he's got to do a big dive to the last corner. As he dives in, he's going to hit Mitch, so he's got to back off a little, allowing Mitch to get that accordion effect That's away exactly from him. Right. And that is uh, Gaz Wider trying a last ditch effort to get on the door, getting there, but only momentarily. You know, Dave, I think, I think uh, the way that you explain that i think you've seen a thing or two maybe a time or three i have watched at least one event in drifting i think which so. maybe just this one. i would have guessed that but, I, but i'm just saying you could tell that they want the win so bad that they're taking risks that normally they, they wouldn't, wouldn't have to do so early in the competition but as they get out of their cars we got to give a huge amount of appreciation to you guys throwing down on track give it up for mitch larner and give it up for gaz wider well, we got to find My a favorite winner. runs yeah, so definitely far. the best battle of the day so far. But who's going to go through to the top eight? It's Gaz, Gaz Wider getting the win. Gaz Wider gets the win and goes through. It was a little bit away from my estimations, but you know what? I could go and talk to Dan, our head judge here for a moment. You know, it looked exciting from both sides, but you decided Gaz Wider just had the better two runs. Yeah, look, and to be quite honest, I was going back on the other runs as well and having a little bit of think about it. I think I know the boys were doing the same. Um, when we came down to it, we always make sure we judge a lead line versus a lead line. So we've got to give those opportunities for the chase driver to get up in the pocket and really take on that battle. I mean, Mitch did a great job doing that, and it often looks like he's doing a better job in the chase position, but it's because the lead line was a little bit better than Mitch was giving Gaz. So we believe that that's why it was a little bit better in the end for Gaz. It was a really, really close decision. I'll tell you what, we are splitting hairs up here. Well, Spin Harris, top 16. Going to be a long day for the judges. I actually completely understand now. So we're looking at the chase. So we're thinking the chase guy does this, the chase guy does that. But he was able to do so because of because the lead run. Because the lead run was so good. And that's why we don't judge. Because we <laughs> will always take the naturally most exciting thing. I take the emotional way. Yes. Now, that felt like that guy. We won. look at it like fans, like you guys too. But from a judging perspective, remember, if you're, there are rules. If you're chasing, right, and the lead driver maybe not giving you the perfect run, you don't have... The ability to show off your skills mm -hmm. so you feel a little hard to but the judges watch that and say hey let's be honest it was very close either way there was no major discrepancies here but Gaz Wider's lead run smoother than Mitch Larner's therefore they looked at it and said that Mitch gave it a better opportunity to stay on the road and, and I agree Mitch Larner agree. doing a great job of entertaining us all weekend he's done more battles than anybody at this point because he came all the way through yesterday through to today and he bows out at top 16 stage to Gaz Wider the OG of New Zealand drifting that. is in the top eight. OG prevails. And then on to his teammate, <laughs> who they battled in the fantasy battles area on Ben Jenkins. He's pumped up and ready to he go. He is. Look at him. There we oh, go. Oh, and here's, here's Tim. Tim's got an SR20. He wants to join God's motor and the SR20 crew in the top eight. More SR20s than anything else in the top this is eight. crazy. Right 
So look at the run in that he is taking right now. He's like, but I need to catch up. I know you got a lot more cylinders. You got a lot more horsepower. Let me keep up. I want to put on a good show. And Tim Rogers coming back from an accident. First lap out, got the car back together, qualified, and is now doing battle with Tim Rogers. So Ben with the hero story, trying to get that thing back and running. And a big horsepower discrepancy, but staying in the game as they come through into the last outer zone. And Oh no, Ben Jenkins kind of getting on and off, oh. flying back and forth. Tim Rogers with some contact. What happened? I'm not sure what happened there. And I was just about to jump in down and say, I love this. You get to see the streetcar style, take it on the big pro car style. And he was doing an amazing job he was. until that last corner. But what happened there? You don't know. And let's check it out in the replay. It was going pretty well. That's a, that's a an insane thing to do in an SR20 powered car that was heavier than the car that it probably came out of. And he's doing everything he can, a little bit straight through there, but hanging with him and staying on his line. But then he kind of dipped out of the pocket and then he just dipped out of the screen. Yeah, it looks to me like Ben doesn't have major wobbles there. I don't know what happened. I think maybe you could see the eagerness of Scott. Maybe cross Just over He went it. on the shallower line. He's coming in real fast on the door, and he kind of hit the front Scared brake. himself a little. And then went, and everything, oh. just, yep, and everything just spun around. And Mate. rather than smash into the car in front of you, you take one for the team. Yeah, well, you don't. You, the out. thing is, it's not about they're afraid of crashing their car. They just don't really want to unnecessarily damage someone else's yes. car. Yes. And especially you can see here as they're coming up on the wall, Ben, not all the way out to the wall, to be fair, but it looks to me like... I think he just... A lot of smoke, Yeah, a lot of smoke <laughs> pouring out of the lead car, though, to be fair. Maybe he got lost in it. Oh, yeah, his helmet is covered in smoke. Uh, oh, yeah, filled his cab. I, I, I don't. I think maybe he got lost in the smoke. I don't know. I'd like to hear. I don't know. Yeah, I, I want to know what happened. Yeah, Tim. Uh, yeah, he's like, I don't know. I, yeah, bumping him around. And so Tim, I think, has given us the international signal of I went too close and I spun around. <laughs> Tim Rogers. <laughs> Oh, the old, the age-old international set. Yeah, two hands together showing you the run. Here we go, Tim Rogers in the lead position, Ben Jenkins in the chase. Now, Ben given a lot of room here because, of course, he's now assuming that he has the advantage here, a big one, from the spin of Tim Rogers. But uh, as you come through here, Ben starting, you can't really slow that S15 down too much because it's got a lot of power as he transitions back. Look at this late dial. Ben is way wide here. Oh, he's... hard. What's that? Ben was a little... Oh! Tim Rogers falling out of that. Oh, that was a fantastic job from Ben of avoiding disaster there. There was a As, lot of, whoa. I just had to stop talking and make noises. That's That was my sentiment. <laughs> I was like, oh, don't, don't, yeah. don't. So, uh, Tim, this is good from the start. Tim did a good job. He's been driving really well this weekend. Um, and you can see that Ben's probably going, let's feel this one out. Let's not get too crazy too soon. But you can see Ben's car starting to, he has to pick, pick up pace here because he his car is going pretty straight line. So he can't slow down that much. He goes way too early on the transition. He just about keeps it on the concrete, makes a mistake. Oof. But as he makes the mistake, the lead car makes another unforced mistake in front of him. So, oh, that was a, a sketchy I think one. maybe there was a little case of the nerves. There's a lot of people here. Maybe he's never driven in front of a crowd like this. This beautiful it could crowd be. that is well, full if he of hasn't, judges. Let him hear it. So give it up yes. for Tim Rogers as he gets out of the car. Tim, oh, kick the door <laughs> of his car. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. That was aggressive. Close it gently. Close that it gently. That was aggressive, bud. Yeah, there was there was no need to kick the door. It's a beautiful car. We got it there. We got Ben <laughs> Jenkins out of the car. They're Big all hugs. hugs. Got to get the hat Having out. Having fun. Fantastic mustache on Tim Rogers, I must Look say. Look at that. If there was a battle for that, he'd already have won. Here we go. Who's going to go through to the top eight? Decision in. It's Ben, ben Jenkins. Jenkins. Moving on. Ben Jenkins gets the win. He is a happy man right now. And Tim Rogers, well, he's just going to have a, a crash, a great mustache, and a great weekend. Yeah, he did. And he got to do a ton of driving once they got that car fixed. So he's done some laps out here. He's put on a show for us. He's done some pretty good driving. Those unforced errors, unfortunately, taking him out of the competition. Yeah, it looked now. like he had the same issue in the... I mean, you know what I'm thinking? Maybe there's an issue with the car shutting off or something, because it's weird to have the same issue twice on two and this, runs, and this especially the in the lead spot. position. So maybe there's something else going on. Um, I'm sure Tim will let us all know on social media, because <laughs> every race driver has to say, immediately afterwards, I thank everybody that helped me. And this happened. And it wasn't my fault. <laughs> that is the two things you'll always hear. Real, yeah, race driver talk. You want to be a race driver, you don't even need a car. You can use this car account and say, here's what I think you're doing, and this is why it's not my fault. I'd like to thank my sponsors, and I'm sorry for disappointing you. Yeah, but I didn't. The car didn't. Something <laughs> else happened. I have many. You should see my book. It's, it's quite. Oh, 
Oh, beautiful. I might, I might just, take, I just take a copy and paste. I, I might take a one. book of race car excuses and you could just randomly pick a page, take that, copy it onto your Instagram, and it'll be like something like, uh, I ate a bad banana this morning. You know, I was I was struggling with it. I couldn't see. I went, I went blind. <laughs> I couldn't half, see. I went blind halfway through the run. My uh, visor fell yeah, down. Both of my tires, visor on. Yeah, both of my tires were opposites from different things. And, you know, it's one of those things. The fuel pump slosh, uh, yeah. the, the timing, uh, you know. It's I hit in the face with a leaf. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> exactly. We'll move on to our next battle, last battle of the top 16 before we head back for the one more time between Robert Arbolino and Age Pinaro. This one's going to be Saxon Moyes, Cam Morton. Cam Morton, who saw him in the battle, the fantasy battle with Adam LZ. He's going up against Saxon Moyes. Saxon has been on rails this weekend. Highest qualifier and looking superb. Look at this, Saxon. Oh, look at Cam Morton, though, bringing the fight back to Saxon Moyes as he fires through the car alley. Saxon getting up onto the wall, giving a good lead run. But look at Cam Morton. He's giving away a little bit of horsepower. But he's not any proximity. That was insane. That was a beautiful run. Again. Still in top 16. Two very talented young men behind the wheel. That was beautiful. It was really good to watch. I enjoyed it. Tear, tear came to my eye. You were like, the future is bright. <laughs> Their future, These young ones. The future is youngsters in very high horsepower cars. Yes. We got Saxon in that lead position. He's been just putting in the perfect runs. He really hasn't made any mistakes this weekend. No. And then you've got Cam Morton. The only mistake he's had is having that mustache very similar to LZ. That's yeah, probably the only I mistake. I don't know if that's a mistake. It could be even a marketing ploy. Yeah, they I got mean, him a battle without him, LZ, which is pretty good. <laughs> I'd say he's There's going to be a lot up. of people growing mustaches over yeah, there. Yeah, which, I agree. The mustache is back. It is. There, I've seen a bunch of them here. A lot of mustaches. Along with window here. louvers, which with is not really a thing in the U.S. Interior window blinds. Yeah, the blinds. And the mustaches. Thing. And then. All in the car show. If you yeah, guys look blinds, at some of the car show cars. Um, blinds. Yeah. Why is there so many blinds? Answer this question. In internal Australia, internal louvers. Internal blinds on the back window of a car. I know it's sunny in Australia, so it's probably a practical reason, but I've never seen it anywhere else. In no. other sunny places either. So let me know. Answers, and there was a bunch of them. Answers in the comments. Hashtag comment. weird. Hashtag window blinds in my car. It's a long hashtag. <laughs> I'm going to work on that in the off time. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get back know, to you on that's that That's a good one. thing. But we're going to go back to the start line. we got two more runs, to, or one more run to see between these two guys. Saxon Moyes He's stoked and on Cam Martin. Cam is, is it Cam, though? Could be LZ. You don't know. You don't he know. He could have snuck back in. Oh. He's, 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 he's shifty like that. Sneaky, you don't know. Sneaky. He could end up on the podium and jump out and take off. <laughs> and it's, the, LZ. it's LZ. New all the time. So here we are. It is going to be Cam Morton in the lead position. Saxon Moyes in the chase position. Saxon's going to get aggressive here. Look at that uh, mimic of that entry as they chuck into the first turn. Got to say, Cam Morton doing a good job here as Martin does a really nice job of getting into a uh, uh, surprise. Saxon Moyes not being a little bit more aggressive here in the power alley. Saxon going to go for that last second dive. Will he get it done? He will get it done. Oof. Get up onto the door. Both guys on the wall. Cam Morton buried in the wall as they go around. Hand hey, the window. window. Hey, buddy. Come on, let's go. Oh, that was beautiful. Love Again. to see it. Thank Love you. to see it. That was impressive. Was. I enjoyed every moment of that. So the closer uh, these guys get I, as we move I'm on. I'm going to be honest. It's I fantastic. thought that we would see Saxon Moyes sort of steamroll through here. He, we, did, we did not see he that. He was casual. I feel like he was casual. And Cam Martin, Martin does a great job at the line. Like that's, the line is absolutely fantastic. He had every ability. He was at big angle through the power alley, which Guess is the, the hardest zone, thing yeah. to do. Goes early to the wall, which no one really does. And he does it. And he's definitely hit it. If he didn't hit it, he was the closest anyone's ever been without hitting it. Yeah, tough That decision. was impressive tough stuff. Decision. So guys, as they get out of their cars, will you please give it up for Saxon Moyes and Cam Martin. Love it. Two future heroes of the sport. I would agree. I'm, They're my heroes already. I'm putting the seal of approval on that one, saying that these guys, you're going to hear their names a lot in the future. the future. But we need a decision from our judges. We need somebody to go through to the top eight and somebody to bow out in top 16. Who's it going to be? I don't know. Do you know? Nobody knows except the judges. So we're going to wait for their decision. And the judges are currently judging. There's also a registration plate on that R33 scanning, which is oh, incredible. Okay. He so drove Cam here just... or Saxon Moyes, who's it going to be? And it is going to be a one, one more time. time. One more time between <laughs> Saxon and Moyes. Look on his face. <laughs> they were very happy with that one. Saxon Moyes, delighted. Look at, him. Look at this. Yeah, smile. let's go again. Pure joy. Yeah, More like, driving. This is great. More driving. Bud, can you sign my tire? So, no, I think he's saying, have you got the tire? Yeah. I, he's checking the other guy's tire. I would just say, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine, When dude. he's on absolute nothing, I would say, oh, it's fine. Everything's oh, fine. Oh, you're great. He said, you're mint. Right. Don't trust him. Wish. Don't trust him. Com, LZ. Making yeah, things happen. Don't trust the Making guy. Making dreams come true. Yeah, he also looks like a highway policeman. A, yeah, little, a little bit. bit. A little bit. A little bit. If, if it didn't work out in the drifting, I'm just I saying. I think he could do he it. He has that look. So we are going to go back to, uh, or one more time, two one more times to go through. 
We got a lot of one more times. A lot of one more times. Very close battles. I feel we're going to see a lot of driving. That's well, very that's what happens when you have an entire field full of 90 point runs. You know what? You're not speaking the lack of truth there, Dan, because that is a good point. Everyone here has scored yeah, probably really almost perfect, almost above 90 in qualifying every one of these drivers. So it's going to be very interesting. Now we go back to the uh, the age old battle. Oh, I see you what see what it did there between I age. I did learn that the D is silent. It's yes. not adage. It is it's age. Age. The D is and with silent. age comes wisdom. Another one. Two in a row. Age Panaro goes up against Robert Arbolino. And here we go, Arbolino leaving a little bit of a gap here. Robert's got a he's he's got got yeah, catch up to do. He's he's got to do here. Age to Panaro thing. coming in really hot into that first corner. Here is Age. He's got to cut the track here, Robert. Yeah, put the cruise control on. And I'm going to make things happen. Power Alley still not able to catch up. Can he make it in? Yeah, Robert Arbolino not just getting there right at the end. Right at the very end. And still even though that. For much, much more proximity. Super than. fast car, if that was. was. And you, know, you think, oh, this will be an interesting battle where, you know, in my opinion, it looked like Age Panaro would have the advantage. However, I'll tell you what I think is going on here. Too much power in the E19 for the street tires we're running this weekend. Yes. So he's not getting the grip and the side bite and all the forward bite to catch up. And they can only go so down in PSI before you start de-beating. So there's a limit to the grip you can find with a set of street radios. Exactly. And it, 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 it sort of can be a disadvantage sometimes for cars with a lot of horsepower. Because they're built to run semi-stick tires, super gripped up suspension. And you can't really find it other than mechanically here this weekend. You're not going to find it in the tire. You can overheat the tire very quickly with a lot very of wheel speed. That may have been the case on that particular run. Oh, here we are. Oh, so coming it's, in. it's the second half battle. Yeah, because it, it was a collision half. on the first one. So I'm just going to say H. Panaro deemed at fault for the collision. So will it be enough in that second battle? But I'm just thinking right now it probably won't be. So here, 3, 2, 1. And Robert Arbolino gets, gets the, win. the win. Robert Arbolino gets the win and goes through to our top eight. Fantastic driving from age, though. Once they got around that little rotator at the beginning. Yeah, so basically the collision on the first yes. half, which was seems like ages ago, it did. was it deemed by, <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> age Panaro actually was deemed at fault. Therefore, regardless of that beautiful lead run he did, it didn't really make up for that big because collision. Because it basically zeroed the first exactly. one. Exactly. Woo, and he's angry with that. He's going to send this Letting thing. Letting that, oh, the pistons are flying. To the moon on the way out here. That is a limiter, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know what a limiter is, look this up in the dictionary. And you'll see H. Panaro <laughs> going, pointing at his... <laughs> Guys, give it up for these two absolute superstars here today. <laughs> Had to go through some collisions, some, some one more times, but we have a winner. And it is going to be Robert Arbolino getting himself into the top eight. And uh, calm down, Robert. You got to survive some more battles, so, you know, just keep it chill. And uh, yeah, really good stuff for both of those guys. But it's unfortunately, like, Age Panaro is crashing into the, the front wheel yeah, nah, of that, that BMW. Not an advantageous tactic. No, cost, and look at this, the most it's beautiful not, runway I mean, away from the track with all of those show cars. Look at that. How cool does that look? Anyway. And, and we did. We took a walk through that uh, runway earlier. Oh, yeah, and it was, uh, crown down there. Beautiful. Crown. We saw some interesting stuff. We did. We did a walk. On the license plates. You guys are on point with the license plates. So we got some surprises for you, right? Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, I said love this, surprises. Yeah, do you like surprises? I love I surprises. love surprises. What we're going to do, because you think, oh, it's a top 16. It's going to be a top eight. It's going to be boring. It's never going to be boring. We're throwing some cool stuff in. We have got a top eight uh, almost decided. It's going to be Saxon Moyes and Cam Morton going at it before we get there. But we, got but, couple, we got some surprises. So what I said was. What's going to happen? I'll tell you what. I said, wouldn't it be fun? Right? It would be fun. Not to, for my <laughs> entertainment if we did some cool stuff so what we got is some of the coolest builds that i have spotted in australia all right all right i've all told right. them I'm can, i told them can they drift and they went yeah i okay. said do you want to drift them at the lz world tour i said, absolutely and okay. when you they, see some of these cars yeah. you will doubt the logic behind it and then also some of those guys are going to come out in the break so when top 16 is over we're going to do something crazy when we got top eight we're going to do something crazy and we're going to do top four. And as we go, it's going to get crazier and crazier right throughout the entire competition. See, this is, this is why it's good to put people like you in charge. Because I like crazy. I like random. I like this stuff that should work but does evil. work. Exactly. So what, we've got, aren't typical. so what we've been watching a lot about here, so th there was someone there yesterday. His, his name is Ty. He said, I don't know. The style needs to be brought back into the event. We need some style. 
And I said, what do you mean? He said, we're going to bring all the Stiley boys out for one Look run of the this. track. Three car train, Ty Jeffries, Hayden Dick Finney, and Julian Jacobs from Alan the Style. Three car train. We haven't seen a three car train no, all No, there weekend. hasn't been. And a backwards entry no. from Julian Jacobs in the middle of a three car train. What is happening? What is even going on right now? My heart can't handle all of this. Is just... Oh, bumpers flying. Oh, no. Bye bye. Oh, no. Everything. A lot Here of SOS. Here we go. Oh my goodness gracious, it's ping pong out Absolute there, Absolute carnage on track. Wow. A demo, a mid, you know what? A mid top 16 demo never hurt anybody. It may these, have hurt a few bumpers. Me, these were the three most stylish cars I at this event. percent and some of the stylish drivers. And we said, let's just throw them on. Look at Julian in the chase on, on the big 90 just degree. Chucking her on, in butt. And the lead car, I'll have you know, automatic transmission. An automatic diesel. Eight speed. BMW seven gearbox, speed. seven some, speed. Some amount of speeds, it's not it correct. It doesn't make any sense what's happening right he now. He has buttons in there to turn it into a manual. He's got clutch pedals that are electronic. He's got all sorts of weird things. There gimmicks. was probably a moment in that run where everything and a photo looked great and everything else was chaos. <laughs> and, I, and I love every. I'm, I'm here for all of it. Ty, guys in the audience, please make some noise for Ty Jeffries, Aiden Dick Finney, and Julian Jacobs. And look at that stuff. He is street sweeping right now with those side skirts. That thing is. Super low. They're, oh, Lambo oh, doors. Mr. Lambo Mr. doors. Lambo doors. Had the flex on them, didn't you? Ty Jeffries with the flex. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Mez, two, three very stylish men on the track <laughs> after some chaotic runs. We got some hot boys in the house. And uh, yeah, I'm not talking about physical appearance. Julian, you a uh, little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of trouble with the car, but surely it was all worth it just for that bit of awesomeness. Oh man, yeah. I wish I got to do more driving. I almost spun out on the entry, <laughs> but I was able to kind of save it, get back on him. Uh, What's it like uh, performing in front of a crowd like this, Hayden? It's uh, take your helmet off, brother. Come on, show everyone your lovely self. I'll oh, get Ty. Ty, mate, this is the big. This is the dream come true. How's it been? Yeah, it's been sick to come out and drive with the boys and everyone in front of Melbourne. Yeah, the boys. Let's go. That was a. I dove in on Julian and I was like, oh, we're not going anywhere. But bah, it's all right. I thought we'd have a good show for the fans, so. Yep, that's it. You get that on the big jobs. And uh, how shattered are you about the front bar? Uh, nah, she'll be right, mate. We'll get another one and go again. Don't lie to the crowd, mate. <laughs> nah, great experience. Hayden, you finally got that helmet off, brother. Bit of a street sweeper here. Um, have you been cleaning the front lip off all, all day? Yeah, trying to um, sort of demolish it before I leave would be awesome. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. My panel beater made a, a bold statement and said he'd fix everything that I break. So I'm just trying to sort of ruin the car. Well, you don't get that offer too often. So, uh, yeah, I reckon just keep running the wall, brother, and uh, give it a red-hot crack. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I reckon you guys should do some burnouts. Do you guys want to see some burnouts? I said, do you guys want to see some burnouts? Yeah! All right, put your helmets on, boys, and uh, back to you boys in the booth. So here we go. We're going to get some... Uh, this is always... A you got to close the Lambo door now. Yeah, just, Watch, you got to close it like a Lambo door, and then you got to close it like a real he's door. He's done the reverse <laughs> of Leonardo DiCaprio in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. He's climbed back in through yeah, the Lambo door for he chaos. He's lewd free in that one, I yep. think. So they're going to do three car burnouts in front of you guys here in attendance. Look how cool all these cars... I mean, Ty's used to look cool. He lost the bumper. The other guy lost the rear bumper. The other guy lost, There's no bumpers left, but it's fine. Look at this. Lambo, Lambo doors door, are... Oh, 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 hold on. We got ourselves a little uh, bit of a... Yes. This is old school Japan. This is old school option video. Close, Just so you guys yeah, close your eyes and your 2006 is back. Look we at put that. Put it in four by three. Somebody filmed that with a, an old school camera and that would be a magical moment. That S14 is the lowest drift car I've ever seen it's on insane. track. It's insane. It's ridiculous. And you know what? Great to have every part of drift culture here this weekend. And it's from, crazy. Because you want the cool people, you want the competitive people, you want the personality-driven people, all mixed in the bunch. And these three guys, kings of Instagram, but also kings of the track here today. Yeah, it's fantastic. This is just one of the ways you can express yourself through drifting, is through the style of your car, through your driving, through your build, 
through your social media channels. It's it's, it's insane what you can do with drifting, and it's that was amazing. showcased yeah, also, right there. Also, to see these these legends of the game. So Julian Jacobs, I'm a big fan of Julian Jacobs yeah. and Animal Style for years. The way they do things, the way they drive. Just to have him here this weekend, even to put a couple of runs in, and of course a good sport to come out of. You know, he's out of the competition, but he comes out with a couple of other cool cool he cats to do some runs. Stuff. I absolutely love it. And uh, we go back to the last battle in our top 16 bracket, which will be the rematch between Saxon Moyes and Cam Martin. Cam Martin getting it one more time against the GTA 6. Can he do it again, Dan? I'm very excited to see if they can. And here we go. The Saxon Moyes absolutely pedal to the metal. Again, these guys are dialed on that entry way, way wide, though, however, as he comes into the dirt a little bit. That was very uncharacteristic. We haven't seen him make a mistake like that. Maybe he didn't warm the tires up enough. Maybe the tires were slippery. I don't know what just happened as they come back around. A lot of, once the beginning of the run is messed up, it's really hard to put it back together for the rest of the run, especially as a follow driver. And again, that's something that the judges take heavily into account. For sure. If you, you wash out, drop a wheel or whatever, or mess up the chase run early in the run, it's hard to get back into it. For me, you're right. So Jackson Moy is making the first error of the day for him. Yeah, Actually, first error weekend. of the weekend, yeah. It was a little too hot, a little too wide. Look at this, drops into the dirt. You can it's just a little bit. Cam has to back off completely at that point, yeah. and it's losing that momentum at the point. Now, I will say, for the highlight reel, this wall run from Saxon Moy is pretty damn special. On like, look at this. <laughs> Boom. He is, and GT86s have about four inches between the wheel and the rear end of the car. And that was and is, uh, negative six he there. He is on the wall towards the end. So trying to make up maybe for that error on the first corner. Does a good job. But is it enough? Uh, we'll find out. We still have a whole other half of battle to go. We do have a whole other half of battle to go. So you can see the Saxon Moy is firing through. Look at that, just dropping He's like, that wheel. He's you know, I'm not going to follow you off the track. <laughs> Bits, he nearly hit the drone, is what he did, with, with, with some rocks. Like he's trying to shoot down. Trying to shoot down. The drone. Look at the drone, it's like, everything's fine. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. Surely nothing could possibly go wrong with, to me up here in the sky. <laughs> and as they come through, it looked to me like the drone nearly got scattered with, uh, with gravel and rocks. I'm yeah, trying to see what happened with that lead. Did he slip in something? What happened? He was way off the, the zone anyway, so I think it was just a huge mistake. Just an accident. What a pretty, Everybody makes mistakes. What a pretty car, though. That GT86. And GT86 is, in my opinion, not always the easiest car to make look great. No. That one looks great. I love Absolutely. the window thing they got going on. I don't even know what you call that. And so more louvers. More it's louvers. It's just a big thing. Louvers. They love louvers here. Uh, so here Louver we go. Let's go to now. Can Cam Martin, or Martin turn it around in that lead position? Cam Martin thrown into that first corner. Smooth from Cam yeah. Martin. That's what you want to see. That's exactly how they're supposed to go through that. And Saxon's getting every opportunity to put on a good chase now. So that's what you want to do as the lead driver, is give the opportunity for a good chase. And that's what's being showcased by Cam here. As they dip into the pocket, Saxon Moy is putting way more pressure on through that section. But is it going to be enough? Was that aggressive enough of a run, Dave? I, I don't know. I don't. To balance out the mistake, I yeah, guess. I, I, I don't saying, know. Yeah. I don't know. We never know. Look at the smoke wafting up here it's near beautiful. the tower. It's nice to get a whiff of that every it's once the, in a while. It's the sound of my people. <laughs> the scent, the scent, the smell of, of my people. Of, of race fuel and yeah. smoke and general gravel. It's so funny because when you've been drifting for so long, you can tell. You, I don't know if you'd be able to pick out different tire brands, but you can definitely tell different tires are being used by their smell. It's strange. And it's a it's weird strange skill that, to have. It's strange that we know this. Yes, that I'm, shouldn't I'm, be I'm a thing. I'm now also in the same position with race fuel. I can tell what type of race fuel is in the car <laughs> just by the smell. Interesting. <laughs> I feel like they're scenting it. Yes. Anyway, we got to find a decision. It's the last battle in our top 16. One of these guys going through to the top eight. One of them getting knocked out. Uh, oh, here we go. The decision's going to drop in. Guys, one more time. Give it up for Saxon Moyes and Cam Martin. Some of the best battles we've seen. Some of the biggest smiles. Who's going to be smiling now? It is Cam Martin getting the win. Cam Martin. Cam Martin gets the win. There you My have it. My goodness he is gracious. Going LZ, the wish.com LZ moving on. We, we don't know if it's LZ. We don't know if it's not. We can't tell anymore. He's got him in the trunk somewhere, I he think, has. maybe. What a great... Look at Saxon Moyes. He's pumped. <laughs> having a great time. These, these guys are having... Put the support. camera out of focus and everything on that Cameraman's one. like, just, just ah. stand back. I'm in the splash zone. Helped. <laughs> so it is going to be a Cam Martin moving trade. You know what? Well deserved, in my that opinion. That was great. That was really great driving. Run. So we have eight drivers remaining in the competition. But we we've got a lot... I'm just gonna say, you guys, we got a lot of surprises still to come. If you like crazy builds, if you like crazy cars, we got all men. I would actually say, guaranteed, all manner of crazy cars coming later on. And if you say crazy, I'm uh, I, t I tend to believe that because well, it's the craziest exhibition we've done all year, I think, in terms of 
madness. I don't even know why these cars exist. They what shouldn't they're for. exist. They shouldn't be on a race track. Someone they should, shouldn't even be running. Someone, someone should have just said, hey, uh, we don't need this to exist. And they go, no, oh, that's a good point. No, I'm, I think it should. I'm going to build it anyway. Yeah. So uh, we are a great crowd. You guys here in Calder Park, amazing audience. We've had Beautiful. so much fun today. I'm, good I'm judges. A, good judges. Great judging, great cars, great track. I hope you guys at home are having a good time watching the stream. And... Uh, what we want to do, you wanna, Dan? You want to talk a little bit about that last? Dan battle? wants to say Dan something. Wants Dan to say wants to something. say something. He's 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 looking bring, through bring the Dan window. In. Like Dan, hey. come here, come here. Look, look. Hey, they haven't seen Dan's beautiful face yet. Look, you got you got We got to scoot. We got to scoot. There's da Dan. What happened? Talk it's Papa Squat, bud. Yeah, yeah. So Cam, and we had Cam and Saxon, all smiles, but you went with Cam over the two runs. Well, interestingly, we, in the end, we were actually split. So it was still a, a two to one decision. And what we'd done, uh, we all ended up going back to where we were with the exception of one of the judges on the first run. So that second one, Saxon dropped a wheel. Uh, we saw that. Obviously, there's a deduction for that, but then the rest of the run was so flawless. And Cam, even though we gave him a little bit more of an advantage, even through zone two because of the of the wide line, uh, he just still wasn't able to get back to it. And uh, the weightings we've got with the track, obviously that last w wall ride is one of the heavier weighted sections of the track. So then he, he, Cam couldn't get back to the door. And then Saxon in his chase, he knew he dropped the line. And that was one of the best chases we've seen all weekend. He got there, he got onto the door, all the way up, took all of the points here. And so that ended up overcoming that one wheel in the first one. We went back to our first one, our first run decisions, and that's where we came up with the, re the reward. Now, I know, Dan, you didn't understand a word of that because your brain just melted. I uh, understood I everything stopped, perfectly, yeah. Dan. It made perfect sense to me. Thank you for coming <laughs> in here and explaining to us because we couldn't have done such a good job because no. we were just watching the smoke and the driving of the cars. Dan, back to the hot seat. We'll see you in a moment. And uh, well, watch this. Scoot. Scoot. As we were. <laughs> All right, guys, we are finished up with our top 16 bracket. We're going to have a little look at where it stands. We've got Brody Matter coming against Robert Arbolino, Jordan Sanderson against Matty Hill, Gaz Wider against Marcus McCarthy, Ben Jenkins against Cam Martin, but also. We have a ton of surprises dropping in all the way through. We're back very shortly. We're going to give you a couple of words for our partners here at the championship. Of course, these are the guys supporting us, making all these events happen across the world. So check out the small ad roll. We'll be back after this. Since 1997, Vibrant Performance made its mark as one of the industry leaders in the development and engineering of exhaust and induction components for the automotive aftermarket. Over the years, Vibrant has seen its evolution pivot from the chambers of an exhaust and induction components brand to becoming the primary source of professional fabrication components for professional fabricators. Please be sure to find us at vibrantperformance.com. Hey guys, Jeff Jones here. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gooshin. I'm Matt Field. I drive Link. They are the most reliable EC around and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive Link.
ームズ。So we are back, ready for our top eight here in Calder Park. We are, it's stacked. This is a stacked grid, Dan. This is going to be some of the wildest battles Calder Park has ever seen. Yeah, these are some pretty heavy hitters uh, as far as driving goes, as far as cars go, as far as the show goes. There's some insane stuff. Absolutely, judges already. I was having a little talk with them in the break saying it's tough today. A lot of down to the wire decisions. It's going to be tough. Which is crazy because this is a casual competition. They shouldn't it's have this a fun, a fun competition that's being taken very seriously <laughs> by a lot of great drivers. Our first battle up will be an incredible one. Brody Marr in the 1,000 horsepower SR20, the champ from Australia. Going up against Robert Arbolino in this incredible. I think it's all, they got a little run into it, but they got it fixed. And it's a 427. Works. I've learned. You did. Which is almost which is almost seven liters. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of milk. It's a lot. So here we go. Robert Arbolino in the lead position. Brody Maher in the chase, firing in. Look at this off the line. Very quick for Robert Arbolino. A big dive in for Brody Maher into that first corner. As we go, V8 versus Gas Motors on steroids. I'd say the glass the power. Look at all that smoke he's making. I don't think I've seen him make that much smoke. He wants to win as he dips down into the pocket. And Brody getting a little bit lost in that, I think. I don't know if he was expecting it. I don't know if he thought he was offline. But he dropped way back. We're going to have to watch the replay and kind of see what transpired there. But that's not what he wanted to do, I'm assuming. I had a quick chat with Robert Arbolino last night. I'm not going to say it was or it wasn't at a bar. And he was saying he has done a whole lot of driving. This is a new build, and he's growing in confidence every run. And I think he's backing that statement up now because every run he's getting smoother and smoother. And Brody, I think, struggling a little bit with the pace of that BMW. And look at that. The, the smoke that he's making through that power alley, nobody's done that yet. That was insane. I don't know if he, I don't know if he got lost. I, I, maybe he just couldn't keep up. Well, it's definitely making more smoke than any other car on the track, which, again, it will make it hard to see, Kyle. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's a bold move. It's a bold move. And trying to drive through the smoke if you've never done that, which probably many of you never have, it's one of the most difficult things to overcome in drifting. You are completely blind and hoping you're not going too fast, or you're not going too slow, or there's a wall yeah. there. I'm going to explain this to you what it's like. So you know when you play Gran Turismo or Forza and you've got the bonnet cam and you've got the third-person cam? Yeah. We're in third-person cam watching these drivers. Yes. But they're on the bonnet cam with all that smoke white screen yeah, you can't you see just anything. every now and again you'll see the opponent and you hope he's where you, you think he is taillight. but you've got to be super close and when you get a little bit of a drop off maybe two three car lengths the whole track is just covered in smoke so you're just firing through going on muscle memory exactly and you don't know where they are what's going on it's happened to both of us down in the past oh, happens yes. to us quite a bit actually we get left behind often we are in but the wrong place at the wrong time exactly smoke where we should and we're like well that's the end i don't know where i am you look at the GPS system or something to find your way of it. So Robert Arbolino now in the chase. And we haven't, you know, he hasn't been tested in the chase position as much yesterday. And we know Brody Meyer is going to be fast here as well. So this is going to be interesting as they come off the line. It looks like Brody Meyer getting a good jump on the start down. Robert, Robert is absolutely doing a burnout through that whole thing. I don't know why he had to drop back so far. He has the power to keep up. And Brody absolutely spooling out. I don't know what happened. Robert there again doing just a giant rolling burnout there in the, the both guys making mistakes in almost the exact same places yet again and right up on the door at the end for robert Arbolino, but is it too little too late after we saw big separation on the first run we saw even bigger separation on the second run this is going to be nuts to judge it's what happened i i mean for me stuff like this when there's two giant mistakes in the runs where basically somebody's driving straight I'm going to tell you right now, it's too, I, I, I think it's too much wheel speed. I think the tire is just doing a burnout. It's not even getting any forward bite. And Brody, you can see less smoke coming from the car. I mean, he's got a lot more grip. Yeah. And he's moving faster through the course. But uh, we're going to have a, our judges decide this one when they come back around. But either way, both guys putting on an amazing show today for you guys here. It's for a spot in the final four. Look at that. Give it up for Robert Arbolino. Give it up for Brody Marr. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Big old spooly boy I mean, spoke of the tires. Big old spooly boy. I mean, the SR20 obviously is going to be a little bit later. But that can't account for a school bus and a half of gap. No, so I'm not sure what <laughs> happened there. But it looked like, and you see this crazy dive into the that last corner. That was a big one. That was by Robert, and then just stayed in. Yeah, he was like, ah. It was a good, cool yeah. move, but 
It's very late it's in the day. Yeah, very late in the day. So we're going to have to get a decision on this one for who's going to get the win. Mez, you're down with both of these drivers before we get the decision. How did that feel to them? Mate, they are absolutely ecstatic. Oh, the energy I'm getting from both these two. You two uh, can't separate each other. Absolutely fine. The guy's a national champion, mate. It's not that easy. Um, man, when you're driving with drivers like this and they're just throwing it down, it's so easy to drive with them. It's a crowd like this, it's all worth it. I don't care how car the car, bent the car gets, we're going home happy. This bloke's a legend. And uh, Brody, uh, you're going up against the hard charge of Robert Avellino. You know you had to bring it, didn't you? Oh, I knew I had to bring it. Uh, this car's absolutely no joke, and uh, Rob can always throw down. I might be the national champion, but Rob's been out of the seat for a little while. But when I built this car, obviously with the big SR20, a lot of inspiration come from Rob and what he did. So, uh, yeah, this feels a little bit fitting. And uh, we're fitted next to each other, so all good vibes. We're having fun. All smiles out there. Smiles galore. All right, let's find out the decision. Back to you guys in the booth. Well, here comes the decision. It's dropping in. What We got a winner. We do not. Winner. It's a one, one more point. time. One more time between it's Robert and Arbel, you know, Yeah, <laughs> Not a choreographed one more time. No. But or, One more time is fine. The hand, the, the two the hand high five, high five didn't, didn't work out. The high That's ten. Okay. Never never go, they need to work on Never that. go for a high ten. Yeah, no, Too no, much risk. Just one. Yeah, it's tough enough to get that, that crisp high five. Uh, the I, ten, I love the crisp don't high get five. So we got it one more time between these two guys, and no separate, well, a lot of separating them is there the were problem. Bustling there was lots separation. of separation, so the judges want to see that one. No real proximity to write home about. So I mean, I, I was there. That was that was my snap decision that I made. It was just there was giant gap on the first run and giant gap on the second run. Everything else was mediocre, but yeah, and there they are. One more time. We get to see them do it again. We get to see them go. They back have to impress again. the judges. They oh, have sure. to make it the judges' choice. They, you want to make it so that you're beat fairly or you get beat fairly. For sure. We're going to move on to our next top eight battle, which we'll see Matty Hill go up against Jordan Sanderson. Matty Hill dispatching Mad Mike in the top 16. Yeah, so unexpected. he's feeling confident. As we move on to the next run, it will be Sanderson in the Ute in the lead position. Matty Hill in the chase position into that first corner. Matty Hill going early in the chase, making it work. And as Jordan comes in, Ute works. The size discrepancy between these cars is absolutely insane. Watching an S chassis go around that Ute. And I mean, you really have to go around that car because it is long and it is tall. But you might be able to slip the front end of that car underneath as they come in through this last turn. Listen to that thing. Sounds like a NASCAR out there. Looks kind of like a NASCAR it from the front. It kind of does. That was an incredible run from Jordan Sanderson and Matty Hill. I mean, we talked about the separation. No such issues no, there for no, those no. guys. No, no, they no. Were, they were doing things. They, they, they got the memo, and they listened, and there was proximity. There was proximity to be had all through this. Fantastic lead run, and he was able to put the car in the chase where it needed to be at all times. Chong and Smokes, maybe the track is gripping up. Maybe the temperature's changing. I don't know why, but cars seem like they're really smoking through the power alley. There might even be blue skies coming soon. I don't want to get like too excited, but I'm looking across the hills here and I'm saying we might have a sunny little finish to this I'll one. I'll take it. As a man that will take it either way because I'm Irish, I have no choice. <laughs> I would just leave my In country. the same two hours. You, you, want, you want good weather, you don't stay where we are, but we get a little, you even have the hope Every of sunshine. Even the, the idea the of glimmer. sunshine. Yeah is enough for us as an Irish person to go. I feel warm because the sun is shining yeah. somewhere. Exactly. We can radiate it somewhere else. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's important Projecting to Projecting sunshine. <laughs> yes. we, you, I, I think Ireland's so nice because the people emit the heat yeah. because they're so friendly. Well, someone said to they, me, they, they, they exhibit heat. Oh, for sure. They just we, don't have Well, it. we have such bad weather, we have to be upbeat or what would we be doing? But <laughs> that's it, neither here nor there. I also like someone someone's I said, we don't have air conditioning in Ireland. Because no, you we, don't we would it. never need it because uh, for the three days just we have rust. here, we just complain. <laughs> so here we are, Matty Hill going up against Jordan Sanderson. Sanderson, look at him. He's pumped up in there. In his ute? In his ute. And ute? he is up against Matty Hill in that beautiful S15. Here we go off the line. It's for a spot in the final four. All on the line here as Matty Hill fires into that first corner. Jordan Sanderson, big lockup. All four lock up into the first corner. Trying to stay aggressive with Matty Hill as they transition through. This time Matty Hill putting on the power as he actually pulls a little gap here on Jordan Sanderson. Sanderson is going to have to cut the line and try and make that big last ditch dive. And he does. Sanderson on big angles trying to stay with him. Matty Hill absolutely up and gone. But look at these door to door to incredible machines across the finish line awesome stuff calder park show your appreciation for this awesome driving we're seeing here today
I'm loving this. That S chassis, that lead run from the S chassis was almost flawless. So that's an S chassis. What's the other one then, Dan? That is a U chassis. A U, it's a, a, U, a U chassis? U chassis. Nice. I, I tried to put you on the spot, but yeah, you came, did. came straight out. Yeah, there it yeah. is. And it's a bent U chassis, as you can see. So it's more of a, a double U chassis. It's a double U chassis <laughs> on the rear end. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot okay, of... Okay, oh. there's, there's a, lim a machine gun limiter thing. Someone anti-lagged. That was Someone heavy. Did some anti-lagging. So we are going to have these two boys roll down and get their decisions for a final four spot. This is big. This is big. This is a big one. This is big. This is, this is, Who's this gonna is for go a chance through? at all of the marbles here. Yeah, so um, both of these guys going to hop out of the car. We're going to get Mez to have a little quick little quick chat with them. Because I'd like, I, to, I'd like, I'd to, like to, to hear what they faces. have to say. Yeah. I want to see the pumped up faces of people driving silly machines at this level. No, it looks like we are uh, we're waiting on. Yeah, Mez is going to roll in and have a little conversation with our Jordan Sanderson so and Matty Hill. Get back in your car. Mez. What an interesting car, an interesting battle. Mate, this is the Australian dream. We just need a cement mixer in the back, weighing it down just to keep the weight over those wheels. Jordan, absolutely purring this V8. How are you feeling out there? You're looking hard to trot. Oh, man, just love it. This thing stalled this weekend. We're having fun just sitting this wall and just putting on a show. We need a new rear end, so we might as well just keep putting it in there. Yeah, I was about to say, you've uh, hit the rear end more than once, brother. Matty Hill, come back in here, mate. Our part-time model. <laughs> you took down Mad Mike. Are you feeling good? Mate, I'm loving it. Like, how good is it to be driving the best event in Australia? Am I right? Yay! Now, the drivers here are awesome. It's been amazing. We've had a few issues over the weekend, and the team's been amazing as well. And to battle against guys like Jordan and Mad Mike, it's uh, an amazing experience. So, glad to be here. And I reckon the crowd might be a little bit salty that you beat Mad Mike, but you've won them over. All right, let's find out the decision. Back to you, boys. Thanks, man. Well, let's see who's going to go through to the final four here. The big decision's about to drop in. Who's going through? It's Jordan, Jordan Sanderson. Sanderson getting the win and an Australian Ute into the final four. The script has been written. You know, the tried and true W chassis that we all have come to love here is In the last on. 10 minutes, because yeah. we've called it a W chassis now. It was a U chassis now. It's a W. Yeah, w. It might be a V by the end yeah, of this it competition. Very well, maybe. So we have got Matty Hill beating Mad Mike, then getting beaten by a Ute. None of it has to make sense because it's the LZ World Tour. That's what happens. We just, <laughs> the script is never... I think if we scripted these events, people would say, that's not realistic. No. That would never happen. Well, it's happening. We right now in front of your eyes. That. So it is going to be Sanderson moving into the final four. He will get two shots at the podium. Looks like, can, looks like a man that can. Looks like a man that score and store a skateboard deck or two in the back of that thing, Dan. <laughs> to be honest, skateboard deck. He maybe can, two, maybe three. He can take every all of them back to the pits for somebody. They didn't. I'm have just going to make a call. Could we get a skateboard ramp for him to bring home in the back of that thing? Oh yeah, it. let's put a quarter pipe in there. He could probably fit that in there. Matty Hill put a big old smoke and burn it out. What a great performance he's had today. I'm a big Mighty Hill fan. Got the style, got the car, but he's also got the hype. I yes, like he it. He's, he's having a good time, and he bows out at this stage of competition. Now he gets to watch. He gets to become a fan. He gets to enjoy the LZ World Tour like the rest of us. I'm having an absolute blast. This has been an insane couple of days here. We've got way more battles to go and some surprises. I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited for Dave's surprises because they are absolutely Insane. I've been sending some WhatsApps, Dan, because so I'm, I'm trying to hook some stuff uh, up. Here I we can go. see that, this and I'm trying be... not to look at your screen. No, I'm going to surprise everybody. Here we go. Next up, we got Gaz Wider going up against the man, Marcus McCarthy, who took down LZ. Wider took down yesterday's winner, Mitch Nara, but now they're going head to head. V8 Supercharged versus SR20. Let's... Whoa, Whoa, my goodness gracious, that's an entire football field. Gaz Wider just went to the moon on the I initiation. I don't understand there. how he accelerated so quickly. Something must have gone wrong with Marcus. Car because that was a huge discrepancy. Marcus now firing through the track. Somehow he's managed to catch up. Oh, oh my goodness! Gracious. From Marcus McCarthy doesn't even make sense. How is he where he is right now? What happened? He was a football field behind in a much slower car. That was that was nuts. That was absolutely hands down nuts. And the award for transition of the day has been. Marcus McCarthy. He came through this at, at four degrees of angle back, to catch Backy up. McCaffey is, Backy is McCaffey. doing his thing out Look there. at this transition. This is scary. Look. Whoa! My goodness. And then just right there. And he's like, I'm back in business. You know how hard it is to catch up with a car that has probably double your horsepower when you have a football field he, in front of you? He wasn't going down without a fight no, there. That's for wasn't. sure. That was impressive. Marcus McCarthy, as they head back around, he definitely has the disadvantage through the first half of the run, but he did a 
pretty nice transition. Pretty nice pretty, transition. Pretty, pretty good on the wall. This look at this. It was still exciting. This, this should. This is what you call. This should be a crash. But look at this. Oh, oh, come on, <laughs> ladies! Pause, Can we get a round of applause yeah, for that transition? Look at that. That is what we came here to see, everybody. Those brick headlights were like. <laughs> Those brick headlights were like, we are far too expensive to be this close to turmoil. <laughs> Look at this transition. Oh, uh, that was that was a thing of beauty. That was there a real go. thing of beauty. You couldn't put a I pin I would frame there. that. That's all you need is the photo. Yeah. And they'll be like, was the rest of the run good? Mark's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the rest and of the run. Great. Beginning, was, not so much. Yeah, it was good at the end. We got the, we got the shot. We got the photo. So now Marcus <laughs> McCarthy's in the lead. Will he throw an old backwards entry to throw him oh, off? Oh, the Backy McCarthy's the backy back Mac at his thing. Classic again. Backy McCarthy. <laughs> he might just throw one in. Uh, he's still hyped. So, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, he's, he's digging on the gearbox. Mr. Gear coming out of the. Ah. Uh, Mr. Old Gear. It, it's a, I wonder, is it Nestor? Oh, no, it's a weird gearbox in this car. So yeah, that's the one, the, the AR5? Yeah, strange gearbox. And well, strange. Coming out under his radio. So, here we go. Gaz White now in the chase position as they come into the first corner. Gaz with the advantage, but a big angle initiation. Will we expect any less from, from, our, Backy, from McCarthy. Backy McCarthy as he comes through? And Gaz White starting to turn the screw. Get close or personal to the back end of Marcus McCarthy's car. He doesn't need to go too aggressive, but try telling Gaz White as they go back down towards the wall. McCarthy goes wide on the circuit. Gaz White playing like a cat with a mouse here. I think that is the OG maybe sealing the deal. Yeah, he, he had the experience there. He didn't need to be super aggressive, but he wanted to put on a good show. And that's exactly what he did. He was in all the right places where he needed to be. And just, you know, put the nail in the coffin, I think. Unfortunately, when you miss a gear down the straightaway, yeah, there's nothing else you can do. I mean, he did everything he could to come back but it would never have been enough with a follow run like this from Gaz. And in a shocking turn of events, Dan. Oh, no. If Marcus, Ma me. Marcus McCarthy was to go out of competition, okay. that would be all of the SR20s out of the competition. No. Yeah. Moment silence from the crowd, please. <laughs> it's, not, it's not done yet. We haven't got a decision yet. But, but I, I feel I've watched a run well, or that's, two. Well, that's disheartening. That is... Uh... That's a sad day. Sad day for the SR20. Um, but it is going to be a good day for either of these drivers if they go through. I think this might be a more obvious decision. Mez, there's a missed gear somewhere there from maybe one of these drivers, but it was still a great battle. Marcus, come round, mate. We need you close, brother. All right, we get the compulsory high five out of the way. A little bit of a quick yarn. Just tell the crowd exactly what you told Gaz. I just uh, missed the gear. I was too busy playing around with it to get on him. <laughs> Oh, too easy. Now, uh, while I'm still with you, Marcus, it was dubbed uh, transition of the day. Now, pure precision or just hope for the best? That was a full sand and definitely pray to God moment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad it paid off. That was sick, but Yep, the crowd absolutely loved it. Gaz, what was it like going against this street style? I mean, I think he drove it here the other day. Yeah, he's driving it home tonight. Bit of a throwback to the days of old. Yeah, it's sick, the, as I said before, the tie even e everyone up, you know, so it's just amazing driving against everyone like this on an even playing field. Yeah, 100%, the radial does work. Let's find out the winner of our battle. Back to you, boys. Yeah, we're going through to the final four is the decision. Will it be Gaz White or will it be Marcus McCarthy? The results are about to drop in. Three, two, one, and the winner is Gaz Whiter gets the win and goes through to the final four. Making a call, and I made a big mistake, Dan. Oh, There's still no. an SR20 in the competition. Not a normal one, but there is. There is Brody Mars. To that That's what I was thinking. One I was more like, time. wait a minute. Forgot about what the about one more time. the thousand horsepower one that shouldn't be considered an SR? Yeah, I always forget about the thousand horsepower yeah, because one. Because it's not a thing. <laughs> because it's, it's not reality. It's not a thing. So it is Gaz Weider, the OG, coming back into competition, going through to the final four. And Gaz Weider will join Jordan Sanderson in the final four. So we've got a supercharged V8 S15, a V8 Ute. 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 Uh, in the t in the final four, of course, this is just Australia, and Australia things are happening. Yes, they and are. We've got a New Zealander now also in the top <laughs> four. So <laughs> one, we we got a Kiwi, and we got an Aussie in the top four. Oof. I'm not saying there's a rivalry, but this was a predicted thing. I mean, you basically called it when you named all the people who won all the different events. It's like the person from that country wins the event. Yeah, well. Let's see what Ish. happens. Marcus McCarthy out there. Was, it was in England. Looks like he has definitely found second gear and third gear on those bars. He, he didn't Marcus McCarthy shits. doing a great job. He entertained us with the backwards entries. He did the transition of the day. So while he didn't win the event, he has the two highlight real moments. He won our hearts. He won our hearts. He like won that. our hearts. So here we are, back at it again. Robert Arbolino, who has just the burnout master from the start line. He's got so much power. 
coming up against Brody Maris. So these guys are going back at it again, Dan. Big separation the first time around. Let's hope we get a little closer. I, I want to see some. I want to see the proximity. The old Garrett start line getting left in the dust as we blast down again. That big rolling burnout from Robert as they go through the first inner. Brody right there. That's the proximity that we're looking for as that smoke train just keeps coming out. Brody doing everything he can to keep up. I know that that BMW has a lot of built-in mechanical grip and finding any kind of grip like that in an S chassis is hard and adding street tires on top of that is difficult. Bit of a gap in between on that last one. So again, not the proximity we were looking for from that. But the run. exclamation mark you want is to be close. Coming across the vibrant finish line, you want to be on the door. It's what the judges and the fans last remember, what we remember, where we get excited. If you don't get that proximity just there, sometimes, you know, you can even cheat it a little bit by going shallow just to get it because it looks good. But on that occasion, it looked to me like Robert having the better pace over the some run. To be, some to be desired. I mean, he was pretty decent through most of the run. And then on this dive in, it's like he bobbles up, he breaks too soon locks the front tires up and then just gets left in the dust because he wasn't back on throttle soon enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a tough one for the judges, you know, especially when we saw this better proximity there than the first run. Yes, it but was. Now it's Marginally. On, but now it's on Robert because he had maybe even less proximity when he started spinning up those tires in the E92. He did. There was a little he, too much wheel speed. Yeah, he just couldn't catch uh, Brody Maher. So let's see if Brody can put the foot down, get away here, and get the win, or as Robert figured I mean, it this out. Is, this, this could be it for the old SR20. So, I mean... A lot of people's, you know, a lot of people's collective hope. hearts around the world will be broken. If we we've had we've had an SR20 in the top four twice this year. Yes, we have, which is Fantastic. unheard of. <laughs> which is the only reason we even did the whole competition, to be honest. <laughs> we, we, it was a very elaborate ploy to go all this around the, the world. the SR20 World Tour. Yeah, we we had to sit down all the SR20 owners and said we need to really be elaborate here, but we need to get them. So here we go. Brody Maher in the lead position. It is Robert Arbolino in the chase position into that first corner. Robert's smoking tires already. He's got to manage that wheel speed. Or Brody Maher will leave him in the dust here. As he comes through the first corner, look at that big smoke again from Robert. And yes, much cleverer this time. Not putting down as much power. Trying to get that proximity as they come through the power alley. Couple of missed zones for Brody Maher. Has a look at this big initiation into that last corner for Brody. Goes to the wall, but Robert Arbolino goes to the door and onto the wall. Ooh, that was dangerous. That was exciting. That's the kind of driving we wanted to see. The finish line, the vibrant finish line, is I think that where you're gonna get that photo. And that photo means were you there or were you not there? To this, to be fair to both of these guys, they learned a lot from the first battle, and it was a much better, cleaner battle that this time. That was. This, this should be something that the judges can actually judge. This isn't, I think there should be a decision out of this one. I'm feeling one way, I'm not gonna voice my opinion, but I, I'm feeling strongly leaning towards one direction. Yeah, good band. Yeah, thank you. When they broke up, I was devastated. Yeah, too. But I think uh, Harry Styles has done pretty well since yeah, then. Yeah, I, I would agree. So we are going to go to the decision <laughs> here for a spot in the final four. Now, Mez, these guys have been battling each other for about six to eight weeks now. They must be tired, but we might have a decision this time. Can somebody get them a water? I think they look thirsty. I mean, it has been a while. All right, I'm down here with Rob. Rob, I've heard stories about what a nice guy, you know, you're taking the tire fitters, chicken kebabs and whatnot, but mate, you were an absolute bully just then. Mate, I'm sort of fighting with a wounded bull here. I don't have as much lock to the left as I do to the right, so the car tries to over-rotate on me on the second left-hander, so I don't know, man, it is what it is. I don't care what happens from now on, I'll qualify, so I'm fucking happy no matter what. <laughs> Sorry for the swearing, but we'll continue moving on. <laughs> Brody. What's going through your head to tackle this beast? Man, honestly, um, this, this event's just a crazy vibe. I feel like there's no losers here, no matter what actually happens. I just try to put down two solid runs. It's really hard to see in the smoke of this car. Um, it absolutely chalks them off and kind of like crabs up the track, but I was just trying to be in there and committed. I knew Rob was going to be on it, so just trying to put on a show. Yeah, it's always good when you can have faith in that lead driver. All right, let's find out a result, hey? Back to you boys in the booth. Thanks. It's going to be a top four finish and a top four stop for Brody Maher or Robert Arbolino. Who's going to get it? It's Robert, Robert Arbolino. Arbolino. Moving going on. through to the final four and that proximity towards the that end. Was it. And that's that what was made the difference. I was definitely leaning his direction. It was just cleaner. Cleaner is a lead run. Cleaner is a chase run. And had all that aggression and excitement that we are craving. It's what we need. It's what we want as Drift fans. For me, I think you're right. We want to see door on door. And even if it's sketchy getting there, yeah, we still want to see it. We still want to see it. So we have got 
all of the SR out of the competition. Which uh, is sad. Everybody pour wow. one out. Wow. Pour one out. But we do have some crazy drivers remaining in the yes, competition. We yes, we do. Guys, show your appreciation for Brody Marr and Robert Arbolino putting on a show. Awesome. Awesome. You know, it's just a thousand horsepower SR20 burnout. Classic. That happens. Classic. Yeah, the old Th faithful. The old SR with a thousand horsepower. Classic Australia. <laughs> so uh, Ben Jenkins, he's on the line. He's pumped up. He's ready to go. He's going to be taking on Cam Martin. Cam Martin having the dream he's again. He's been on a ripper. Cam Martin did one battle with Adam LZ and said, you, you know, know what? what? I'm turning pro. I'm turning pro. It's all going to be great. But he's got to go up against a heavyweight in Ben Jenkins here as he fires through in that S15. Cam trying to get very close on the initiation. Left foot breaking in there. He's got the proximity down from the off. Wow, did you see all of that angle that Ben threw in? Kind of threw Cam off a little bit, but he did a fantastic job of adjusting to that as they blast through this power alley and into the equalizer. Most of the points being taken or given here, and the drone kind of fed off into the distance there. I, I don't know what happened because I couldn't see it. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> Cam Martin just went full ham on the chase run. He went up onto the door. I think that was one of another phenomenal transition, but you can't have a good chase without a good lead, and Ben Jenkins doing that job, and the, his big angle there, allowing Cam Martin back into the run. The transitions, though, almost mimicked exactly yeah, between both cars, and again here, so very good driving for both of these guys. Cam cutting the track a little bit to get that proximity, but this is where it gets really interesting. Big left foot lock up, and look at Cam Martin getting right up in the pocket, but Ben Jenkins oh, he was touching the spoiler off the wall. That is perfect for both of those guys. Again, two good-looking cars, and, and and strangely enough, almost similar-looking liveries. And they could be, it could again, be, they could be yeah, teammates. Could be teammates, but uh, I feel Ben will have to commit to the mustache. I feel that's going to have to happen. That, I think that more people should commit to the mustache. They should. I, I think that's. I, I'm, I'm an on-off kind of guy. Look what it's done for Cam Martin's driving. It has. When he had no mustache, not no, very no, good. No, no, no. Had a mustache, very Big good. Time. Yeah, I think it's just gives you that confidence. Automatic star. Exactly. You look like a star, so you, you can act like a star. Is that guy in the movies? Yes, he yeah. is. Is that the guy? But uh, so we go back to the start line. It's for the final spot in the top four. We're getting towards the semifinals here, guys, and that's going to be when it's tough because it's win or lose trophy. Uh, I say trophy, trophy. Skateboard, deck skateboard deck or no skateboard deck. And <laughs> I'm going to be saying, I'm going to put it out there, not the best skateboarders left in the competition. I don't think we're going to see. Know. Well, can they do a kickflip? There's that's no the age the old problem question. with the skateboard deck, and I found this myself. There's no wheels on it, so it's really difficult. you got to bring your own trucks. you got to bring your own bring trucks your own to trucks. it. Here we go. Second half of the battle, Cam Martin against Ben Jenkins. Oh, look at Jenkins, really close on the initiation to back off a little bit. He got too close. Cam Martin on the perfect lead line. Jenkins look up on the that. curb, trying to transition back as we go for the last step in the final four. The fight tooth and nail for here is Cam Martin right to the edge of the circuit of that big R33, getting through the zones. Now Cam Martin up onto the wall, but Ben Jenkins with a big lock up, oh, but he makes no. an error. Ben Jenkins makes an error, goes too hot, too soon. And are we gonna see the dream weekend for Cam Martin continue? That was good. What a lead run that was. Wow. Big mistakes were made, though. I think mistakes were made. Mistakes happened. To me, that was a phenomenal lead run, and I think up until a moment of mistake, it that it looked to me like it was well. a, if Ben Jenkins was doing a great job. The judges were like, oh, boy, we're going to have to do another one more time. Yeah, I saw this, the stress in their eyes a little bit, and then they were like, oh, please, someone <laughs> hey, make it. Can happened. someone just be bad at drifting for one minute so we can have a break? Stop putting down 90s. So look at this. Ben goes in. I think he dives too soon, hits the front brake, over yeah. rotates it slightly. So Cam, look at this. Having no such issue in the lead position as he fires through. That's impressive stuff. That was. Love to see it. Here we go. We're going to have a decision. Two white helmets, two silver cars. Door shutting on its own. Mez, they must be pumped after that one. Oh, it sounds like we've got some Cam Martin fans down here, but I'm here with Benny Jenkins. Ben, that was you know you had to push hard against an operator like Cam Martin. 100% Cam puts on flawless leads. Uh, he snuck me out there. I was almost going to be straight in the back seat of his R33, but we battled before. And uh, yeah, he's just a class act. All right, Black Market, Adam LZ, what's going on? <laughs> Here's a wish, Cam Martin, don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm stoked. That was a sick run by both of us. Um, I could just trust him completely, and I was able to just slam it straight on his door. No marks, luckily, but it was, like, so close. So happy with that run. So there was no funny business coming into the bowl here? Watch your helmet. No, nah, definitely not. No, nah, he's a class, a class driver. He knows what he's doing, and um, he's not trying to play no games. He's, yeah, gentleman. No, I was implying it was you. No. 
<laughs> All right, let's find out the result and go back to the bat. Well, it's for the last step in the top four. Who's going to get there, Cam Martin or Ben Jenkins? The decision is dropping in. Three, two, one. It's Cam, Cam Martin. Martin. He's going top four. Ben Jenkins bowing out of competition. You know, the next time I'm on Alibaba, I think I'll order myself up and knock off LZ because he is an absolute unit of a driver. Well, I'll tell you what, that is our top four decided. We will see Robert Arbelino go up against Jordan Sanderson, Gaz Weider against Cam Martin. There's your top four, but that's not all. We're getting ready. Talk to me. Talk to me, I'm going to do some fun stuff now. Talk to me, Dave. Because we got, we're, we're through the top eight. Lay it on, lay it we're on me, We're through the bud. top eight, and we're going to do some fun stuff that we shouldn't really do, but it's a kind of an LZ World Tour we thing that we can kind of put do. some cool stuff together. So we are going to send some incredible cars onto the track that are not in the competition, but I saw them in the car park, and I said, like, they should I be like out here. I like you, and I like, I like you. This. Let's go. And our first will be, this is probably, if you've ever looked at a car where an engine is attached to a car rather than a, the other way around, this is it. Mitchell Pullen is going to do a run for us on this track after this, and I need to just explain that this is the wildest looking drift car. Internet. It's supposed to be the wildest chassis in the world. It has to be. So he, this car has, and I'm, I'm going to just read the notes here because I have no idea. Yeah. So it's an LS based 350. It goes to 9,000 RPM, and it is over 800 horsepower. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you, now, you, you had me from the first word that you said. So basically, this car, it's kind of like a drift car, but he can't see anything. So what we're going to have here is a run from Mitch all the way through down onto oh, the here track. He here he comes into that first corner. Look at this thing absolutely chew through the tires. He can only see where he's going when he's on angle down. <laughs> look at the, look at that thing go. Look at listen to the sound of that thing. He's about to clutch kick those people out of existence. This car is absolutely insane. What a monster. And I saw it, and I said, are you doing the competition? Said, no, I'm not doing the competition. Said, you, get, you get in that competition. We need to see that thing out there. That blower must weigh as much as a Volkswagen Beetle. It's, on the front of an s It is the largest engine setup I've ever seen in a car drifting. And it's, he drifts it so, so well. Look at this thing. Imagine the view from the driver's seat as it's going around the track, where you can only see 30% of the track because of the blower on the, <laughs> uh, coming out through the hood. But it's an amazing car. And he drives it so well. It does. This He's would have been ripping. a really good qualifying run. It was. Look at the smoke. I mean, the wheel speed's got to be at least 9,000 miles an hour there. Yeah, and this thing revving so high. What gear do you think he was in? 13? I'd say he's in 14th gear. Okay. It does 9,000 RPM. Good. But that's not the only crazy car we got here this yeah, weekend. There's more. Talk yes, to me. We have got, I don't even know how to describe what this is. This is Levi Clark. Levi Clark has this, it's like a drift rod, I guess is the right way to say it. He's even got the raccoon tail. This thing is a classic hot rod. It's a classic hot rod. It's got the, the steering from a Toyota Supra. Okay. And the suspension from a Toyota Supra. Okay. And that's where the Supra ends. Stops. And the hot rod begins. This car is absolutely unbelievable. As you guys can imagine, open wheels, so not clear it for competition, but it's not really, it's a kind of a fun day, so we can just send them. We're just doing it. Look things. at this thing. Guys, take your phones out. If you're watching at home, this is Australia right now, building madness in front of our very eyes. Into the first corner, we got Levi Clark throwing in. Whoa, loops it a little too much. The pressure got to him with this incredible solo run. But look at that thing go. Look at that raccoon tail just spinning in the breeze. Have you ever in your lifetime seen two cars that are of, of larger intakes than these two that we've just seen? Incorporated. Onto the wall. Look at this. This shouldn't be happening, ladies and gentlemen, but it's the LZ World Tour, so we do what we want. That is a very, very high revving V8. That is incredible. Levi Clark, I mean, for me, those two cars are absolutely sensational builds. And that's what the LZ Tour is all about, guys. It's not just about competitive drifting. It's also about showcasing builds, because if you watch Adam's channel or any of the guys that are here guests they this weekend, crazy stuff. they do crazy stuff and build crazy cars. And we want to celebrate that. Why they built these cars, we have no idea, but they are absolutely outrageous machines. You guys, give it up for the Woo! incredible, incredible Mitch Pullen and Levi Clark. Look at that thing. That it's is just, so cool. There's a raccoon tail coming know, out of the aerial. There's a lot going classic. on. Incredible. Uh, uh, you know what? More than anything, I want to say hello to Mez down there. Mez, I want to find out more about these machines because just they, give are, us the why. they are just incredible. Why? Why, and why? What are they and what's happening and why are they so good at drifting? Just why? 
<laughs> All right, I'm down here with Mitch Pullen. Brother, I gotta, I gotta ask, where did you get the idea for this? God, just figment of my imagination that we brought to life here, mate. So, just a bit of fun, we thought, and keep all the crowd entertained, and here we are doing it. Yeah, mate, I think you're doing a good job of entertaining the crowd. Let's walk over to Levi Clark as well. Levi, mate, a lot of people might know this, they might not know this, but you uh, beat cancer earlier this year. And last year, yep. Mate, round of applause for that. And you're building this absolute weapon as well, but now you're, you're here drifting it on the world stage. Yeah. Keep going, brother. Yeah, no, it's been awesome, man. This track's unreal. It's the first time driving this track and we finally got it dialed in. That corner there, I nearly spun, but the rest of it's been awesome. So, yeah, loving it. Hope all the crowd enjoy it. And uh, you're, you're pretty tall, and uh, that cabin is pretty small. How do you fit in? I don't really. You've got to drive it in race boots and you're sort of pushing back and forth and hitting the wrong puddles, but yeah, you get there. And uh, just a little whoopsie moment and uh, the first corner there? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It went too hard. <laughs> hey. But if the crowd want another one, I'll do it. Oh. Can we get a cheer? Oh. <laughs> Mitch, what, what, what are your thoughts? Could, have you got enough rubber on the back there? Yeah, well, there's still wheels on it, so I mean, I'm good to go. <laughs> well, I might just keep looking at our race director with a bit of communicado and uh or maybe we just get him to do a big massive burnout yeah. oh oh burnouts radio <laughs> i think we might do some burnouts <laughs> i'd like to see i'd like to see some burnouts too from cars i've heard i've heard that australians are pretty good at doing burnouts apparently australians are the best at doing burnouts. apparently they can be professionals at doing burnouts that could only exist as a sport in australia yeah, that professional burnouts that apparently and, and, and i'd love to go see it and maybe he's an amateur but i want to see a professional grade burnout. look at the shot on the screen right now that is just australia personified for me <laughs> absolute madness in front yeah. of you and, and again i gotta love the ingenuity of building cars here that are just nonsense just you know, it's but, but it's so fun and we get to see them do it and they don't just look good they work good that's the it best does. thing it's all mechanical guys have been driving all weekend they've been drifting i'm gonna put it out there better than some of the guys in the competition I in these so. novelty cars so you never know we may see them in competition in future we're gonna to need to put some fenders on that Ford thing. I don't even some know what. Can you imagine turning up? Some sheet metal can you imagine turning up to Formula Drift Scrutiny with that going? Oh. The, they don't even have enough ink in the pen to, <laughs> to go through that one. And no. And all of this doesn't make sense. But we're gonna see some burnouts on track from Levi Clark and Mitch Pullen. We, that's what we came here to see. Levi Clark, come on, guys, get pumped up. If you get pumped up, they're gonna absolutely send the tires off these cars for your entertainment. Get your phones out. Get ready, because they want to put on a big old burnout for you. Look at this. Mitch Pullen. Wow. That is a smoke screen, Dan. Apparently, Australia can do burnouts. Those poor tires are under severe pressure right now. Street radials. <laughs> Ladies Street and gentlemen. Radials for all your Holding on for their dear lives. For all your burnout needs. Street radials. Look at this thing. Just light them up. The torque is ridiculous. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Mitch Pullen. Wow. Okay. There are bits and pieces of stuff hitting the window of the tower. That's an outrageous thing. That was insane. That was obnoxious is probably the right word for that car. Is that sort of blower? And then Levi doing? Clark has gone back to the start line because he wants to just do another full lap of the track because he said the first lap wasn't great. Oh, I see. He wants to one more time himself. He's one more timed himself, which is an unusual That's thing. That's a new thing. New thing. A lot of new things today. <laughs> so here we go. He's on the one more time. One more Look at time. this. Hey, much better entry from Levi Clark. Can he link this whole course together? That's what we're looking for. He's like, guys, I can do better than that. I can do better than that. And he is. This is a great line. This is a huge qualifying <laughs> run here from Levi Clark in an absolutely ridiculous machine. Is he going up to the wall? He is going up to the wall. Oh my goodness Levi gracious. Clark running the wall. 360 out. Beautiful. That was wow. well executed. Wow, that was some choreographed stuff right there. This is, I'm just a kid in a candy store at the moment. This is fantastic. This what is, a show. What, a, what show. a show. If that's what it's all about, it's about having a fun time. And Levi Clark, well, if he could see anything right now, he would see smiley faces in that. You see, I thought he was just leaving. I thought he was just like, you know what, I'm going to let that other guy with the gigantic blower do a burnout, and I'm not going to try to top that. And I think he's trying to top it. He's absolutely sending the stage. <laughs>
<laughs> Those tires are not going to hold on much longer here as Levi Clark absolutely rips a huge burnout. Everybody in attendance, give it up for a Levi. Uh, that, that raccoon tail is definitely going to smell different after that, I think. Wow. I mean, the great thing about his car is you can see the lack of tire he has at the end of that. Yeah, there it is. Hey, man, your tires are bald. Yeah, let's do some more. He's going miles. again. He's going again. Look at it's turning yellow. There is a little yellow. Every time he gets heavily into one of those lines, his smoke turns yellow for a second. Just limiter. Shifting to limiter. I love that thing. I love everything about everything that just happened. No part of me has questioned the logic here in no. the last 10 minutes, but we should, but we should. No. Levi Clark, Mitch Bullen. <laughs> well, if that hasn't warmed you up for our final four, what will? <laughs> What will? Then you have no soul. We have got more surprises to come, though. So if you think that's the best you're going to see today, we have saved our best till last. So next Battle on the line, Royale. we have got the top four. It is going to be Robert Arbolino going up against Jordan Sanderson. Yes. I'm on my feet right now, Dan. You're on your feet because we're, we're standing. We're hyped pumped. up. We're ready. But before we do, we are going to go to a small commercial break because you know what? We got excited. We, we did. We, excited. We're supposed to do a commercial break. Then we threw burnout things going on. We forgot about it. We stood we're up. So we started sorry. jumping around. But now we're going to take a chill and we're going to be back in a few moments' time with all the action from the final four here at the LZ World Tour stop in Australia. Don't go anywhere. Since 1997, Vibrant Performance made its mark as one of the industry leaders in the development and engineering of exhaust and induction components for the automotive aftermarket. Over the years, Vibrant has seen its evolution pivot from the chambers of an exhaust and induction components brand to becoming the primary source of professional fabrication components for professional fabricators. Please be sure to find us at vibrantperformance.com. Hey guys, Jeff Jones here. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gushin. I'm Matt Field. I drive Link. They are the most reliable EC around and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive Link.
back. And we are back, guys. It is now the crunch time. The business end of the weekend. The final four drivers. As you can see that uh, that very expensive prize package in the background there. That in is a re showcase. Real wood. And real, real wood. Wood. And real vinyl on top oh, of it. Wow, yeah, you get that. you can't buy them. Nice. LZ World Tour. Australia. If you see that on eBay, place a bid or two. Hopefully nobody's selling their first place skateboard decks, but hey, hey you never it's know. definitely gonna stand out in the trophy cabinet, that's for sure. <laughs> don't fall off it though. We we we, yeah. we, don't, we don't accept any liability for what you do with the skate deck if you've won it. I was still hoping we would see Nate Hamilton do a kickflip with one, but I don't think we've seen the video. We haven't seen it yet. Here we go. It's the final four. Four drivers remain. Three spots on the podium. Who's ready, Australia? Are you ready? They are ready. Then let's go. Let's go. The drivers heard that, so they are on their way down the front straightaway. The beginning half of the first battle of our top four with a Ute versus a BMW. V8s screaming in the distance as they're coming closer, shooting into the first turn. Oh, big mistake from Robert in the back. Unfortunately, the Ute's just carrying on like nothing happened, all casual business-like, as he chucks in towards a very tall, very hard wall. And Jordan getting back up into his grill. Oh, Robert He's Arbolino, like, hey man, I'm yeah. still here. Robert Arbolino put a tire mark on the door of the Ute as they came across the finish line. It's getting hard fought now. Remember, if you win this battle, you're guaranteed a podium place, and that's what they know. And to me, it looked like Robert, again, just not getting that grip through the first two corners. And look at that, Jordan Sanderson, beautiful line. Robert just washing a little bit there. I think he's struggling to Oops. find grip. He's got too much at times and too little at others. And look at this, as they fire down, it looks to me like Jordan uh, doing a great job in that lead position right up onto the wall. And this is where Robert starts to get really close and up personal now, and right up, look at that little boof on the door. Lovely, I love to see it, love to see it. Great stuff from both of these guys. I need to do things because I forgot to do things and then I did them at the very end. Yeah, a little time, of course, a long run back to the start line here means a little bit of time to think about things, think about your strategy, think about, yeah, have a think about what way you're gonna approach it. Look at this. Oh, that's the shot nose. right there. Look at that tire on the door on an, on a tire logo with a tire on it. There you go. <laughs> on a Ute and a BMW. He was just calling out the, the there was a tire there. That's all he was doing. That was an incredible run from Robert Arbolino there. At the end, we can, in the start just took, a, took, took some time to get into the proximity there. We'd switch him around. This time it will be... Jordan Sanderson. Jordan Sanderson, could we get a Ute in the final of the LZ World Tour How in Australia? Australian would that be? That would be pretty fitting. Well, that's, that's still a half of this battle to go. As we see them come through the gears one more time, Robert Arbolino. There's that tire smoke. Yeah, big smoke, and it's going to be tough for Jordan Sanderson to see what's going on here if he doesn't get close, but he is close. On big angle, but too much angle oh, no. from Jordan Sanderson. He drops back a little bit, goes a little bit too greedy. Now he's losing ground, having to cut the track. And Robert Arbolino having no such problems as he heads back towards that wall Can and up onto the wall. It may Maybe too little too late for Jordan Sanderson. Wow. What a turnaround. Yeah, that, that was unexpected in every way, shape, and form. It's great to see it, though. You never know in drifting when the battle is really over. You think you can predict it, but it's like in you're watching a soccer match. It's 3-0, and all of a sudden, one goes in, two goes in, and then it switches right around. Hey, no, and it rarely bad. happens in soccer, but it happens quite a bit in drifting, yes, where does. you'll see things turn, turn right around. And look at that. On the transition, he got. To, it looked to me like Sanderson just took too much out of it. He did, and the lead run, again, just carrying on like nothing else matters. Absolutely, as they come but back. But didn't get the proximity. So maybe if the Ute would have been up in his business all the way through, rubbing a half moon on his door, this could have been a one more time. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, we, we wait. the judges will make a decision. Of course, today they're watching things much more critically than we are as entertained fans. Yes. And let's see if we are going to get a decision. It's going to be for the final. Mez, that one looked a little scrappy out there. What are the drivers thinking? Oh, Robert Arbolino is absolutely pumped. Jordan Sanderson's about to prepare himself for a rollback. It's all going on down here. Rob, you absolutely charged hard in the paint there, brother. But first, he's got to show some love. Oh, you love to see it, don't you? Rob, mate, two V8s absolutely going for it. Should be an SL20. Um, it's, like I said, I understand why everyone puts V8s in their cars now. It's, it's magical. And uh, Jordan Sanderson, could you just tell the crowd how long have you been drifting for? I uh, started the start of last year. You hear that, folks? Started the start of last year and he's producing chases and stuff like that. Mate, that's absolutely unreal. Would you guys like to find out who the winner is? Not really. Okay, well, I might just get out anyway. Well, here we <laughs> go. It's going to be for the final 
Who's going through to the final of the LZ World Tour here in Calder Park? Robert Arbolino, Jordan Sanderson. It's Robert, Robert Arbolino gets the win. He is going to the final, and he can't believe it. <laughs> he may have swore at the camera. Yes. I can I neither that, deny or confirm. He's a very angry, happy face. He is very happy about it. He cannot believe it. Robert Arbolino is going through to the final. And it is going to be a third and fourth place playoff for Jordan Sanderson. He's still, still got a chance to put a Ute on the podium, which yeah. is what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it what it's all about? Today, it's what it's all about for it me. It was what it's all about. I love that thing. I can't believe that guy's only been drifting for a year. We drifted a lot longer than that, Dan, and we have not got those skills yet. No! What come on! What happened to us? We have made mistakes. We didn't build a ute. That's what That's... we didn't do. If we'd built a ute, we'd be out there being great uh, as well. I'm, uh, I'm getting on Craigslist and looking for W chassis when I get home. Yeah, that, that could be us. We you, Dan. Look at that. We could have so much room for activities. I mean, we could have a cooler back there. We could store all of our spare tires in the car on our way to the truck. It's awesome. amazing. Suntan lotion in the back. Put a tow bar on it. Yeah, tow some things. Tow another ute. That's a spare ute. <laughs> We'd probably need one. Yes, we would. So there you Look have it, Jordan go. Sanderson. He's probably forgotten he's got a third and fourth place playoff, and he's like, oh, I'm just roasting. Oh, no, wait. I've got to keep the car going for one more run today in the third and fourth place playoff. That means we have got one finalist in the bag. It is Robert Arbolino in the BMW. Ooh. And now we move to our other semi-final, which is going to be two guys that I think have been really deserving of being in this position. It is going to be Gaz Wider going up against Cam Martin. This is good. Cam Martin has been on fire. He's been on it. Fire. So this is another battle of, well, I'll tell you what, Cam Martin's taken out Ben Jenkins, Gaz Wider's teammate. Could he take out the two Phoenix he's Radiator like, hey guys, cars? Can you please move out of the way? Yeah, I have like, a skateboard deck he, to he's, win. He's, he's looking across. I thought I battled you already. Yeah. <laughs> No, that different guys. Looks yeah, it's different very car. similar. Oh, you thought you had a bigger wing than last time. So he doesn't really care. He'll take them all down. Cam Martin, he won against Adam LZ in the fantasy the battles. Giant he might take down. He is literally the giant slayer today. Cam Martin has been the hero, the underdog hero. Phenomenal mustache, aviator sunglasses, or 33 hey, Ford. Hey, LZ may end up winning the event anyway. Who, who knows? Who knows? It'd be a good Photoshop, I it guess. It would be. And then Cam Martin, he's got all the style. 33 four-door aviators and mustache. I, I, there's only the three dude, people. The dude's got some things going in his direction. There's only three people moment. in the world that could pull off that combo. And Cam is doing a good job. We also have the OG Gaz Wider. So we got someone fresh in the sport. And we got somebody like Gaz Wider who's really established the sport in New Zealand. Yes. He's been a hero. Even in Ireland, we were watching this guy back in the day in awe. Last time I Look saw him that. drifting oh. was actually on the streets of Liverpool at Red Bull Drift Shifters. Oh, that was Drift Shifters. Yeah, and he was there and being incredible as well. So here he is at the LZ World. Tour guys, but that car is absolutely unbelievable looking as well. But it that's not what matters here. It's no. not about how her car it looks. It is fashion show to most people. But it is but to the judges, it means zero. No, and if you can make an R33 Ford or look good, look at like, all the GoPros on that thing. Incredible. So Cam <laughs> Martin has all the GoPros. Every family member has put their GoPro on the car at this point as he heads Take into four of this top four battle. Can he get to the final or with Gaz Wider reign supreme and go to face Robert Arbolero? It looks like we are waiting for the judges to make their uh, their call that the track is ready. It'll clean up after the last run going on. I'm Here we go. So We're ready to go. For this run. Look I'm at the so jump excited. from Cam Martin. Ready for this one as they come off the line in the lead position. Gareth Wider going through the gears, but Cam Martin not letting him get away. He's definitely not got the horsepower, but he's got the bravery into the first corner as Cam Martin attacks the legend Gareth Wider. Gareth Wider putting a wheel up on the concrete. There's Gareth Martin have to back off now as they transition back through. Cam Martin, can he find the pace? Can he find the move to get up onto the door? Last minute dive, sparks from Gaz Wider again, and Cam Martin's right there on the wall. Wider on the wall, and Cam Martin on the door. Cam Martin, what a monster. He's he's such a timid looking little guy, and then he's just an absolute monster behind the wheel. I love this. You've got the, the, the underdog hero story. Look at Gaz. I think Gaz Wider's exhaust is just sparking the ground. I think it's when he's grabbing his e-brake. He, he must have some crazy pads. He's got such strong brake pads that they create sparks, yeah. or he has got no brake pads. Or it one could be one a, or the just other. metal on metal. At exactly, that point. he's just doing what he can. But this is it's textbook from Gaz Wider in the lead position. Cam Look at that again. angle Gaz is throwing down. Oh, it's just so cool to watch that these two cars, which almost look like Ooh. teammates, in very different chassis, different engine setups, but doing a great job of putting Man. on a show for the fans here in Calder Park. We've got very few battles left to go, but we have got some beautiful sounds. I'm just going to give you a clue. Uh, some oh, beautiful more sounds. More surprises is what I'm There's hearing. There's more surprises to come. We're going to leave the oh best to goodness. last. We're going to leave everybody here with smiles on faces. We appreciate everybody here in Calder Park that's come out to support this event. We love each and every one of you. Without you, it wouldn't have happened. It's been a chilly day today, but you guys have still been
but bringing the heat all the way through the stands and the banks. We appreciate it so much, Dan, because oh, we want to keep creating cool events all around the world. And without people like you, we wouldn't be able to do it. So you guys are doing so much for the drift scene in your nation, putting it on the map. That you should be so proud of yourself this weekend for all your energy, for all your enthusiasm. And everybody I've spoken to this weekend is just the coolest, coolest vibe. It's bringing a tear to my eye, Dave. Like, I'm emotional. Right We've, we're a long way from where we started on this tour, Dan, yes, and I'm so are. happy we're ending it here <laughs> in Australia. A fitting end to a beautiful season. And Gaz Wider doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to smash the doors. Because yeah. he wants to go to the final. Cam Martin has done well in the chase position, but now Gaz Wider's got to show that experience, show that enthusiasm to get to the final. And he's already he's eyed up Cam Morton here. Nice initiation from both of these guys. Left foot breaking in there from Gaz Wider. Oh, almost a transition and a hit from Gaz Wider, but he makes it work. Experience counting there as they now pull down the power alley for the last time in this particular battle. As we go to the wall, Cam's up into the wall, and he's hit the wall. Cam is buried in the wall, and Gaz Wider not on the door. I cannot believe that. Gaz had the opportunity to get into the pocket, had the opportunity to put down a perfect follower because that lead run was absolutely a banger. Didn't get to do it. So. This is in the judges' hands. Oh, I mean, I'll be honest, I think Gaz Wider's lead was really good. I think Cam's lead was really good. Gaz, watch this, he goes a little greedy. Oh, he does a nice little left foot right there, gets Still away with to it. Come in and put him into an awkward Just going to watch Cam Martin's lead right here, see he wasn't spot on. Really good left to right, and this is it for me. Watch this, look how wide he goes here early. Out to the wall. Whoa, early, he hit where nobody else the wall. Before. But he doesn't really bobble the car, and Gaz maybe backing off a little bit, saying this guy's going to hurt himself. He's and in the he wall. didn't. And he just didn't, he got away with it. Guys, Cam yeah, Martin, he yeah. is on cloud nine you got to right give it up to this young man for putting on a show today against some of the biggest names in the game. What a dream day for him. Gaz Wider's all smiles as he gets out of the car. Calder Park, if you're still with me, give it up for Cam Martin and Gaz Wider. Oh, no. Oh, that did catch the mic. Yeah, everyone found it okay. Cam, mate, you're going up against the four-time D1 NZ champion, and you're just absolutely on song. Did you have your wheat bix this morning? Um, no, I didn't eat this morning, but um, no, I don't know. I'm just, I, again, another killer driver. You know, you can just absolutely lay it all on the line. You can trust him completely. So I did what I had to do. You know, like it's driving hard, and he's on my door, and I'm on his door. So it's it's bloody so much fun. I'm loving this. <laughs> oh, you can feel the enthusiasm, Gaz. You got to be close to running out of tires. Oh, I think there's a few more left there, but um, yeah, I felt I, I messed up a bit on my lead there. I, I kind of had a bit of an understeer, but hopefully I cleaned it up enough for him to do a good chase. Yeah, look, it, put on a show for the crowd. Do we want to find out who's going through to the final battle? Yeah, I well, we're we about to find out, Mez. We're about to find out who is going to the final to face Robert Avalero. Three, two, one, decision in. It's Cam, Cam Martin! The giant Cam slayer! Cam Martin has beaten everybody today. <laughs> LZ, Gaz Wider, the whole lot. He's beaten both Phoenix Radiator cars. That is absolutely... And somehow, and he's bent the back of his North 33 to pieces. Yes, he, he has. He is into the final. That is absolutely insane. Look at him kicking the back end out. He's trying to kick the car. Doing car repairs in front of the people. And Gaz Wider will play off in their third and fourth against the Ute of Jordan Sanderson. And that is going to be the last two battles of the day. Cam Martin, the hero story today. Cam Martin has skateboard decks in his eyes. He has he he the has, vision. Uh, he already has one now. It just depends whether it says first or second. Yeah, the Wish the Wish LZ. The Wish LZ? The LZ from Wish. You know what? Sometimes I've bought stuff from Wish.com. I have too, and it and comes in never what you would expect. I think today... I would order him. I was about to say, I, would order, I think he's a reliable product. I think he's a very reliable product. He should be copied. <laughs> And uh, yes, Cam LZ is into the Cam final. Cam LZ. He's got to stay calm because he's got yes, a big final. And he again, does. he's driven very hard today, taking down some of the biggest, as you said, four time D1NZ champion. In, That's crazy. In Gaz Wider, the legend now. Oh, what is that? Is that this, this is a support this vehicle? Is, change? Here comes another I surprise for everybody in attendance. Oh these two cars, goodness. I spotted these guys in the car park. This is the one guy, Jay, who built both of these cars. This is what you call madness what we have here is a datsun prairie with the running gear of an a86 suspension and a 2jz na under the hood okay. and on the other side well you've just got your classic honda odyssey with a 2jz drift car oh okay. i told you guys that you're going to see stuff here today that doesn't make any sense what we have got now is the battle of the minivans 
This is a classic example of things that should never exist. We're going to have on a, a, mini, a minivan battle before we get to the final. You guys at Calder Park excited for this one? Two minivans owned by the same guy, D Dale Campaign, driving the Odyssey 2JZ drift car. And we got the man himself, Jay, driving. That is insane. This Nissan or Datsun Prairie, which is stupid well, kind of the US car. we've never it, even heard of a prairie. it's taller than it is wide I think it I'm not sure is. the it's lower be on 12 inch wheels so here we go into the first battle and there we are it is into the first corner this I don't even know how to describe yeah, what what's happening here <laughs> Jay Duca in the Nissan Prairie NA2JZ oh a little bit of understeering it out you know things that should not be happening this is what happens at 4 a.m. when you get bored on Gran Turismo and you try to start again like I built this on Odyssey for a thousand horsepower and for drifting and everybody just looks at you weird or you just go out and do it. This is incredible. Look at him Look up at on, the, on wall. the wall in the Honda Odyssey. It's not like that's an easy fix. You want to know something even crazier about that car? I'm not going to spill all the beans, but okay. that Honda Odyssey is the shell of a Honda Odyssey placed on the chassis of a 350Z, which has been lengthened, which kind of defeats the purpose in one way, but he did it anyway. And it's got a 2JZ sitting almost under the air conditioning system. And it has got four bride bucket seats. For oh, so he could give all sorts of ride along. Yeah, and then in the other one, you've got the Nissan Prairie. It's 2JZ 3.2 Stroker. So it's an NA with a Stroker kit. Wow. And a KE70 floor. I, so, I don't even know what I'm reading here. This That's is just so, silliness. Just but guys, words. we got to give it up as they come in front of you for these two ridiculous minivans putting on a show. Give it up for Jay Duca, who built both of these cars. Can we get a huge round of applause as they step out of the cars? This is just absolute fun and madness on track. A drift lap from two minivans before <laughs> the final. Minivan. The final. Mez, I gotta just ask some Mez, personal Mez, questions Mez, Mez, here. What inspires Mez, these situations? Jay, mate, these are two unique rides. What is going through your head when you build these things? I just love vans. Hey, I don't blame you, mate. <laughs> I do not blame you. Um, weird thing as a driver, being a passenger seat in your own car. Yep. Now, what's it like tandeming with your own car? That's awesome. I just wanted to take out my own door, but couldn't quite get there. <laughs> oh, now, Dale, you're used to driving a bit of a competitive rig. What's this? Is this gonna, are we going to see this in the South Australian Drift Series next year? Mate, it's wild. Jay builds wicked cars. Everyone should get on his page and look at it. It's unbelievable. It actually drives really well. It's a big car, a bit to get used to, but yeah, it was awesome getting out there watching both of these cars on track. Oh, you love to see it. Uh, Crowd, do you reckon we should get these to do a little little burnout together? What do you reckon? Oh, that was that was a bit weak. Yeah. Don't you reckon, Jay? That was real weak. Yeah, we crowd. Do you want to see the guys do some burnouts? Yeah. Oh, that's that surely that's worthy. All right. All right. I like Oh, we just want to quick the pop man. the hood. <laughs> Look at this contraption. <laughs> Oh, what are we working with down there, Jay? Ooh, anodized blue. Well, it's way cooler than I thought it was going to be. All right, well, the crowd has made the noise. The burnouts are going to come. And uh, back to you boys in the booth. Well, Mez, thanks for throwing us up uh, what we don't know or what we're watching. I feel like I'm in a dreamland. Mine, Jay is minds just, are collectively blown up here Jay in the tower. Is, I just feel like I want to just a, po a poster of Jay with a script that says, I just like vans. <laughs> I just like vans. I just like vans. I like turtles. And, I don't and he likes and, vans. And most people would say that I mean the shoes. But he no. genuinely means vans. vans. And I'm He's not sure. He's passionate about there is a, vans. What is happening? There isn't even a B pillar in this car. What's, what is this thing? There isn't a B pillar. He's had to build his own B pillar. He's got beautiful uh, oh, stitch like work the in the back. The plaid is pretty, pretty nice That's there. Styly. Got a Nardi in there. Look at that. And it's um, and everything else. I have no idea. And then there's an Odyssey with a two JZ, which Dale said drove pretty well, which is <laughs> a testament to <laughs> Jay building cars. Because how does that drive well? That's, neither of those cars should drive well, and they both just did. Now, now they're both doing burnouts. With a door open. This is the minivan deathmatch burnout competition, which you never needed, but you should have wanted. Soak it in, folks. Just soak it in. The LZ World Tour bringing uh, something. Uh, I don't know. I'm a man that's a lot of. I've seen a lot of things this year, Dan, and I've, you've, you've seen more than most. I've definitely not seen what I'm seeing right now. No. And the I've best never. thing is, you could park beside this Odyssey in the car park and know nothing. You'd just be like, "That's a cool. Oh, it's cool car." Hey, buddy, you're lost. You're on the track. The car park's over there. 
Um, like, can you imagine how fast the shopping gets home? Oh, like man. you are. A, a you got till, that milk in record like time. Till and then ba bam, you're home. Sure. It's, it's a practical machine. Hey, what well, is this? Well, uh, well, I'll tell you what this is, Dan. This is a, uh, you know, one of those casual things that happens again. You've just had the minivan burnouts. Why don't we go with some madness with a six rotor? You can't even see how far those go back in the engine bay. This is what everybody's been waiting for. Muck and Motorsports, incredible. Six rotor or X7. Who wants to hear this thing rip up the track? <laughs> this is what we're here for. We're here for nonsense. And now I feel we're getting there. Let's get some more nonsense. Let's hear some sounds that you don't normally hear. This is about as close to a Formula One car at a drift event that you'll ever hear in your life. Didn't even know there was a thing called a six rotor until this. And here's an amazing thing. This is his second day drifting ever, ever. Benji is drifting for the second day ever in a six rotor Oryx 7. <laughs> Breathe this in. Just let it happen. What a sound. That is a, it sounds like. And for just, everybody that can still hear us. What? Yeah. What was that? I, 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 I don't, I can't hear myself think in this tower. A six rotor Oryx 7. That is just the wildest thing ever. Six rotors and essentially for a layman's terms, that is three Oryx 7 engines put together in one Oryx 7, which is ridiculous. This is an amazing build for the guys at Mucka Motorsports, also representing SP Tools. Benji giving it a spin for everybody. Give it up for one of the craziest cars built all around the world, and it's built right here in Australia. That machine is, a, is just a monster. I will never get that out of my head. Exactly. Mez, if you can hear anything down there, which I'm sure you can't, have a chat with this man and, and just find out what was the idea behind this incredible car. What? <laughs> all right. I'm down here. Benji, you are just de-kidding, which you need all the safety gear when you're behind a weapon like this. What was, uh, what was the idea behind this, brother? Oh, just to do something different. Um, always loved rotaries, just they're just being sick as. And basically, the six rotors out there in the world from what 2013 now, and it just needs to be showcased really. So you just need to get out there and bash it and give it a go, and that's what we're trying to do. So, look, I think you're doing it pretty well. You, the fans are loving the sound. Their ears aren't, but they are loving the sound. Now, your first time drifting, when was that? Uh, just basically like a month ago, I went to Manfield for a couple of hours, but pretty much the whole time we just, uh, you know, configuring out the cooling system. So we got a couple of laps down, and then I went to Hampton Downs, and we had a vibration, so we got a couple of laps down there, but um, the, the main time is here. So first time, you know, officially three, three days here at LZ Tour, so it's been, it's been a wild ride, that's for sure. Not a bad way to debut the big old six rotor, that's for sure. Oh, we revealed it here at the Keep It Reet workshop and then obviously at this event. So, yeah, it's been a pretty epic experience and the, the networking and, and, of course, the crowd. Uh, the atmosphere here is huge, so we loved it. <laughs> That's a businessman. Networking first, entertainment second. All right, make some noise for Benji Sned and Annie Six Rota. You know, taking a car like this with a motor like this oh, and having to push start it because it's a rotary, well, it's classic rotary things, but what I love about what I love about this is that he's such a like a well-spoken, calm man for a car that is absolutely outrageous on the track. And then you know, three days of drifting and send it at the wall. Yeah, and I'm going to correct myself. The car was built in New Zealand, not in NZ. Australia. It's NZ, not OZ, Apologies. right? One of the Z's. One of the Z's. So there you have it. it is the uh, the six rotor is on track? I'm not sure if it's ready to rock or not ready to rock. Uh, they've been pushed starting it. They're getting pretty good at it. So it is, uh, again, one of those cars where I think it has done a lot of laps this weekend and getting a little tired. It managed to do one, though, and everybody oh, got man. to hear the noise of this amazing machine. And again, remember, this is a experimental vehicle. So it is not something that normal people build. No. So this is all a part of the parcel. Testing the car is, I mean, I've built cars that are far less complicated than this, and they have not worked at all. To build a six-rotor that can come out here and do some laps is absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, you can follow the Mucka Motorsport on Instagram and all that. Just just keep an eye on this thing. If you, if you ever feel like you're having a quiet morning and you don't want it to be Look as quiet. Look at the door card. <laughs> like, that is, that is a pretty impressive door card. Just, uh, yeah, just very excited. Uh, love to see, I can't wait to see the progression of when they get this thing dialed in and, and really turn it up. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. He learns how to drift more than on three days' worth. 
three days worth of drift, panic to get it ready for this event. Guys, one more time, give it up for Mugga Motorsport and Benji in the six rotor or X7. And unfortunately, it's not leaving like it arrived, but we will see it back again, I'm sure, down the line, Dan. I'm into it. With a lot more madness. And as I said, that car has done a lot of laps this weekend. Guys, give him a wave as he heads off the circuit. And unfortunately, that is the end of the madness here. This oh, no, wait. Sorry. I'm completely mistaken yeah, again. Because we have got right. one man who said, uh, my car is working. Can I go out and crash it into things? And he also is one of the co-founders of this event. It is Jason Farron from Keep It Read in the Barrowwags. It's back from D1NZ this year, back for this event. And he has said he is going to go and maybe break a lot of things in this run. He's got a passenger in the passenger seat. He's going to go out and put a He was one of the highest qualifiers yesterday. Expect some very rare taillights to be very rare at no more on the wall. <laughs> Jason Farron going for a big run, guys. This one, take your phones out. This car is wild. Four liter. Barra powered or 30 Skyline wagon. Does it need to make sense? Weird words S again S coming S out of your mouth. 13 suspension. Massive burnout from the line. Is this going to be the biggest, smokiest run of the weekend? Jason Farron firing it in. Look at this. Absolutely tearing through the course. Keep an eye on that wall. He's definitely going to be a look for it as they fire down into the last section. This is going to be sketchy. Goes early, goes late onto the wall. Jason Farron pushing. That wagon up onto it, guys. Give it up the smoke. for Keep It Reads, Jason Farron. It's passenger, out. This passenger's oh. got a heck of a ride along oh, there. That was impressive. What a wild machine that is. Such a cool concept. Like not a, not, a, not a rear light left on that car after this weekend. That other guy likes vans. He likes station wagons. He does. I mean, I really like wagons. What I've realized in Australia is that you guys like madness, but practical madness, which means <laughs> it's, it's got to have a bed in it's it. It's got to have got yeah, covered got, parking in it. It's got to have a bed. It's a minivan. It's a four door. I mean, you guys have all the practicality here, but then completely ruined that by putting roll cages and radiators. Giant and all that blowers. Stuff. Stuff. Exactly. As he stuff. steps out of the car, guys, will you please make some noise for the man that put a lot of this event together, brought the LZ World Tour to Australia. Give it up for Jason Farron from Keep It Reet. All right, I'm here with the hometown hero, Jason. I've got to keep it quick, mate. I just want to know what gear were you in when you were doing that? Ah, uh, yeah, so that means four. So, yeah, 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 yeah I got it. I did get that memo, and I was like, is that fourth? Saw the smoke. Yeah, uh, you know, it's probably not the best time to, like, get the car working how it should. It would have been good in the competition, but glad to get the car out uh, for all the fans. Stoked to be out here. It's been amazing. You love to see it. Fourth gear, baby. Make some noise for Jason Farron, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Keep It Reed. I'll tell you what, Jason Farron is going to leave here in a very respectable manner, Dan. That's the kind of guy he is. He doesn't make much noise. He doesn't make much smoke. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be no. in anyone's way. Um, There's no way. He's his own rip his burnout. own workmate no is way. telling him, just Jason, if you could just leave here in a quiet, That's timely fine. fashion. You're, you're in a station yeah, wagon. You're in a, you, all the guys who came here in station wagons are only going to be inspired to do stupid things. Just let's keep it practical. Let's it keep just, it. Ah, uh, he ignored everything. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening right now. Oh, hold Gun on. Shots are being fired. There's a lot it's... of anti lag happening right now. Jason, don't do it, Jason. He's doing it. He's doing it already. It's decided. It's decided. It's over with. I mean, it's Australia. This is going to be one big <laughs> all the way across in front of the fans here. The limiter on that thing. I think he needs a limiter for his limiter. There are so many times this weekend I've gone, I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> this car shouldn't exist. No. It's a silly thing. Makes loads of noise. Guys, give it up one more time for Keeper Reed and Jason Farron putting on a show before we head to our final two battles of the event. This Woo! is what it's all about. This one is for all the marbles. If you want to get a skateboard, skateboard or you want to just watch a guy get a skateboard deck because it's for uh, third and fourth on the podium. Yeah, it is going to be our third and fourth place playoff between Jordan Sanderson and Gaz Weider. Gaz in the lead. Oh! Big contact before the first corner. Jordan Sanderson's folded in the back of Gaz Weider's car as they went through the first corner. Now it's getting messy. Now it's getting aggressive. The they gloves are off. They want those skateboard decks. Jordan, Real bad. Jordan firing in in the Ute in the chase. Oh, oh, my goodness. Gaz just destroying the back end of his car there. Wow. 
what just happened? Gaz Weiner just exploded that S15, which was already exploded from the first <laughs> corner, on the wall at the end, putting on a show, guys. You gotta love it. These are very expensive things being broken for your oh entertainment. My goodness. my goodness. That poke right at the beginning. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Big crash on entry, and then all of a sudden, We've got this moment at the end where Gazwider just loses his mind and says, I'm just going to drive well, into the, the wall. Ends, the back end's messed up anyway. I'm going to drive as close to the wall. I'm going to drive through the wall because he, I have less back he end. He didn't even drift the wall. He just skateboard ding, ding, railed ding, the ding, wall. Ding, 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 ding. He, was, he, 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 was just, he just... Hey, there's some pieces. And if you want some uh, Gazwider memorabilia, you can pick it up inside <laughs> Barrier 4 at Corner 2. There's a lot of S15 down there yeah, that, just that, scattered that, around. There's a lot of things that happened in that one run. And this we haven't even got to the second half of the battle yet. Exactly. Gaz Wider now in that lead position. Jordan Sanderson, oh, just absolutely punts into Gaz Wider on the initiation. Somehow Gaz still gets the right line after that. Yeah, he that. did. He pushed him a little more into angle. It's, uh, it's like, you know, I need to be as aggressive as I can. So I need to Jordan's do Jordan's just something. having a look at that lead car position. Was he uh, a little too far does over? Does he handbrake the wrong direction here? Yeah, it's very strange from Gaz Weider. It's like he pulled the handbrake to the right. It's not tire smoke from power, right? So that's what the judges are going to have a look at here. Look at look at the handbrake drag to the wrong direction on the first corner. Strange from Gaz Weider. Maybe that's why Jordan Sanderson went into the back of him. A sudden slowdown is not what you're expecting as you're blasting down into entry. Especially on the flick. Yeah, just a strange place to pull the handbrake. Guys, why just a little handbrake the wrong direction? We used to see it, you know, we see a clutch kick that way yeah. or a weight transfer, which is sort of acceleration, not deceleration. I think Joe's going to have a good look at that one. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, turn of events there in the slow mo replay. Gotta love it. Gotta love the yeah. judges and being then just so technical. A little boop. Just exactly, a little boop. and you can see Jordan Sanderson also hits the wall yeah, just in the chase position. In no respect for the rear end of these cars whatsoever. Oh, my, oh, goodness. my that goodness. goodness. That thing is looking like a beer can. Oh, no. Guys, why does car not. Where, that's, uh, that's seen better days, yeah, Dave. That tail, there's one tail and that one tail is not facing, is facing down. Yes. And that is not the standard position so for an S15 tail. Well, if somebody was behind you and you hit the brakes, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't even know. Here we it go. It's like going to be the second half of the run. Car is looking great. Everything looks Look, great on the start line. Back both of these yeah. cars. A lot of tape, a lot of dreams lost here. Both cars absolutely wrecked. For your entertainment, folks, do we want to hear you make some you. noise? It's for third step on the podium. Will it be wider? Will it be a Ute on the podium here in Australia? Well, Jordan Sanderson has that. A lot of pressure that. on that Ute yeah, shoulders gotta, right now. So let's see what happens. We don't know what the judges have called on the first half of the run, so it's still all to play for. We're getting the word. We're going to send these boys down the straight. Hopefully we get I'm interested nope. to see what his wing's going to do at speed now. It's going to fall off, Dan, is what it's going to do. <laughs> Here we go. Jordan Sanderson in the lead position. Gaz Weider, he knows he made a, maybe he made an error. He doesn't know anything. He's going to have to go for Jordan Sanderson with the big angle. And Gaz Weider on that front break, transitioning very close to Jordan Sanderson. Now we're getting really, really close here on the transitions as Gaz Weider wants to redeem himself on this run. Jordan Sanderson going hard to the wall, but look at Gaz Weider diving in. Sanderson hits the wall, puts the throttle to the floor. This is insane driving for both of these guys. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a show these guys are putting on here at Calder Park. Well, you know what? Deserving of this third and fourth place playoff, that is for sure. As both, look at the angle from Jordan Sanderson. I've never seen a Beautiful. Ute on 90 degrees of angle <laughs> anywhere, unless it's parking. And it's unbelievable. Now, Gaz Wider does start reeling them in here, doing some crazy transitions. He's got a little bit more pace, I think, in that car. And as they transition, I watch Jordan. He goes so wide and just bounces off the wall here as he stays on throttle. It's like, I'm going to fold it in just a little bit there more. Is, it's the Catalina wine mixer of drift events. He's, Let knocking, it all he's knocking the duct tape back off the car. Look at the rear end of these two cars as they pass in front of you. That is how hard they're driving for your entertainment, Calder Park. So make some noise for these warriors on track right now, ruining their own cars. So you guys have Very some smiles on faces. Cars. That is what it's all about. And there you have it. It's going to be Gaz Weider and Sanderson to get a decision. It's for third step on the podium. It's a big one. This they fouled all the way. Guys, give them deck. some noise. Give them, hit them with a wall of sound as they get out of the cars. All right, just down here with Gaz Weider. Gaz, nice rear end, mate. <laughs> what, what happened there? Oh, just a bit of a bump on the first corner. It sort of threw me wide. And after there, it was a bit of a mess trying to clean it up, but it was still a blast. Hell yeah. And Jordan, what about what was it like from your angle? Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit of a touch up into the first corner. And then, yeah, man, I was just having a blast. <laughs> having so much fun.
Um, maybe you guys could get a two for one down at the panel beaters. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's looking a bit that way. Pretty sad. All right, boys. Well done. I'm sure we want to find out more. Well, it's for yes, third step do. on the podium. Who's going to take third step? Will it be Jordan Sanderson? Will it be Gaz Weider? This Here we exciting. go. Jordan, Jordan Sanderson, Sanderson gets, gets the win. Gets third step on the podium. There's a Ute on the podium there in Australia. Look what just happened. It is an incredible achievement. There's never been a Ute on the podium anywhere I've been before. <laughs> so I am very pleased to see it. It's the first time for everything It's here, incredible. Dave. We'll see him back for the podium celebrations. And of course, Jordan will be carrying out the podium and all the, the paraphernalia because he has the space he to bring it all out. Exactly. And if you back. want, you could probably bring out a new rear end to Gaz Wider eventually. <laughs> <laughs> if he wanted to. And, of course, the judge is saying that that was, again, a little handbrake the wrong direction on initiation. You can't be doing it. You can't be, you doing, can't it. be doing it. And Gaz Wider, for strangely, some reason, did it. And the judge said that was the cause of the contact, the yeah. cause of the separation. And Jordan gets the win and goes third step on the podium, leaving us with just one battle to go for the final here Ooh. at Calder Park. What an amazing day we've had, Dan. This what an amazing crazy. weekend. Yesterday was wild. Today was even wilder. It's a little bit colder than it was yesterday, but it's Calder Park. So it I mean, is. It's in I the see name. what you did there. Go oh, in the wall doing Gaz, a burnout. Guys, Wider just put it in the wall doing a burnout on purpose. This is when all the gloves are off. All the tires are getting blown off. Things are happening. People are just walling their cars. He's like, you know what? I don't care at all anymore. Wow, Gaz Wider is out. sending it into the wall. What is <laughs> what is happening? Someone get Gaz Wider off this track. He's lost his mind. He's, He's just lost his mind. He's smashing into things. He's running walls where walls shouldn't be. What a show, guys! Wider. We got to see more of this guy back in the sport because he is an absolute entertainer, taking fourth place today, and uh, he's been a standout star for me oh, he, this whole weekend. It's been awesome to a watch guys watching him drive, a treat watching him take all the banners off the wall. This has been. Well, here we go. Well, now we are on to the final battle of the day. Calder Park, are you still with me? I don't think, Dave. Do you need to get back out there on the track I, not, and do warm-up Don't make me go back out there. Don't make me go back out. Calder Park, we need you to make some more noise than that. Are you ready for the final? There we go. That's much better, guys. Thank you. Smiles for miles as two underdogs take to the final. We got Robert Abalero against Cam Martin. Cam Martin in the chase. Robert in the lead. Cam throwing it in on the door through the first corner as Robert putting a beautiful lead run in right now as they transition back. But look at Cam Martin. He's all up in his business as they transition back towards the wall and up onto the wall, but a bit more pace from Robert as he fires it hard and wide to the wall. Into the wall. Goes Robert Avalero, Cam Martin just dropping off towards the end. What a run. Crazy. That was crazy. The angle, the proximity. There could have been a little bit more on the back wall, but fantastic run from Cam in the follow position, but an absolute unit of a lead run. Unbelievable stuff from all of these guys as they now wait for the decisions to drop in. Who's going to take the win? And we one more run to go. And I guess what I'm thinking now is Cam Martin's got to be trying to be fast, and Rob has got to try and be on the door because that's the way he's going to win this one. This is this is exactly how he he may or may not know that there were some mistakes made behind. And then also Robert doesn't get to that out of zone until very late. Very late. So the lead run not perfect, the chase run not perfect. I think. It's all gonna come down to this second run. The last run potentially of the day. Cam Martin, Robert Abalero, these guys are going for that number one. The number one on the skate deck. You don't want the number two on the skate no, deck. You don't, want, you don't want people walking into your house. Oh, I see a second place oh, I see once. You got a second oh, place you, skate you deck. You must have been really second that day. You don't want that. You want the first oh, you place. Lost That's first. what you want. You lost first. You want to be the guy that beat everybody when all the big guests were there and the yeah, champions were there and the best of Australia, the best of New Zealand, the best was all there. And you came out on top. These two guys are buzzing either way. I guarantee you they don't care less oh, yeah. at this point. But there's one run to go. Robert Arbolero, he is the man with the plan right now. He's got to get onto the door of that OR33 skyline. Cam Martin off the line. He goes, this is it. This is for all the marbles. As Cam Martin goes into that first corner late Whoa. in the negotiation, Robert has to back off on that one. As they come through, Cam Martin in that lead position. As he transitions back, here we go, Robert Arbolino right up onto the door now as they come through, but no proximity from Robert Arbolino. Cam Martin starting to pull a bit of a gap here as they go into that last corner. Now the big dive from Robert Arbolino is on the inside of the oh, track. What is that? Cam Martin's out on the wall. They're both on the wall. This one is gonna go to the judges. That's nuts. Again, not the perfect run. Not, not exactly what these guys wanted to I don't do. Know. I think they may have gotten in their own heads 
I have to do better. I have to be aggressive. I have to do things that I haven't done yet. And I think they may have overdriven or underdriven where needed. So we're, we're checking back through the replays. The judges are toiling. Again, not envious of those guys' position. Absolutely fantastic job that they have done all weekend long. It's a thankless job being a judge, but these guys absolutely slay it. All have a wealth of knowledge about drifting because judging is difficult. It really is. So what we, I was talking to the judges, I was Ooh. saying, so what we do right now is we line them up. We oh, have to we ask, have a decision. No, we have to ask them, do we have a decision, or it's a one more time. And then if it's one more time, they go back at it again. But if it's a decision, we're going to bring down third place, Jordan Sanderson, and we're going to have the podium. We're going to announce that just as they're going on the podium. Oh, so it, leave it. a little bit of tension. Guys, they have been incredible all day. Will you please get up for Robert Armelino and Cam Martin? <laughs> Men, how are they feeling down there? They must be pumped. I did uh, just speak to Robert just then, and uh, he said, I hope it's not a one more time. My arms are knackered. Rob, takes a bit of muscle <laughs> to pedal this thing, does it? Oh, dude. I need to go back to the gym or something, hey? Um, oh, I'm just speechless, hey? Like, I need five minutes, bro. Expect him first. <laughs> all right. Now, was this the plan all along? Did you speak to Adam LZ and you were like, hey, brother, I know it's your show, but do you reckon maybe I could uh, swindle on up to the top step? Uh, no, I sort of knew it was going to happen, but um, <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. No, I just, I was sick drivers, he's going to drive hard and, I don't know, I'm the same, I'm not the same. I'm a driver, I'm not a talker. <laughs> no, you've proven that <laughs> just in one sentence. All right. Rob, you're back, you're back a little bit, mate. You uh, jumped the line, that, not jumped the line, but you went to Scando a little bit and then he wasn't moving yet. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm still. I don't know if I'm awake, asleep, still. I don't know what's going on. But he's he's overdosing on adrenaline, ladies and gentlemen. Rob, five years since you've uh, last competed, and now you're here in the final battle at the LZ World Tour. Not a bad way to kick things back off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, he's he's buggered. Let's give him a minute. Back to you, boys. And uh, you just might... you you left that man speechless. He's totally he's speechless. His mind is blown. His, his, his two, arms are spaghetti. No, nobody in this whole place. It means more to be in this final than these two guys. And I can announce that we do have a decision. A decision oh, has Lord been made. Mercy. A decision has been made between the two drivers in the final. We know that Jordan Sanderson has taken third place. But who is going to take top step today here at the LZ World Tour? It all comes down to this. I'm, I'm even nervous right now. I think, I, I think I, I, yeah, I, I think I, both of these guys would take second place <laughs> with a smile, but they are emotional wrecks yeah, on the I track right just, now. I think we all are. We've all been along for this ride this whole weekend. It's been an absolute banger of a weekend, but let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. The decision is in. Who oh, takes the my win? Oh, my goodness gracious. We have a decision, and the winner of the Australian event of the LZ World Tour is... Cameron! TheWish.com LZ takes the big W. What? He might not be LZ, but today he was every bit as good. What Cam a story. Murray, what a story. <laughs> takes the win, goes top step on the podium. And give it up for second place, Robert Arbolino in second position on the podium. Incredible stuff. Cam Martin is your winner of the event. Mez, we got to hear from the man himself. He's just won it. Oh, hang on. Oh, I just kiss want a cam. Quick three way. <laughs> All right, we've got to interrupt that. Cam, mate, you are off the charts ecstatic. What does this mean to you? And what does it mean for your future vlog YouTubing series? Uh, it's massive. Um, it's such a big event with so many insane drivers. I like. I knew I could possibly take it, but like to actually have it happen and be here on like holding this right now, I'm like over the moon. Uh, I cannot thank my sponsors enough. Elite Auto Garage, Custom Performance Garage, Hyper Gear, Body Shop, Flash Panels, 21 Fab, Raceworks, Jet Automotive, uh, Low Key and Cube. Um, can't thank my pit crew enough. They actually smashed it, helped me so much with like, even just cleaning up the pit, the garage and stuff. Um, uh, making life so easy. Um, my missus, I haven't been home be like before 12 a.m. for a month. I done it all night on Thursday to get this thing done. I did, had no sleep Friday, so I was driving like crap. Um, Saturday got a little bit better, and then Sunday just stepped up a notch and, and did even better again. So I'm just 
So happy. <laughs> yeah, look, I didn't want to say anything Friday. I was like, whew, Cam Martin's uh, not on. But ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your first place winner of the LZ World Tour Australia edition. Well deserved. Rob, have, have you recovered a little bit? No, he's not. He's still ecstatic. Mate, what, what does it mean for you? Are, you, are we going to see more of Robert Arbolino competing now that you're back in the groove? I'll have another five years off now. <laughs> um, no, nah, we're not leaving, man. I've got the sponsors I've got behind me. They're more jeep than I am. We ain't stopping now. We're, we're going as far as we can go. Um, I'd just like to thank Shaw Projects Australia. Those guys are amazing. They've done everything for me this weekend. Um, LZ World Tour, Keep It Re, Drift Games, um, let me go to the side of the car. Uh, Toe and Go, Shockworks, Raceworks, Earls, Flamingos, Cafe and Car Wash, Shaw Civil Australia, Glass Effects Detailing. Man, these are all amazing. Most of all, Cranked Motorsport for the machine of a car. Make some noise for Robert Avellino. And uh, guys, we've got some classic drivers down here reading their sponsors off their cars, so that's always handy. Now, mate, you've done Australia proud, haven't you? Yeah. The big Ute on the podium. What's it mean for you, brother? Oh man, it was just the best weekend. It was just so surreal. And just the crowd and everything, I was getting so G'd. And yeah, I couldn't help myself in that wall. We just had a relationship. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if she's gonna be calling back. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't reckon I'll fix it up too much. We're back here for high tech in two weeks, so I'll probably do the same thing. Rock on, brother. Make some noise for your third place winner, Jordan Sanderson, doing Australia proud in the Ute. Thank you, Mez. And that is the end of... We're going to get the champagne flying here, Dan. It has I been an amazing year. Look at that. Those three have battled it all the way through today. But not only today, what an amazing series. This was just an idea between Adam LZ and, and I. And it's a crazy idea. It was a crazy... Why don't we just it's do... It's an insane idea. Why don't we do fun events around the world, borrow cars, get to know the local scene, the local drivers. So and many of these... Put them against each other. But look at these new stars we're creating everywhere we go because the eyes are on and they're deserved stars because they're amazing personalities everywhere we go. Australia... You have been incredible. I also want to thank everybody who's been a part of the LZ World Tour. All From the way start to start finish. U.S. all the way to Ireland, to, to all the way to Canada, all the way here to Australia. It's been an amazing time. I want to thank Adam LZ for putting trust in his whole team and us to put this all together. Specifically this weekend, I want to thank Keep It Read for doing an amazing job of keeping this all on track. Keeping it read, keeping it right, keeping it on track, doing Australia proud. Dan, it's been a pleasure. Mez down there doing an amazing job he did. this he weekend. Loved everything about it. You guys here in attendance, it's been an awesome time. Positive vibes. You can comment, you can put your critiques, you can put your opinions, but it's positive vibes from start to finish. All four events, and thank you so much, Dave. It's been an absolute pleasure to be announcing with you at these events. I've learned so much, and it's been so fun. This is, this is the type of event that you will never forget, no matter where you are on the planet. So thank you for allowing me to come with you on this journey. It's been it's been the funnest drift events that I have ever been to. It's been awesome. We've been all over the world this year and every one of these events I see new stars, new faces, new vibes, get to meet so many amazing people. We throw all these different content creators, stars, drivers, amateurs, pros together. This is all about fun, ladies and gentlemen, and fun is what drifting should be. It should be a good time. It should be an amazing time for everybody in attendance. All smiles on faces and there's some of the biggest smiles today. Cam Martin, <laughs> the winner of the final stop of the LZ World Tour. He's blind he's got a mustache he's lost his aviators the rear end of his car but boy did he drive well oh and he goodness. is the winner in the end guys thank you so much for tuning in at home thank you so much for coming out to calder park we're going to see you guys very soon next year what will happen next year you're going to have to wait and find out because even we haven't figured we it out not. we need at least a couple of drinks before we can even start talking about that because we're about to celebrate thank you guys for everything and all the support this year we did something new we did something different and we hope you guys enjoyed it we'll see you soon as we now leave a four turbo VL shooting flames beside three people in Australia that are on the podium. It doesn't have to make sense. That's what this championship is all about. From Dan, I, Mez, and all the crew here at the LZ World Tour, we'll see you next year. Let's let the burnouts commence.
So unfortunately, guys, we got to leave you on the stream. But here in attendance, we are going to have an expression session on track. So if you want to see all the rest of the drivers, go out there and have some fun. Look at some flames pop out of the Keeper we feel. You guys stick around here in attendance. You guys at home, as I said, the sentiments are resonating from all of us here in the tower. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you in 2024 for bigger, brighter, and better things from the LZ World Tour.